There's no time. No. The time is... 13. O'clock. Hey, everybody. It's Wednesday, and it's time for our big main show. Yep. DJ Maniac says, uh, this one is my fault, LOL. Because <laughs> he's the one that uh, mentioned, mentioned, yeah. mentioned this. And actually, yeah, I knew that we would probably get around to doing a show on this fucker uh, at some point. But I didn't realize when we, you know, first, like, when I first put it in the poll and it won, I didn't realize that Netflix had just done, well, I don't know if it was just, but they did a um like a mini series i think it's just two episodes and uh you know so they had put that up i think in february or march or whatever so i guess like jimmy savile is kind of in the zeitgeist at the moment yeah if you don't know who this is this is a famous uh british fucking creepophile and i kind of feel like everybody knows who he is now like well until honestly until the scandal broke after he was dead yeah i feel like in the united states Nobody knew who the fuck he was. He's very, very famous in the UK. I knew who he was because, you know, during the early 80s, I was real into, like, post-punk and stuff like that. So I was real, like, I was real Anglophile, and I watched a lot of, like, British TV. Like, I was really into that. I never saw any of the shows that he was on because he hosted, like, Top of the Pops, but that was, like, before my time. That was, like, in the fucking 60s and 70s. TV yeah, but it's, like, I had heard the name. You know what I mean? I didn't really see a lot. I'd heard of Jim Will Fix It. I'd have heard of all those shows. Yeah. So I kind of knew who he was peripherally. Johnny but... Rotten would accuse him of doing some crazy shit on television, and they'd be like, up, 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 don't say anything. And he'd just well, some funny that's shit. kind of like this... Yeah. He okay. Like, oh, no, he's up to something bad. You know. I mean, the thing about it that yeah. makes me this. I mean, we cover a lot of yeah. fucked up people on this show, serial killers and true crime and stuff like that. They all make me angry. Yeah. This made me angry in a particular way because he had been. There had been rumors and accusations about the shit that he was up to going back to like 1955. Yeah. Right. He was a fucking creeper. And. It seems like ev- like everybody kind of knew, but nobody really did much of anything about it, and he was just like allowed to get away with it. And I think the thing that pissed me off about this the most was that I saw like all of these clips of like interviews with him like over the years. As the years went on, he got more and more brazen. He would just like come out and say shit like on TV that, that was kind of like in hindsight is horrifying, but everyone just thought it was funny at the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was, uh, I don't remember, he was creeping on children. Were they boys or were they girls? Both. Mostly oh, girls. Mostly girls. Mostly girls, uh, but some boys too. Uh, somebody, I was watching, a, I watched like a shit ton of documentaries about this, and um, one person said anything that moved, quote unquote. Okay. Um, you know, and it didn't have to be children, it usually was. But he yeah. liked real young kids, young teenagers, but he would go after pretty much, like money. I said, anything that moved. Free money. Thank you very much, Aaron. Aaron, thanks. What's yeah, some name? 13 o'clock in gym time. Thank you, baby. You have fun with Thank that. Thank you, baby. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, now, Seville's mentioned in the, uh, on, the, on the fucking AJ fucking side of the web, too, and uh, you never really get a straight story. Um, there's, uh, I don't want to say conspiracy theory because now the time for com- conspiracy theory to news is about f- three or four months. But evidently he was hanging out, he was doing some of this stuff with some members of the British royal family and possibly some kids were killed. We don't know. I think I that's think. A, no. I, that's okay. a bit much. Okay. Um, it, he was. I'm not saying that there weren't other people involved. Like he knew other pedos and he shit like that. He probably rich, did. Evidently, he knew rich pedos, and some of them might have been but, certain families. Let's just say it that way. Don't make it. But egg- I mean, well, yeah. But the thing about it was like he knew. Um, you know, he was very high up in the echelons of you know he knew Prince Charles and Margaret Thatcher and all those kind of people, and he hung out with them. I don't know. If, the if they knew right, yeah. what was what they were doing, I mean, I think well, I was watching this one interview with like a guy that was kind of around at the time, and he just thought he's like, well, Prince Charles was kind of he called him gullible. I think he yeah. kind of wanted to say he was kind of an idiot, um, yeah. and I don't think that they necessarily knew. I don't know, maybe they did. I wasn't there. Rich people are sheltered. 
But yeah, so it yeah. did seem like, I don't know, but I'll get into that. I think the thing that pissed me off the most though was that he would come out and say things in some of his interviews and he had a thing which he wasn't a dummy. He was in Mensa, so he was like he was actually really really intelligent. He had a thing that a lot of psychopaths have where he would deflect everything and if you got offended by something, oh, I was just kidding or blah blah blah, and he would say things to sort of shield himself from criticism like, oh, things like, oh, I lie when it suits me or something like that. And he would just say stuff to be outrageous so that he would get away with saying some shit that in hindsight is like openly horrifying but at the time everyone just thought it was funny you know what i mean because it's like oh that's him being him he's so wacky so it was that kind of shit and he absolutely i think he, he absolutely knew that he was doing that on purpose because he knew that he was deflecting because he kind of changed tactics as the cultural zeitgeist changed because you could get away with a lot more in the 60s and 70s because you could like grow girls and like no one would really say anything everybody'd be like oh boys will be boys it was that kind of shit but when start when that started getting less acceptable he kind of like changed his tactics up a little bit but some of the shit that he said on tv now that we know what he did was fucked up and the thing that pisses me off the most is that he would say shit like oh well he could get away with anything and he did he died yeah. they, he never got arrested I think he got questioned by the cops like once or twice, but they never did anything to him. And it's just like, everyone just thought like when he died, he was still seen as this big national hero. Like thousands and thousands of people turned up. He had a fucking pimping gold coffin. He had this really ridiculously huge tacky gravestone with all of his accomplishments on it and shit like that. And everyone was like all super sad and they did all these fucking TV tributes. What a wonderful man. And then like a little while later, people were like, oh, wait a minute. He sucked. Yeah. And then well, all of the shit came out. Get into it. All of the shit came out. But it made me angry that he was right. He did get away with it. His, he had like a life of luxury. So everybody loved it. Well, not everybody loved him, but I mean, he got away with it. All of it. Mango he never said, got in trouble. Mango said he was kind of protected from on high. And uh, that could be. We'll, we'll see. I don't know much about the case. I just have heard about it. I've also heard rumors that it wasn't just molestation. He was possibly killing them. But it, we don't know. You know, no, I mean, other than the, no, it's, I, I don't so. think that, I think that's going a little bit in a satanic yeah. panic direction. I mean, yeah. the shit, and again, this is what kind of pisses me off about like this conspiracy theory shit is that you take something which is, you know, 99.99% true. Yeah. Like we're talking hundreds of yeah. cases, 400, 500 Damn. accusations. Okay. We're talking about that rape, sexual assault, molestation, um, most of them children, that's bad enough. Yeah. Um, I don't think you need to add murder. murder on top of it. Now, I will say there, there weren't enough missing children, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Like, that would okay. be noticed. Oh, yeah. Uh, like I said, that's kind of like, you know, I hate to, you know, in case they did do some shit like that. But it's kind of, I think that's a satanic panic kind of thing where it's like, yes, you know, murders like that do happen. Like, terrible murders do happen. But... You, like taking the next step I think that's like a step too far okay. now I did hear about um, there were some accusations I don't know if these are true but there were some accusations that he um, was a little bit into necrophilia but I think as far as I know that was only like maybe one person making that accusation so I don't know if that's true or not but so that was I didn't I never heard about any murder accusations but I did hear about like one or maybe two people saying like necrophile but like he had access to dead bodies and shit. But one thing that he was very big on, which we'll get into, was he was really astute, if you want to use that word, um, of going after people that were really vulnerable. And once he had gotten to a point in his career where he was like really famous and had a lot of money and had a lot of connections, um, you know, a lot of people in high places that liked him. Um, and he was making a lot of money for the BBC, he kind of felt like he could operate with impunity. Well, I guess he could. And it, well, yeah, that's what I mean. That's right. that's what pisses me off is that he was yeah. right. He, he actually could. Um, because like I said, people, there were rumors about the dude swirling since like the 50s, right? So it's it wasn't like nobody knew about it. It's everybody kind of knew. But it's just, I don't know. So it just, he, he was very good at targeting 
the vulnerable. And because he had so much power, one thing that he would do because he had money and shit like that was that, you know, if you threatened to like tell anybody, he would just say, I'll, I'll either sue you. I mean, the libel laws are a lot stricter in the UK. Or he would say, who the fuck's going to believe you? I'm famous and rich and you're not. You're nobody. So, and he's probably right about that. And that well, just... He was right. That's what I mean. So that just like really, really made me angry. So honestly, yeah. It's, there's, pro- there's a lot more of this shit going on. A lot more. Well, yeah. Just look at, look, look at those pedo islands and shit that went down here. Taking these... Uh, pretty uh florida floridian girls out of these trailer parks and dressing them up and pimping them out on those islands to fucking presidents and fucking dudes from other countries and shit it's happening here got away with that basically yeah i mean i guess he got killed well supposedly he got killed in prison the thing about it is that his death if you have enough money yeah you can pretty much get away with anything and no conspiracy necessary do you think that dude really died i have no idea um, I, you know, I don't know. I wasn't there. Like I said, yeah. but like I said, if you have enough, there's no conspiracy necessary. If you, if you're wealthy yeah. and by powerful. extension, yeah. yeah, have a lot of wealthy friends who are powerful, and you, got you dirt don't on even, them. you don't even need a conspiracy. You <laughs> yeah. can get away with anything. Yeah. You got dirt on them. So you can't go down or you'll rat them out. So they'll fucking do anything. Especially if you target as Jimmy Savile did, yeah. if you target, uh, for example, like girls at a home for troubled girls or yeah. people in hospitals, like yeah. children in hospitals. He would target people like that. The, vulnerable people, right. children, children who yeah. wouldn't be believed if the they co- said anything the about it. case here in the United States, I don't know if that, remember if that was Ohio or whatever it was, that Catholic girls. Yeah, Catholic yeah. Girls, it was like, kind of like a school, right? And they were, yeah. they were pimping them out to the cops and the local politicians. And that was the 70s. There was a do- yeah, I think there 70s. was a documentary on... Well, actually, yeah. no, it might have been earlier. It might have been the 60s. 60s, yeah. Um, One of the nuns was going to go... Yeah, there was a... off it, and they killed her. There was a documentary about yeah. that on Netflix. It might still be on there. Yeah. Matter of fact. You wouldn't think that that could happen, but hell yeah, that happened here. They covered that shit up. Well, got to say, too, that in uh, Jimmy Savile's case, uh, Catholic Church also kind of involved in this, too, because yeah. Jimmy Savile was a very, very devout Catholic... And had kind of the uh, blessing of the Pope. I mean, even the Pope, like, gave him some shit. Yeah, well, Pope's probably into some shit, too. I mean, you know, and this wasn't even, this was Pope John Paul II. Pope John Paul II was in. Gotcha. And I think he was the one that, turn, what happened? Oh, you turned the turn the Tom Ross ventilation system on. The Tom Ross. To cool Thomas. all this fucking voluptuous meat off. Just getting hot. Getting hot. You're trying to cool off your voluptuous meat. That's right, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, had to, I had to make that shit sound cool somehow. <laughs> All, right. All right. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah. You this ready? is, like I said, we did, like, a little bit of a There's thing. a little but, bit of intro. But, like I said, I, I feel like probably now that Netflix has done the, the miniseries, I feel like probably most Americans are familiar with it now. But I, I think that only happened because of the sexual predator angle. I don't think anybody knew who he was before that. So I think it's hard for... It, well, it's kind of like... I guess it's sort of like the British equivalent of, like, the Bill Cosby case. Was that Because Bill Cosby was the same kind of thing. He was real famous. He was real rich. Um, you know, and he had a lot of, like, powerful friends and stuff. And so he got away with this bullshit for, like, a really long time. And then even when they called him out, like, when people came out and nobody wanted to believe it, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think it's like a similar kind of situation going on. Although I don't think Bill Cosby, well, Bill Cosby was like pretty famous, but I don't know if he was famous to the extent that, because the thing about Jimmy Savile was that he wasn't just famous for being like a DJ and a TV personality and stuff like that, but he was also really, really, uh, you know, famous as like a charity guy. Like he gave like, I mean, he did give a lot of money to charity, like 40 million pounds or something like that. Um... So he was kind of known. He got knighted and everything. But I'm not calling him sir or nothing. I'm just, fuck that. Even though that's what the Wikipedia page calls him, because he got that, but that was Margaret, that was Margaret Thatcher's idea. She gave him that in 1990. When you think about it. Or she it, recommended it. BBC is a fucking state, state-owned propaganda outlet. So the government knew. The British government knew. Or at least one branch of it knew. Well, they did an independent... I was watching some shit earlier. They did an independent... Uh, after all this shit came out, 
they did an independent investigation of the BBC to like to figure out like who knew who knew what like when and shit like that. They said they weren't sure if the people at the top they they didn't really seem to know anything, but the people like maybe on the managerial level that kind of dealt with them day to day that they probably knew he was up to some shit. I don't think they knew exactly what, but they knew enough that they should have reported it or done something about it and they didn't. Right. So, um so they did like the Beeb did come out and like they apologized and they said we changed all our shit like you know most of the people that got they got fired and all this other kind of shit but they changed all their stuff to make sure it didn't happen again because that absolutely should have been reported some of the shit that he did but they weren't sure if like the super heads like knew what was going on because they weren't even there but they said that like the people that dealt with him all the time actually probably did know absolutely what was going on but uh yeah so it's a uh, it's pretty fucked up and like I said you know there were multiple times that the cops could have done something and also didn't so there's a lot of people turning a different you know turning away from it turning a blind eye to it and it's almost and i hate to say this but it's almost like it was more understandable when it was happening in the 50s 60s maybe 70s because oh he's just like grabbing girls asses or it's oh it's cute or something like that because it was like a lot more acceptable back then um, even though the girls were like, uh, hey, knock that shit off. And actually, there's, if you could look on YouTube, and actually Dermot sent it to me, it was a clip, I think it was from Top of the Pops, and he's, like, standing there, like, doing his spiel or whatever, and there's, like, all these people that were, you know, all these teenagers and shit, like, standing around him that were on Top of the Pops, and he absolutely does, like, just grab this girl's ass, like, right next to him, and she's like, hey, what the fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, it was on TV, it was, like, totally brazen, yeah. but nobody, everyone was like, oh, yeah. Nobody did anything about it. And she was on. They, like, they interviewed her later, and she was like, I didn't know what to do. She's like, what the fuck? It's yeah. like this dude's, like, touching me, and it's like I couldn't. But like I said, back then, it was, like, seen as sort of acceptable, and you just kind of had to, you couldn't really complain about it. Everybody would be like, ah, you know. It, yeah, That's it what was, that dudes just do that. Yeah, well, I mean, back in, the, back in the 80s, you know, growing up in Brazil, it's just the way it was in, in Latin cultures. It's, it's like that. It's, but you're not supposed to do that to a woman you don't know. That's what I mean. You do that, I'm gonna punch you right in the right. fucking teeth. They, and the, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's don't not, you, it's not to, don't you, you come you, up and fucking touch me? I don't know you, you. You can only do that to a girl that you're friends with. You know, and it, it's. Well, even still, like, even if it, you if you're not dating that girl, you shouldn't be going like grabbing her fucking ass or anything like and that. In culture, though, that's like a man paying respect, like, oh, that boot, that ass, man. But yeah, you, you know, you did a bunch. Of yeah, problems. but if you do that here, like, see how well that. It's flies. just a different culture. <laughs> that's what yeah. I mean. Different culture. Uh, Oracle of the Mundane says, Jenny, are you familiar with the expression, the missing stare? I've heard it before, but you know what? I'm not really, uh, cognizant now of, like, what it means. So, you might want to explain that to me. Because, like I said, I have heard it, but I can't remember what it means. Um, yeah, Oracle said, pity the sword hadn't slipped a little when he was knighted. <laughs> and Mango also said, feel free to call him a cunt. Oh, I will. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I mean. And it's, the creepy thing is, like, just... There isn't a single photo, and there's a lot of photographs of him because he was very famous. There isn't a single photograph of him where he doesn't look like a perverted freak. That's what he was. And yet... <laughs> he had a lot of money. Everyone's <laughs> just kind of like... away with it. Well, like I said, I think a lot of it was like a very calculated persona. Yeah. He was like... He had this kind of like malignant narcissism type, type of deal... It got him far in his career because he came from nothing. Like, he was, like, really, really poor. And then he, you know, clawed his way to the upper echelons by basically being an attention whore. Um, he's yeah. like, I'm just going to, like, dress crazy and say crazy things and everyone's going to pay attention to me. And, you know, everybody does that nowadays, but so many people are doing that that no one cares. But it's like back then, that was probably, like, a big deal. So he just, like, wears these crazy Madonna. clothes. That's yeah, well, Madonna got famous. Well, yeah, so it's like, you know, it's harder nowadays, like yeah. I said. Um yeah, but you, you know, wouldn't stand out. That's what I mean, because everybody does that. That's why it's all collapsing. Yeah. Social and media to be honest, off. I think that was another aspect of why this case pisses me off so much, yeah. because I hate, yeah. hate attention whores. Yeah. I hate people that are like that. Like, look at me. I really, really hate that, that personality. And so every time, like, I saw him in an interview, he comes across as this really arrogant douche that absolutely knew that he could do and say whatever and like no one was going to do anything and he's always kind of like talking about like his 
oh, this and that. It's like how cool he is and blah, blah, blah. And it's just kind of like, oh, my God, shut the fuck up. I wonder, wonder if Dick Clark was like that. I just wanted to, like, pull his fucking head, out, head off. I wonder if Dick, Dick Clark was like that. And who was the dude from Soul Train? What was his name again? Oh, somebody the said it earlier. Voice like that. He had a real cool voice. Uh, was, he did, yeah. What like, was it? Shit, man, I can't. Like somebody said it earlier, but I can't remember what it back is. Back in there? Let me see. But yeah, it might be like up toward the top. But so I think that was what made because and I think I've said this on a couple of the serial killer shows before. Like it's bad enough that you're a serial killer or a pedophile or whatever the fuck you are. But it's like don't be a fucking arrogant douchebag who thinks they're better than everybody else on top of it. That's just like the cherry on the shit Sunday. That's just going to make me hate you that much more. You know what I mean? Because it's like, well, I'm just... I don't see it. I can, like, you know, he's, like, making threats about shit and, like, fucking... I mean, I got some quotes. I wrote some quotes down because I went to... Because um, Louis Theroux did a show with him, and uh, he said some crazy shit on there. I, like, toward the end of the show, like, I did, like, all these quotes that he actually said on TV that millions of people saw, and now that everybody knows what he did, I'm like holy shit like he actually said that on fucking tv he all but like admits it and it's almost like he's just like oh but you're never gonna do anything because it's just like funny zany me ha ha and it's just and he totally knew that he was doing that he was a total psychopath what was the name of the guy from soul train yeah somebody needs to repeat it because i'm sure somebody said it up there because i was like oh yeah that guy but then i just promptly forgot it again i forgot that dude's name sucks getting old it's been been forever (laughs) since i even my poor little brain i remember his i remember what he looks like he had the suit and everything he had kind of like the very white sound and he was just look like uh just like a good looking black game show host is kind of what he looked like yeah what was his name if you had any and he would announce he just would announce the next song he would sound real fucking smooth he'd be up there and the women all dancing around him I wonder what he was like. Come on, bring it over here, baby. Back it up on me. Back it up on me. See, I kind of wonder. Yeah, yeah, he probably was. I kind of wonder. But he seemed like he'd probably be cooler about it. Of <laughs> course, that's right. Go ahead. Put it on a motherfucker. <laughs> I mean, I'm, at least slow like it people down, like man. that like are fine as long as you're not doing shit without yeah. their consent. Like, just don't go around grabbing people who don't even. It's like, hey, buddy, yeah. what the fuck. Yeah. I'm going to keep that hand if you keep fucking doing that. But yeah. Don Cornelius. That's right. That's right. That's Tammy's right. got. Oh, no, who, who came up? A camp guy fucking got on it first. Don Cornelius. Soul Trade. Yeah. I remember that motherfucker. I was a kid last time I saw him. I got I to gotta pull yeah. up some of his old material and look at him again. See if I remember him as well as I think I do. I used to like Soul Train. Don Cornelius. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Oracle saying, because I was talking about the missing stare, and she says, the missing stare means that person who is dangerous in some way, but rather than getting rid of him, we'll just figure out how to deal with him. Yeah, and that seems like exactly what happened in this case. And honestly, um, I was looking at, you know, I, w- I watched a bunch of like documentaries about it and like people in the comments who were saying, you know, oh, my mom or my grandma or somebody like that, like used to work at a hospital that he volunteered at. And they used to say stuff like, I was like, all the women hated him. They just, like, thought he was the fucking creepiest motherfucker alive. But it's like they couldn't really do anything about it because they didn't, you know, they weren't high up in power or anything like that. So they would just, again, like she's saying, there's like a whisper network where you're just warning everybody to stay away from that person because it's clear that no one in authority is going to do anything about it. So it's just kind of like, and um, one of the things that I read was that one particular hospital, like I said, we'll get into the details, but one particular hospital where he volunteered, um the nurses would tell the patients when he's here pretend to be asleep really (laughs) why because if you were awake when he came in your room then some bad shit was gonna happen so she's like just pretend just pretend he's not there pretend you're like really deep sleep so like the nurses would tell them that isn't that fucked up uh this 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 made me so angry um yeah Thank you, Zach. Apropos of nothing, but I just discovered the horror of what happens to OJ when the pump coagulates at the top of the bottle. Hmm. Ew. <laughs> yeah, Mango said, um, Savile was never zany, always creepy. I watched this. Yeah, it's like I'm watching the shit. Maybe people just didn't have the framework to. 
or maybe people that knew he was creepy like you didn't really think about it that much because every single clip i've seen of him he looks like the creepiest person he looks like if you told somebody that had never seen him draw what a sexual predator looks like that's pretty much what he looks like mm. he looks like a fucking freak mm -mm. And it's just kind of like, and I can't believe that he got away with it for so long. I think part of the reason, like I said, is because he was so brazen about it. He had dirt on somebody. He, well, I think that he was kind of, like I said, he was playing, and I saw this um, one woman, she's like a psychologist or something like that, and she was saying what he was doing was playing like a double bluff. He was coming out and saying, look how wacky, and I'm saying all these outrageous things that seem to imply that I'm... A pedophile or that I'm a sexual predator but it's like because I'm so wacky and over the top no one will possibly take me seriously because I'm just being funny right. so it so he and that was absolutely calculated I think he absolutely knew what he was doing but yeah it's a fucking he was hiding behind yeah and in a way that's kind of like that's a lot better that's not about I'm, acting uh, like an angel. Then acting like, yeah. yeah, then like coming out and being like, I'm against porn and blah, blah, And then they find like a yeah. bunch of porn on you. Because everybody knows that ruse. You could just say, no, nah, she's just making that up based on my my on-screen persona. I'm not actually, she's just, no. Nah, that, that, what you're hearing about me, I put that out there as a joke. Well, that's kind of what he did. Yeah. Like starting in about the 90s. Like I said, in the 60s and 70s, he could be a lot more kind of open about it because nobody really you know nobody really thought anything about like oh you grabbing girls asses or anything like that like ev like like i said the girls didn't like it but you know no one was gonna take it all that seriously but then you know by the time the 90s 2000s came along because he was still doing the shit up until i think the um the last accusation that they have on file was from 2009 so and he died in 2011 and he was like in his 80s. So this old fart is like going around doing the show. But it's not any better when he was a young fart. I'm just saying, you know, he's still like fucking old and he's still going around being a fucking creeper. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is the matter with this dude? I don't know. But it's, I don't know. It just made me really, really angry. <laughs> this whole thing made me so angry. Um, yeah. Yeah, Tyler said, uh, Savile looks like the kind of dude that would walk into a to catch a predator sting. Yeah, that's what I mean. He just looks exactly like that. I don't know why it flew under the radar for so long. Like I said, maybe because nobody thought that he could actually be that because he was so blatant about being that. You know what I mean? Everyone just thought it was some kind of like weird role he was playing. They're like, nope, that's really what he was like. So maybe that's what it was. I don't know. Um, yeah. So before we get into that, let me do, I don't know, is is uh, Hernandez here? Is Louie here? I don't know. I haven't seen him so far. But I know I said this earlier that I did this earlier in the week, but I always say, like, I want to save this stuff for the main show, too. So Louie sent us these two movies that we got him a couple days ago. He sent us the Steelbook Karate Kid. Look at how cool that is. I love that illustration. That's beautiful. But yeah, Steelbook. Beautiful. And he also sent us this movie called... The Accountant, which a lot of people have told me is really, really good. I have not seen it yet, so we will be watching that at some point in the future and possibly reviewing it. And I also want to say thank you to Dermot, one of our British fans, for sending me an Amazon gift card. Uh, he says that we need to buy The Mummy and The Mummy Returns so that Tom can see them. Can see them. The Brendan Fraser ones, not the Tom Cruise ones. Um, because Tom's never seen them, and everybody keeps telling him that he would like the movies, and now he's kind of curious. So, thank you very much for that, Dermot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Camp Guy said he was in pretty old shape in the 80s. I gotta say that from what I could, like I said, most of the pictures of him were from later onwards, but I saw some pictures of Jimmy Savile from the 60s, and that bitch looked like an old fart even when he was, like, 30. He was one of those people that looked like an old person, like, from when they were from birth. You know what I mean? Tom hasn't seen The Mummy yet. See? That's what everybody says. It seems, like, exactly in his wheelhouse. So I'm, like, really surprised that he hasn't seen it. But, uh, but yeah. So we need to, like, rectify that situation. Uh, Zach says, wasn't there an Australian kids show host who did a similar shit in the UK around the same time? Maybe. I'm not really sure. I do kind of feel like, and I'm not saying that all hosts of kid shows are pedophiles. That would be silly. But um, 
you know, it's just like saying, you know, obviously not all priests are pedophiles and blah, 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 but there is a certain percentage of people that have that proclivity, let's call it that, and, um, you know, to have access to victims, then they're like, hey, I know what I'll do. I'll become a priest and, like, at a boys' school, or I'll dress up like a clown and go to little boys' birthday parties and shit like that. So they're going to they're going to position themselves in places where they can have access to victims. And that's exactly what Jimmy Savile did. Like he, you know, I don't know if he started out doing that specifically at the beginning of his career, but he for sure like parlayed it into that where he's like, Oh, I'm going to go on, like, I'm going to run a dance hall and then I'm going to be on top of the pops. And, you know, and I'm going to volunteer at all these hospitals where all these vulnerable children are, uh, you know what I mean? So he could have access to all the victims that he wanted and, you know, and that no one could really do anything about it. So there's that. So we've done the thank yous and everything like that. Yeah, everyone saying I haven't seen the mummy yet. Yeah, everyone is like uh, flabbergasted. I haven't seen the original mummy. I haven't seen uh, any of the mummies. Uh. I saw the mummy with I saw the mummy with Tom Cruise. Isn't that's a sad life when that's the only <laughs> mummy that you've seen? I liked it. Honestly, uh, honestly, I like the Bor- I like the Boris Karloff mummy. Yeah. I almost like the mummy makeup more yeah. than the Frankenstein's monster makeup. That, Bor- that they did on Boris Karloff. Okay. Um, I know that's maybe a controversial statement as far as, like, universal monster people go, but, man, he looks so good as the fucking mummy. I just, I, I don't know. I just really like the look of that film. But um, even though he doesn't play the mummy, he plays, like, the other, you know, the, the human character for a while, too. Uh, yeah, the Brendan Fraser and that guy. do 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 Yeah, Savile was always in character at all times. He was in public, kind of like a creepy Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, and the thing about Pee Wee is that I kind of feel like Pee Wee gets a little bit of a raw deal because Pee Wee Herman, as far as I'm aware, and maybe you guys can correct me if you know something, I don't know, he wasn't a pedophile, though. No. All they did was catch him jerking it in a theater, yeah. in a porn theater, which I'm kind of like, well, that's kind of what a porn theater's for. Yeah, there's probably a whole bunch of dudes in there jerking it. So, that's why he didn't go into the fucking places. <laughs> yeah, because it's gross. So I'm just kind of like, so he got arrested Good doing something that ever that that's kind of what that's for, even though technically it's not legal. But everybody goes in there to do that. So it's like just because he's famous, he got arrested. And now like everybody just knows him for that. And I'm just like, man, leave the dude alone. He was he was just in there jerking it to a porn movie. That's what you're supposed to do to porn movies. He wasn't like you know, he wasn't after any children or anything like that. I don't know. I don't get it. Like I said, no, there was no non consensual shit going on. It's, you know, it, it's like in light of, of shit that other people were doing, it seems like, uh, you know, pretty harmless. It's like, the, it's very harmless. He wasn't hurting anybody. But yeah. Uh, yeah, DJ Maniac said Pee Wee was a high profile victim and they dragged him through the mud for it. Yeah, that was a total like fucking moral panic hit job right there. Like I said, he wasn't hurting anybody. You know, it's like, you know, it's, it's not like they're letting little children into porn theaters or nothing like that. Hornet, Hornet sent me a picture today of this female Mexican, female federale, and he's, he, he's crossing the border, and she's got her submachine gun there, and she's in her uniform. He's, he was trying to put a move, he was trying to put the moves on her. He said he almost got her number. He was trying to get her number, but she wouldn't she would give it to him. And that's something. Trying to pick up the federal agents when he's fucking coming in through the border. Well, you know. Yeah. Man's gonna be a man. He sent me a picture. Unfortunately, of him. he sent me a picture of. Him. He sent me a picture of. Him. Unfortunately, in the yeah, light of what we're be a man. in the light of what we're talking about yeah. on today's show. <laughs> Y'all need to knock that off. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody says uh, he did bad things with the dead. Did you hear about that? Yeah, I what mentioned. I about? mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know if it's true or not, but. Um, at least one person has made that accusation that yeah. um, that he had a little bit of a neck. All right, before we get off too deep in this, I just got to tell the audience uh, about an hour ago, I started cooking carnitas. All right, in the instant pot, I pressure cooked it at forty five minutes. It's been out of the pressure cooker cooling, but in a bit, I'm gonna have to go down there and plate up some of that meat and let it cool off a little bit more. He's gonna plate up that be, meat. Yeah, I'll plate up that meat. Then I'll, I'm a, I'm gonna brown it later in broiler. That's gonna be the taco meat. You gonna make tacos so if you see after me, the show? Yeah, yeah. After the show, I make tacos. It'll be ready. So if just, you, so just like looking at the camera and saying "meat break." Yeah. So if you see me get up, and walk out, I'm either going to the restroom or I'm working on working on. Uh, He's not just being rude. Yeah. Well, I'm going down <laughs> and checking on carnitas. 
I'm letting them sit in that hot gravy for a while. You know how they it kind of sm- that shit in that hot gravy. Smell it? Yeah, I do kind of sm- yeah, yeah. smell it. Yeah, I used uh, uh, the Instapot recipe from a, a YouTube channel, little girl in Mexico. The name of the channel is Cooking Con Claudia, and it's a real good um, channel. I'm going to have to subscribe to that. Yeah, Kana Vatslan recommended her, so I subscribed to her. She'll tell you how I to like make watching every- cook. Li- I like watching cooking. Yeah, channels. tell you how to make everything, you know. And she's got all the damn Mexican stuff, this big fucking mortar and pestle that you got from Mexico, and she's cooking up all the chilies and the tomatillas and browning them over the oven. I need to get this rack she's putting over the over the uh, electric oven element. It's a rack that it's just a wire rack. It's got little legs on it, and you can roast your peppers and your tomatoes over the the oven before you throw them in that. It's I forgot the word she used. She used the. Uh, Mexican word for it. It's not even Spanish. It's like an ex-Mexican Indian word for a mortar and pestle. She mashed it up there and made salsa in it. It was good. But I'm using her uh, recipe. The only thing I messed up is I forgot to put the garlic in it. Oh, shit. I can add the garlic. That's all right. But, um... Jason says, will you guys post food pics on Insta? We should. You should, like, take pictures of some of the shit you cook and then send it to me, and I'll post it on the 13 o'clock Instagram. Food does not photograph well unless you have the lighting perfectly right. It always looks a little fucking funny. Yeah, so... Um, yeah. Uh, Yeah, Instant Pots are killer nice to have. Great for veggie soups as well. Yeah, they're... I mean... Yeah, we've used ours yeah. a lot. That that and the air fryer. That's that shit is like uh, we've made all kind of shit in there. Yeah, I got I got uh, what's a Power XL air fryer. It's big. You can do a whole. It's got baskets and broilers. You can do pizza in it. You can air fry. You can broil. You can bake in it. It's like an electric oven that does everything. It's called a, a Power XL. I got it for like a hundred bucks at Sam's. That's a Where, man's air fryer. It's a man's Power air fryer. XL. Power XL. And. Uh, <laughs> The wire racks, it's like a wire fry basket. I put pizza dough in it, make a pizza, and fucking put it on the pizza settings. Man, it comes out good. And that I cook on makes stone really too. good pizza. Makes good pizza, real good. And you, it's nice because you don't have to like, because before, like I said, you were heating up the oven at 500 or yeah. 525 for like out like an hour or two before be you put the, you know. If it's gonna be stone baked pizza. The stone has to be preheated about an hour. Yeah. Uh, this one, no, it's instant. So it, it it's not quite the same, but it's as good as yeah. It comes good, out as just as good. Pizzeria. I think. I think like just regular street pizza from a pizzeria. It's like that. And if you look at the bottom of a pizzeria, the crust, you'll see like a mesh pattern in there. It's because they're cooking it on a wire, on a wire um, pan, which is and that's how they're doing it. It's like very hot air induction. It's just another way of doing it. Mango says, Meat Break. Sounds like a movie for men. Yeah, damn. That's a porn movie for men. (laughs) I'd probably watch that. It sounds like a gay porn, which I'm all about. Yeah, that's what she's talking about. That's that's some girls watch gay porn. Yeah. All these men on each other. What? It's fun. Dudes watch lesbos? (laughs) I also watch lesbos. Okay, there you go. Get it. You know, I'm just saying. Same thing. All kind of fun stuff. Okay. Meat break. Uh, that's just now I kind of want to now I kind of want to like write a novel called Meat Break. <laughs> not necessarily like a porn novel. I yeah. just think that's a funny name. How does Tom not know about the Mummy trilogy from the '90s? His boyfriend, The Rock, is in the second one. That's what DJ you bitches don't says. didn't send it to me. I asked twice. I said send me. Any Dermot movie. sent sent me money to buy it for you. Oh, did he? Okay, what about? Yes. I, I didn't. I didn't get. I didn't know. That's about what I'm that. saying. I didn't know. I told you that the other okay. day. All right. He sent me it. money to buy it for you. Buy it for me, then. Because he said, why is he not seeing the mummy? I'm right. sending you money right now, so you okay. can buy it. So I'm going to buy it. I get it on Blu-ray or DVD. You could probably, you could probably get it as a set, huh? Uh, I'd imagine you can, okay. yeah. I thought there were only two, but I guess there are three okay. of them. Cheng says, uh, Jimmy Savile had a ring with a glass eye set in it. Allegedly, he stole it from a corpse in the morgue. Yeah, I heard that story. Um, Let me go check. Let me so, go check. Just... yeah. Go Apparently, he did have, allegedly... Like I said, the shit that he did is bad enough. I don't know if he did the dead people shit. I wouldn't put it past him, though, I'm going to say. Because the shit that he did was, like, fucked up enough. But, yeah, I heard that story that he apparently knew somebody that worked at a morgue or ran a morgue or something like that and gave him, like, carte blanche. I can't imagine. I can't imagine working at a morgue and having a friend and being like, hey, go to town. And, like, giving them... I can't imagine... A situation where that would be okay 
where I would do that. You know what I mean? Like, what kind of person would I be if I had a friend like that that came to me and said, hey, um, can I have the keys to the morgue? Like, I want to go in, like, and, you know, commune with the dead bodies for a little bit. I'd be like, get the fuck out of my face with that. <laughs> Not like, oh, here you go. Have a good time. Jesus Christ. What the hell's the <laughs> matter with people? I don't know. But, yeah, so apparently the story was that he um, got a glass eye from one of the corpses and uh, made a ring out of it. So... Like I said, I don't know if that's true, but from what I learned about him, that sounds like some shit that he would do. I don't know if he did it, but it sounds like some shit that he would do. Because he was really, like I said, not only we see like a pedophile, a sexual predator, everything like that, but he was also like really a dick. He was like just an asshole. Like he was just really arrogant and he just, you know, he knew absolutely that he would just get away with everything and he was just like so fucking smug about it. And I hate fucking smug. I think I hate smug more than anything. So it's like, if you do all this bad shit, that's bad enough. But then if you're smug on top of it, and it's like, yeah, you'll never catch me. Then I'm, oh man, then I'm really going to want to fucking punch your face off because shit, I hate that. So, and that's, so every time I watched him talk, I was just like, yeah, I just wanted to like bust him right in the fucking face. But yeah. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Cheese on toast is like having pizza. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like cheese on toast is one of those simple pleasures of life. Like I said, it's just two things, just bread and cheese and kind of toasty, but it's so, so good. So good. Um, yeah, Sabrina says, if you get the Mummy movies, you should also get the Scorpion King that The Rock is also in. I, re I think I saw that a long time ago, but I don't remember that much about it. So yeah, he probably liked that as well. Um, yeah, Jason said he used charity to cover up his crimes. And yeah, that's another thing. I think that, and like I said, it's kind of like, the way that his personality was, like I said, he wasn't dumb. He was actually really, really intelligent and really manipulative. And I think that he absolutely, on purpose, cultivated um, friendships with famous people, like rich people, like other people, like way up in society, like ro the royalty and fucking Margaret Thatcher and the Pope and shit like that as cover. And he also did charity work, too. And pretty much like even people at the time said that he would always choose charities. And like I said, it's, you know, I'm sure the charities were glad to get the money because he did actually give them the money. But he seemed to choose charities that were more high profile or the events were high profile. So I think that he did it more for him. Um, and the weird thing about it is that it could be that he was doing it and he said this. Like, this is what I mean about him kind of, like, saying shit out loud, like, sometimes. And people are like, you know, at the time, maybe people just thought he was being funny or glib or whatever. But it's like, now that we know all the shit that he did, it seems like maybe he was trying to tell everybody, like, what he was actually doing. Because some of the shit that he says is, like, pretty blatant. But I think that he was kind of the thing where he gives money to charities that are very high profile. And I think that was part of his cover. But I also think he was a lifelong Catholic and he was apparently like pretty, um, you know, he was raised like that and he was apparently like really, uh, you know, uh, devout. And I think, and he did say this one time that he thought, well, if I give all this money to charity, then God will like look the other way at like the bad shit that I do. And he even said something like almost exactly like that like out loud, like on TV one time. So I think that even though I do think that he was manipulative enough and intelligent enough to like do that shit on purpose, like, oh, nobody will suspect me because I give all this money to charity and I'm a wonderful person. It's like he was absolutely doing it for that. But I think maybe subconsciously he was also doing it as kind of like a balancing of the scales. Like I'm like, well, I'm doing all this horrible shit over here, but I'm also doing all this good shit over here. So it'll kind of like even out. I do kind of feel like he maybe felt like that. So I don't know. It's, it's like really complicated. I did see like um, a couple different psychologists and psychiatrists and stuff like that, that gave kind of uh, breakdowns of him. Most of them say that he had like, he was totally a psychopath. And honestly, like a couple people uh, on some of the documentaries, oh. Okay. Don't, well, don't yell at her because that's more distracting yeah, than, yeah, yeah, than yeah. the noise, like I said. She tearing up furniture. I'm used to her tearing up the furniture. It's yeah, too late now. Yeah. So, <laughs> and if you yell at her, she just stops for a second and then you starts doing drink. Yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, one thing that people noted 
was that he was one of those people that was completely emotionless. Like I, that was one word that people used. Um, a couple people used the word soulless. Um, that they looked in his eyes and they didn't see. But like everything was a facade, almost like nothing was behind it. Um, a couple people did say that about him as well. So I kind of feel like he was all show, like he was all facade. He knew very well, like how to manipulate people, but he didn't really seem to feel anything to any degree. And he actually, again, he even like said that outright, like, I don't have emotions. I don't, or he said something. And I think I wrote the quote down. I have it on in my notes somewhere. He even said to um, Louis Theroux on that show, he said, um, cause Louis said, oh, you said one time that you didn't have any emotions. And he said, well, you know, I don't do emotions. It's like, if you tell people you have emotions, then you have to like talk about it for two hours and blah, blah, blah. He's like, and then he said, I'm just very good at masking them. He said that. And just like the way he said it was like super, super creepy. So absolute psychopath. I mean, and I really don't know why like nobody called him out on that. Because a lot of people, even at going back decades, like said that he seemed like a fucking psycho. But, you know, that's kind of what happens. In hindsight, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Scotland Yard. Let's kind of give a little bit of a thing. Um, here, what? <laughs> I can't. He's showing me the. He's showing me his little. Uh, that's that's a murder harness. Federale girl there that he's talking about. That's, that's okay, man. I, I I looked. He's gonna check your messages. Check your messages, dude. I'm in the show. Yeah, we're in the middle of the show. In the Come show, on. dude. Yeah, camp guy said he didn't cry when he was on This Is Your Life. Yeah, and like I said, people that knew him said that even though he was very good at at like playing at emotions like he would do like the kind of a theatrical blah 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 they never got the sense that he actually felt it i think that's why a couple of people um on some documentaries i saw they said that he seemed like soulless like you looked in his eyes and you didn't really see anything Sounds uh, like a fucking psycho they look like yeah what, one guy even called him quote unquote robotic yeah he said he was like a robot like he didn't feel anything he didn't and like i said he seemed aware of that which you know yeah and, you know, pretty much everybody that looked into it, like, that are experts in that field uh, said, yeah, he absolutely seemed to have all the uh, earmarks of psychopathy, big time. And he seemed, well, he seemed like one of those people that, and he even said this a couple of times, too, was that, well, all that matters is just, like, having fun. Um, you know, obviously fun for him, not fun right, for other fun people. For else, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, so he didn't really care. I kind of feel like he saw other people as just like means to an end. You know what I mean? Which, like I said, is one of the very definitions of psychopathy. You don't see other people as people. You just see other people as like NPCs who you can just like use as you wish, like for your own entertainment. And I kind of feel like, and I kind of feel like he was absolutely that type of dude. So, uh, all right. So let's kind of go into this motherfucker's uh, background a little bit. Let I'm broiling that meat, so I'm just watching the timer. You're just watching the timer. Yeah. Okay. So well, I my, should be going down there. Holy in a minute, crap! Actually. She's like rolling around. Yeah, she's fighting your hair um, rubber, your hair band. She. I she went into my. I have a little drawer over there that has like a bunch of like little rubber bands and jewelry and stuff. And I opened that drawer like to get a necklace out. And she looked in and she was like, ooh, rubber band, thank you. And she plucked it out, stuck it in her mouth, and jumped off the sink and then ran over here and started like flinging it around. <laughs> she, for some reason, she's, she likes her regular, like, you know, toys people buy for her and that we bought for her. But for whatever reason, she fucking loves is just little black, like little ponytail bands. Because she can pick them up in one little claw and she can throw them and she chases them and she carries them around her mouth. And it's like, it's really, really funny. Um... Yeah, didn't he host a musical game show? In, it was not so much. He was on Top of the Pops, and he had his own show. We'll get into that. But yeah, he started out in radio, but then like he went on to TV. All right, so uh, so he's born in Leeds, um, kind of during the Great Depression-y kind of era. He was the youngest of seven children, a uh, very devout Roman Catholic family. Uh, his family were actually quite poor. 
Uh, he was quoted as saying later that his dad was quote unquote scrupulously honest and also scrupulously broke. So there was that. So he apparently grew up, uh, you know, really, really uh, destitute. So, you know, not destitute, but poor. Holy crap. She's having a good time back there. <laughs> if you can see her leg every now and then, like run around back there. So he went to school until he was 14 and then uh, started working in an office. And then when World War II came along, he was actually conscripted as what they called a Bevan boy. And that was like, if you weren't old enough to go into the armed services, um, but you were still like a teenager, they'd be like, well, we need coal for the war effort. So they'd send you down to work in the coal mines, and that's what he did. So he went down to work in the coal mines. Now, apparently, while he was working down there, he got, like, a lot of uh, injuries. Like, I think there was one kind of, like, explosion or something like that. He got, like, some spinal injuries, which is why later on, like, he gave to, you know, spinal injury charities and things like that. Wasn't the only reason, but you know what I mean. That's what I'm saying, where he got the, ad the idea. Um, after that, uh, when he was maybe like in his late teens, early twenties, uh, he went and became a scrap metal dealer. Now in the early 1940s, he starts out just going around to like dance halls, um, and playing records. Now this wasn't really, he kind of claims that he was the first DJ. This is a disputed claim, but... It's kind of possible because nowadays it was like D DJs are like ubiquitous, but back in the early 1940s, that wasn't really much of a thing. You know what I mean? Where somebody would just go and like play records and people would dance to them. You know what I mean? It wasn't really a thing. Uh, so he started doing that, claimed he was the first DJ. Uh, in his autobiography, because of course he fucking wrote one, uh, he was the first, he says, he was the first to use two turntables in a microphone and a microphone like at the same time and he says that he did this in 1947 however uh this is not true because uh twin turntables were actually there was a, a illustration of them in a bbc handbook from 1929 many years before he said that he was the first person to do it but like i said he was very self-aggrandizing so there's that that's not really that uh much of a stretch say so he was a big fucking liar about that. Uh, then he went on to do a bunch of like uh, professional sports shit like that. Um, he was a uh, race bicycles and he was also a wrestler for a time. Um, you know, so there was that professional wrestler. He was kind of a... Uh, he, he was a fairly big dude, and he was kind of like a scrap. Like, he would get in fights. He was, you know, he had kind of like a violent uh, temper, I guess. Sounds like, oh, yes. Sounds like TBI. Which is... Traumatic brain injury. Or maybe he was just the asshole. Head injury. Might have been maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's possible that he could have got, like, some head injuries, and it's it. Because a that's something that we've talked about a lot of times, like, on the, some of the serial killer shows. Yeah. It's not 100%, because some of them don't have that, but... A surprising amount of serial killers did have head injuries in their youth. Mm. So there is, I mean, they know that there's probably something to that. Because if certain parts of your brain are damaged, particularly the part that uh, inhibits bad behavior, yeah. then obviously if that part is damaged, then uh, yeah, that's going to cause you some problems later on. Uh, so yeah, so he lived in Salford in uh outside of manchester just you know salford lads club i always remember that from the all the uh the smiths photo shoots in the 1980s but so he lived there from the mid 1950s to the mid 1960s managing uh a the plaza ballroom in manchester city center uh he also managed another kind of dance hall in leeds in the late 1950s and early 1960s and a couple of other ones around this time he had a really really popular monday night uh, dance night, you know what I mean? So just like nowadays, he had like a club night and all of the teenagers would come and dance there. Now I will say in 1955 is the first incident of abuse that was reported to the police. 1955 is the first one they have on record. Uh, I don't have a lot of details about it, but they know that it took place somewhere in Manchester. That's all I know. Like, during the time that he was managing one of the dance halls. But there is actually a record of some abuse of some type happening in 1955, and that's the first uh, time that they had heard about anything like this. Now, while 
uh, Jimmy Savile was doing his DJ thing, like at all these dance halls. There's this music executive from Decca Records, and he hears about, like, oh, there's this popular DJ guy, and blah, blah, blah. So he goes there and checks him out, so he gets, like, discovered. And so they let him be a DJ at Radio Luxembourg, and he was there for, like, 10 years. So by that, he was doing, like, um, a show pretty much every day. Like, he would do a program every day, and he would do a show on Saturday that, like, 6 million people listened to. So it was, like, a big deal. So by the time the 60s had rolled around, he was actually one of the most recognized, if not the most recognized, radio DJ in the UK. Because like I said, in America, it's kind of hard you know, for people to imagine, but in the UK, all their radio stations are national because it's not a big country. I'm gonna check the code. So, you know, when you hear stuff on the radio, like everybody in the country, if you're listening, you hear it. Whereas in the United States, we don't really have any, you know, there's, there's shit that's like, uh, kind of, you know, broadcast to different radio stations, you know, sent out to other radio stations, but radio stations tended to be very local, like usually like just like within a city or a county. So it's, I always just thought that was really weird when I read about, cause I, like I said, I was really into like new wave and stuff like that in the early 1980s. So I read a lot of stuff about the UK because that's where a lot of the bands were coming from. And that always kind of like blew my mind that if you got on the radio in the UK, like you, you were like a countrywide sensation because everybody in the radio heard you where it's like, if you got played on a radio station in the United States, it's like, you know, if you got played on a radio station like New York, people in New York would be like, yeah, cool. But everybody in the rest of the country would be like, who the fuck's that? You know what I mean? Because it's, everything's just so far apart, but it's like, yeah, I thought that was really funny, but yeah. So, so yeah, so he's like pretty much the most famous, uh, DJ, but by the time the 1960s roll around. Now, uh, at this point, like TV comes calling. So his first thing that he did on TV, he was on this kind of music show called Young at Heart, like back in 1960. And this show was black and white, but this was kind of where, and like I said, I think this is maybe, he knew pretty early on. Um, I will give him that. He was very savvy that he's like, well, I need to stand out. I need people to like, remember me. So he would do like outrageous shit. And, you know, to be fair, it was like a lot easier to be outrageous back then. So all he had to do, all he had to do like in 1960 was even though the show was black and white, I'm going to dye my hair a different color every week, which like I said, nowadays, big deal. As I put a different color wig on every time we do the show, but uh, well, not always, but you know. So he did that and like, it was kind of like, ooh, look at this crazy person. And like, he would wear kind of like weird clothes and stuff like that, but it worked. I mean, it ensured that people remembered him. Hey, it's the weird guy with the different colored hair. It's the weird guy with the gold chains or whatever. Um, Cause like I said, it was a lot easier to stand out back then. So uh, 1964, so he did that for a while. And then in 1964, he actually was on the first edition of Top of the Pops, the iconic uh, British TV show. Now, 1960, though, when he was still doing Young at Heart, this was another year that there were several reports of him doing some sketchy fucking shit. One of these uh, was a 10-year-old boy who told the police that he had asked Jimmy Savile for his autograph outside a hotel because, like I said, Jimmy Savile was on TV by this point. So this kid allegedly asked him for an autograph outside a hotel, and then Savile said, yeah, come in here and I'll give you an autograph, and, uh, yeah, and then sexually assaulted him. So there's that. Uh, so, yeah, that happened in 1960. 1965, um, he had started doing Top of the Pops in 1964, which was a BBC show. So he's working for the BBC at this point. Um, now, so he starts doing some shit there. And also right around 1964, 1965, he also starts to volunteer at Leeds General Infirmary, the hospital. Uh, he starts volunteering there as a porter. And he also volunteered at another hospital called Stoke Mandeville. And... 
from about this time, it seems that he started molesting patients at the hospital. So there was that. That was mid-1960s. 1966 is what, in hindsight, police have started to call his peak period of abuse. This is when most of the abuse cases, although, like I said, they go all the way back 19, 1955 to like 2009. So that's how long this fucking dude was doing One this second. shit. What's that? Try it on the show. That's Claudius Carnitas. Okay. Oop. Tell them what you guys Talk think. about something. <laughs> I don't like dead air. <laughs> it's not radio. I know, but I'm just saying I still don't like it. What do you think of that? It's delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those are better than mine. Very mm -hmm. the, very subtle spices, mm -hmm. and just done done well. I'm gonna do them like that. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, because then from that you can change it to anything you want. You could add any kind of sauces; it'll mix, you know. Yeah, like I said, I kind of like the uh, the milder the milder spice. Yeah. Spice, yeah. Plus, less likely that I'll get heartburn later. <laughs> Okay, where was I? Sorry about that. All right, so 1966 starts his decade-long <coughs> quote-unquote peak period. <coughs> like I said, that's when he was still doing Top of the Pops. 1968, he started at Radio 1. Now, at this point, he starts doing a show, which he called Savile's Travels. This was a weekly show, uh, which came on Sundays. He would just go around Britain, and he would, like, talk to people, and then he would do a show about it. He also um, kind of scammed the BBC into paying for, like, a camper, like an RV-type situation, because uh, he said, yeah, I need it for my travel show. Um... And he would later use that trailer, camper van, whatever thing, uh, for a lot of his exploits, because he could, like, kind of take it anywhere. He was always kind of, like, he said a lot of stuff about, oh, I travel around everywhere. He almost kind of had, like, a gypsy type of lifestyle, so he would go around in this fucking camper and stay in different towns and presumably, like, get... I saw this one documentary, and they said, yeah, his little van or whatever was out in the parking lot one morning and then like these two or three like 14 year old girls like come out of it one morning yeah you know what i mean so it's that kind of situation he had like a mobile mol molestation vehicle yeah. let's call it that they're they're fighting in there saying it's tbi other people say no he's just a piece of shit i've had tbi i mean it could be it could be both things it yeah. could be both things i've had tbi went to walter reed army hospital went through the whole fucking training program how to live with tbi and what could happen what TBI does is it can magnify the most fucking negative aspects of your personality. So he might have been kind of like this, and then TBI that makes made it, it worse. worse. All right. The thing is, though, is I'm going to fucking back off on that slightly. They used to think that TBI lasted forever for your life. No, not really. Depends on how severe the damage is. Most people over a period of years can heal back up from it. Well, brains are incredibly do, plastic, right. meaning that, you know, it, it, provided that the damage is not too severe. Not so severe, and where it happened and everything. Your brain can kind of, like, rewire itself and kind of fix itself to an extent, like, over, like yeah. I said, depending on what the damage is. Mine was frontal left hemisphere, which uh, has a lot to do with inhibitions and shit. And that was when I started seeing the damn monkeys and the fucking monkeys that raged and wanted to kill me all the I time. I remember that. She's, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. You were kind of uh, in a in a bad place when I met you. Yeah. Not you were getting better, but yeah. you, it was still pretty bad for a it long time. It was off and on too, it, uh, under stress. That was that cost me my military career uh, for ten years after after my head injury. You couldn't put me in the front lines. I would have had to have been in a training and support role only. And I did time in the corporate world, and then did some st time in basically in the training world, training military and and military guys from across the world on how to do certain things with um, post-blast investigation. Eat, running ranges, running ranges. Um, compared to what I was in 94 or 95, oh shit, man, I'm a lot better than, than then. You know what I mean? Hair 
just a hair trigger fucking. Yeah, you've settled down a lot. Yeah, hair trigger fucking temper. You still Mind got you still got that, but oh, it's nowhere near as bad as. But it was. not like it was. Yeah. Well, and not even as bad as it was when I first met you. Yeah. And I'm sure it had mellowed out. It had since mellowed then. out some, right? Uh, you know, because I you, you know I think a lot of that happened before I even yeah. met you. So. Yeah. Yeah. And um, the more stress I was under, the more of a hair trigger I would have. Um, bad dreams, and I and I also have uh, PTSD. So, the head injury and the PTSD kind of had like fucking could play off of one another. And uh, part of my PTSD was fucking hyper vigilance, where I couldn't sleep, constantly hyper. Yeah. I was constantly on security, constantly you know looking over my shoulder, uh, couldn't sleep. And to this day, I have to have headphones on. I have to have noise. I mean, like I said, it's better than it used to be because back in the yeah. old days, shit, I was just kind of like. You know, yeah. touch you or something like that. You'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. you would yeah. like flip the fuck out. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, and yeah. you'd be like, you'd be having nightmares all the time. And noise for me always meant that it was safe. If it was quiet, it was dangerous. Because you know, being infantry. See, I like you quiet. work in a very quiet, dark environment, striking from the shadows, from ambush. You know what I mean? Ambush, counter ambush. This is the old warfare, not what they do now. You know, World War Three shit, shit that's going on right now, actually, over in what you call it, but f- floor, forest and jungle type warfare, Vietnam style stuff is is what we were trained for in the hundred first. That that at, in that era, and what I, what we did is now a lost art, which they're gonna have to retrain for it because that's what's coming again, if it ever does, if there is an America, we'll see. What's up, Pookie? Look at she fighting. Well, yeah, it's like it's funny because. You always kind of had to have, like, noise when you were sleeping, and I'm, like, the opposite. I'm very, very sensitive to noise. I don't like... I like quiet. You know what I mean? You're right. So anytime there's, like, any kind of noise, if there's noise, I can't sleep. Noise means it's safe. And fucking the the safest is, like, wines, jet turbines, or engines, generator motors. uh, I mean, shit like that doesn't bother me. Like, the sound of, like, a ceiling fan or something. That doesn't bother me. Yeah. But... Anything that's because what you used to do was yeah. you used to always want to like listen to a podcast while yeah. we were sleeping, and that just kept me awake half the night. Yeah, or it kept waking me up. Right. Like sometimes I'd fall asleep, but then I kept waking up like when the tone ch- like when the Coming, voices changed or something. Going all the way back to military because I, I was also grew up partially at a military academy, constantly in a crowd of people that are talking and ta- in talking all the time. So there's just this constant 24 7 because even in the military not unless you're way in the rear the fort or something in a fort everybody sleeps at night but on missions only half of the people are sleeping at night you're sleeping in shifts so there's no such thing as quiet you know what I mean? Not when you're in a... Well, you know why... The unit can't sleep. It has to have at least 50 Right, I get that. But you know why I think that I'm kind of more like a quiet person is because I grew up in a family with a lot of siblings. Yeah. And, you know, I was around little kids all the time. I was... So my whole... And I always like lived with other people. Yeah. So I got... So it's, it's always kind of like there was always noise going on and it always like annoyed me. Yeah. And like the older I got, like the more and more annoying it got. Yeah. And I was like, why can't I just have some fucking quiet like for one time in my fucking right. life? You know what I mean? Right. Because it was just like so much noise like all the yeah. time. I never got any quiet. Yeah. I, my just upbringing in my life is just was very inverted from what a civilian is. What comforts a civilian is dangerous to me. What what feels dangerous to a civilian is comforting to me. It's very it, it's very opposite, you know. And you look at PTSD and you say, yeah, that's it. High energy, danger, risk taking, motorcycles, almost getting killed. Oh, that's great. Being still, quiet. Oh no, this isn't right. Well, no. See, I this want. Right. And another thing too, I want it, especially nowadays. I want it to be quiet. Yeah. Because I want, like, if, for example, like if Pookie got hurt, yeah. like in the middle of the night, like if she got into something, she couldn't. Yeah. I want to be able to hear her cry so I can get up. Um, I can totally understand. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like I don't want to have headphones on. I don't right. want to like not look. If somebody like breaks a window, I want to fucking hear that shit. Right. I don't want to have headphones on. I well, want look. it to be quiet. Y'all fucking who've been, who've been with the show for years and years, you know, Jenny's like a saint, okay? She can put up with quite a bit. 
I'm not a, I'm not a normal human being. Chances are, th- ain't that the truth? Chances are, <laughs> I love you. Tom. The average wood woman wouldn't have put up with it. No. But I, I was never really relationship based. You know what I mean? So, had it been anybody else, they just would have left and been like, okay, and I just would have gone on to something else. You know what I mean? But well, that happened. Yeah, that happened. Okay, and then just yeah. I know what you're like. Yeah, I'm like that. You know. <laughs> Here's another one, okay. <laughs> Two or three months, okay, he's gone. Okay, where's another one? Because uh, it was just a high attrition, a high attrition relationship ratio. Because when she met me, I actually was dating other people, but she saw I was... Well, kind of, I was too. I but, was a, you know, you yeah. know, I was a serial monogamist. But I really didn't care if I was single or not. Um, yeah, he didn't really give a crap either. No. Way. No, I mostly cared about how much money I had or... What my clothes looked like, or how, what the motorcycle was. Men have relationships with machines and things. Yeah, I've not noticed. so much people. Not just you. Like I, my ex most men are like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I've, most men I've known have been like. Yeah, it's just, they're not all like that. Maybe, but the, most of the ones I've known. It's have been hormones. Like that. I think most of the ones I've been. Yeah, known. I think they find it easier to relate to inanimate objects. Yeah. Well, inanimate objects are are systems. They're and very, they don't talk back. They well, they're, they're predictable. Yeah, they don't do. Off. Yeah, they don't do anything. You don't, don't do anything out of the like, or you, yeah. Right. Yeah. You can expect everything. And you, you can do. control I that. I get it. And you can do this and that and this and that. You, oh, isn't that awesome? That's you know no fun. It, well, that's our version. Of, <laughs> that's our version of creating a child. That's no fun. I'm gonna make this and I'll make this motorcycle. I'll make that gun. I, I like some this, excitement. I'm gonna make this and it's you know <laughs> that that's our version of like bearing children. They're not people, though. They're, they're machines and creations. But see, I get that a little bit because, you know, I as someone that writes books and stuff yeah. like that, I don't, I'm not one of those people, like Stephen King has said, like, he thinks of uh, his books like his children, even though he yeah. has actual children. I don't think of my books like that, but you do kind of, like, have a relationship with things that you create. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think it's the same thing as, like, a dude that builds a machine or, like, a person yeah. that writes a book. Um, it's kind of the same thing. It's still yeah. like a creative process. And I have like these ultimate bro ham fucking discussions with some dude at the bar, which is between, between bros, you're just trading information. You're talking about World War II engine compressions on fucking fighter planes and what the stall speeds were and fucking weird shit like that. Women are like, oh, we're in the club. Stop talking about it. I mean, you remember old fucking Fabio? Me and me talking, talking to Fabio. We can sit there and talk about Man, cars. He knew this. Uh, fucking, that's, that's, his name's fuck, not Fabio, but he looks kind of like Fabio. Yeah, we call him Fabio. He, <laughs> that's like, he looks like Fabio. Big old long. He long did hair. actually look a lot like Fabio. Yeah. So that's why we called down. him. Did, did he know that we called him that? Did we ever no. call him that to his face? No. Oh, shit. Sorry. No. Sorry. But, um, yeah. I don't, so I don't know if he watches yeah. the show or not. We haven't seen him in a long time. Nah. But, um, He's not around anymore. But, yeah, they were, uh, you know, they're both into. Machines. Machines. And, well, I mean, I get it. Like, look, if I find somebody. Like, because I've done this a couple times, too. Like, I'll get in a conversation with somebody that's super into horror movies or yeah. super into Mystery Science Theater, and I will talk for fucking five hours about that shit. And that's probably boring for people that aren't into it. So it's kind of the same sort of thing. But I feel like when you're in a nightclub, everybody's drinking. You want to drink she and dance that shit. and, like, hang out. It's like, you don't really need to stand one there for, like, for two, two hours, hours one time for, talking know. about... A motorcycle. Well, in one time, and I'm like, "Are you gonna come dance? Or are you gonna do anything?" One You're time, she nearly fucking bar? kicked my ass because we talked. Me and him talked for two hours. It was two hours about Ernst Udet, and she has no idea who that was. But Ernst, we were talking about Ernst Udet. I was so drunk by that point, I didn't care who yeah. that was. I was Ernst, just kind of like, "Are you gonna like have a good time? Or are you just gonna like stand here talking about shit when nobody cares about?" Yeah. <laughs> Ernst Udet was this fucking... It's like, I'm gonna go dance to some shit. Come on. Champion fucking Stuka pilot. He blew up like fucking 300 fucking German tanks on the Eastern Front. And fucking, he ended up working for Fairchild Industries and, and built, he helped build the A-10. All right, so... That, that. See, there you go again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ultimate tank buster. We're talking about... Yeah, okay, yeah. Pedophiles. I think his name And was, you're getting like all... No, no, excuse me. I got, I got messed up. His name was Hans Rudell. That was Hans Rudell. Not Ernst Rudell. Hans Rudell. I think it, I think it was. Yeah. And plus, like, yeah. sometimes you shouldn't assume that I don't really... Because I'm into, like, a lot of shit that traditionally, maybe, yeah. like, girls aren't into. Yeah. But... And I know a lot of shit, 
about shit that you would think that I wouldn't know about just because I've read a lot of stuff like over a broad range of topics. So sometimes in all of my readings, I've come across some of this information like, oh, well, yeah, I know who that is, blah, blah, blah. Maybe I don't know a huge amount about it, but you know what I mean? So don't ever assume I don't know anything yeah. about that shit. But um, I'm not really into uh, being in a nightclub where, you know, I just want to dance and have a good time yeah. and hang out with my friends and stuff like that. Um, That's him right there. His name is Hans Ulrich Rudell. He ended up being an American during Operation Paperclip and built the A-10. And he was a tank-busting king. And he, he's got, he wrote a really good book about being a Stuka ace pilot on the Eastern Front. Uh, recommended reading. He got shot down multiple times, lost a leg, went flew without his leg. Uh, uh, fucking shot down fucking... Who needs legs? He, who needs legs? He <laughs> shot down fighters from a fucking He might Stuka. have said. Yeah. <laughs> got shot down several times and then walked back and got another stook and went out and fucking blew up some more Or chairs. he hopped back, Hop probably. Uh, he had a wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck up my joke. Okay. <laughs> Tammy said, went to college with a guy who looked like a Ken doll. His name was Todd. Of course it was. But after a while, everyone called him Ken so much he answered to it. <laughs> it became his fucking... <laughs> did he have, like, plastic hair that didn't move? And was he smooth down there? Because I kind of feel like that's Ken's defining feature. But, you know. At Man Ray, we had a girl who was fucking... She was one of the local college students. She looked just like Barbie, fucking from... The, and, we, and everybody called her Barbie. And she was looked like a Barbie doll. Huh. And she wasn't gothic, but she fucking loved the gothic scene. She would just show up. She was just, uh... And she wasn't well, like, she wasn't like a No, word, she was like a preppy. Like, interesting. She loved the goth scene, though. Yeah, long blonde hair, long blonde hair and everything. Everybody called her Barb. Well, I mean, good for her. Yeah, she went with it. We don't, we, like, we don't mind normal people, like I said, as long as they're. She was cool. As long as she they're cool, cool. Yeah, and, like, cool. respectful. Don't yeah. come there. If you come there, like, all the time and you're, like, yeah. into the music or you just like she's the people or whatever. Yeah. Then everyone doesn't really care what you look like. She was a regular. Don't just come there and like yeah. be like, "Ooh, look how cool I am," and blah blah no. blah, and then like start making fun of people. And no, she could. She learned. She saw the fucking the way we danced, and she could do the fucking gothic dances. She liked all the fucking music. Well, there you the go. Right. She didn't have any gothic clothes though, and she was a college student. See, but that's okay. And that was her thing: was to fucking show up and be Barbie, be the local Barbie doll. I'm kind of more into people that yeah. if if you know about the music and you know about the yep. culture, I don't really give a shit what you look like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's cool if you have the look and everything like that, because I like that aesthetic, but you don't have to have that. Like, as long as you know what you're doing, you know? Yeah, well, what helped her is that she was like a 10. You know what I mean? She she was a bar. Well, yeah, hot chicks helped. Yeah, you know. she was... If you just look like a schlubby dude. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked. She or a some, fat girl. She, no, it wouldn't have worked. She was a it's fucking gonna, 10. So I hate to say, but that's probably... She looked like a model. Maybe not so much fat girl, but it's just like right. somebody that's not like all that attractive. Yeah. Mega, Mega says, Tom, you're not human. You are a Tom. Well, I don't He's know a Tom. I'm, yeah. You're one of I a kind. I don't know what it is. You're one of a kind. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it is what it is. I've been drinking. Just just be you, Tom. Yeah. Just be you. You know? That's what that's what Jenny tries to do. I decided I'm going to pull a Grand Theory. Where is Grand Theory, by the way? I, I decided know, I was gonna. Show up. I decided I was gonna be a Granthers and like start referring to myself in the third person yeah. from now on. I don't know why. I just decided that. Where was I? All right. So let's talk about this motherfucker again because we still got a lot to cover. Um. You know. Okay. Where was I? Do do do. Okay. So he's on Radio One. Uh, for a while. Like I said, he scammed the BBC into like buying him a what they call over there a camper van it's kind of like an rv is what they're talking about a recreational vehicle that's what he's talking about which he would use subsequently to go around and travel from place to place and like be able to like pedo and like fucking molest people all across the nation so you know there was that uh so 1969 to 1973 uh he was on another show called speakeasy which was like a discussion program for teenagers he ended up working at radio one for 19 years 19 years he worked for Radio 1, so it's like among other things. 1970, though, uh, according to later investigation, this is when Jimmy uh, Savile started to abuse girls at this place called Duncroft Manor, which is like a girls' school. It was a school for 
girls that were like troubled or you know had problems in regular schools and they kind of put them in this school young yeah. sluts that's what they're talking about or yeah it was that yeah. kind of stuff but like yeah. not slut shaming i'm just saying these were yeah. girls that back in 1970 smoking and doing this and right they were doing shit fucking, that yeah. girls shouldn't be yeah they were promiscuous or they were doing stuff their parents didn't like essentially yep. so they're just like well we're just gonna put girl you, jail we're gonna put you in girl jail yeah and uh these poor girls and some of them Dude, probably like Savile's like this. well, and probably it is. well. See, that's what I mean, and that's what and that some of them probably had some mental issues too, which right, like right. which they weren't real understanding about in 1970. Gotta say, so they put these girls in this home, and he's like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna volunteer at this girls' school because I'm so fucking good-hearted and everything like that. And it's like here are all these teenage girls who are a very vulnerable population. Gee, fuck her. And yeah, he just did that his whole entire fuck. I can't fucking believe this. It makes somebody me so, gave so him. Mad. Somebody gave him the lowdown on it. He this was, hey, man, so look, the wild ones are over here. That's what. That's what happened. There. That might have been ha- what happened. It was right. sad enough. He's yeah. probably had some kind of like fucking hookup, like <sighs> well, some some happened. creep that like worked there. I think that's what happened with over here. These girls, you. they're so like they're they're yeah. so fucked up. You can like you can tell them whatever. They're all damaged, and yeah. you can do all kind. Of, well, I'm not gonna name any names, okay? But we knew we knew a guy. Who actually said out loud, and I heard this firsthand, that he likes to go after the gir- the vulnerable girls, like the girls that have just like broken up or they've had some really bad shit happen to them because they're like much more malleable. It's, I don't I don't think that's the word that he used, but that's what he meant. That's not a fucking white haired fucking slob motherfucker that I'm thinking of, is it? Armpit liquor? It's not that guy, is it? No. Okay. I don't know who that is. I'm not going to say who it is. Don't worry about it. But, um, but I heard him say it. It was a long time ago, but I heard him say it. And there is a subset of dudes that know very well that when younger women uh, come out of relationships or when they're at a vulnerable point in their lives, they might make some questionable decisions. And the dude like was like, well, I want to be one of those questionable decisions. And Any they will woman, absolutely swoop right in. Any woman under the age of thirty is making questionable decisions, from my point of view. If you're or forty, I made some questionable decisions in my thirties as well. It's even worse under the thirty. Women in their fucking late teens and twenties are fucking make some stupid ass decisions. I, you know what? I didn't really make but any. Dudes are even worse. That's I'm true. I'm just saying, dudes are even worse. Than I was, yeah, I, was I would fucking dis stupid shit. Good thing I was in the army. That fucking. I mean, everybody people. does stupid shit when they're young. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, don't kill anybody, don't rape anybody, like, don't do anything like that. Everybody does stupid shit. Like, you know, everybody's gotten drunk and, like, fucking had dicks around their face. As long as it's shit like that, that's fine. Everybody's done that. Like I said, don't... A stupid decision doesn't mean, oh, I raped a chick. Or that that's not a stupid decision. That's... That's fuck, not a guy. That's stupid. like fucking monstrous, right a guy's there. Guy's stupid decision. He's already fucking had. He's already drank half a fifth of fucking whiskey. Or vodka. He gets on his motorcycle with a fucking loaded pistol in his hand and tries to run across the fucking top of a fucking four by four stretched between two buildings. See, that's a good example. Two or three. Or, that's goes, a good hold example. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. Shit is what is what young yeah. guys do. Oh, I can do this. Yeah, I can do this. Hold on. I'm gonna fire up two rounds. Get this shit on fucking camera. Yeah, that's the kind of. That's what the army was saving me from. Doing stupid shit like that. That's totally. You would do that now. Yeah, you'd have. If to, I didn't have stop to hold you, yeah. That's the. That, yeah. If he got drunk enough, that yeah. absolutely sounds like something that you would right. do. Right. Even now, in your fifty something. You have to fucking. You have to put couch. And I'll be like Tom. You have to couch no. it in a way that it's a challenge. You know what I'm talking about? Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're a fucking. Pussy. Dude, I know you're a fucking pussy because this, this and that. You. You're not even close to what Evil Knievel could do. And then you start talking about Evil Knievel, and I'm starting being seduced. But see, I'm shit. a girl, and even and, I know that. Right. It's like it's so easy to get you guys to like do yeah. something dumb. Right. Next thing you know, I'm, all you have I'm to do is like, in, all you have, all you have to do is like imply that you're maybe like not as manly as you think you are. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And they'll do like whatever. And then you start bringing up legend, legendary men from the past. It's you know hilarious. what I mean? They're fucking. You know. And the next thing you know, I'm I'm trying Dudes to are very outdo, easily. I'm trying to outdo Evil Knievel. And I'm fucking drunk as shit. <laughs> like I said, I could totally see you doing that so now. That's that's what the I army totally saved, saves now. a lot of young men from that. So I can imagine, like yeah. back when you were in your twenties, I didn't know oh, you. Yeah. I didn't know you back then. It was probably like a hundred times worse. Yeah. And like I said, worse. I could still imagine you doing that nowadays. Yeah. 
Yeah, I had to have a very... If I wasn't here, you probably would. Because I'd be like, Tom, let's I go. had to have a very structured environment uh, and be around nothing but alpha men that kept other fucking alpha men in check. You know what I'm talking about? It was a big fucking... It was a tough guy competition, but it was for real. You know what I mean? Yeah, you were a person that definitely was, needs to be kept in you're check. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm By gonna, some other uh, Yeah, I'm force. really not going to listen to you unless I'm scared of you. <laughs> That's really what it what it boils down to. Are you scared of me? Uh, no, but I respect what you say, but okay. I'm not scared of you, no. No, <laughs> fucking not, not in that same way. There were dudes in the army that I, that I thought might kill me. And that's I'm not lying because we had murders happen in my youth. Well, I might kill you. You're right. Fucking <laughs> my unit. You never change, know. My my unit helped helped change the army. We had guys in our units that fucking murdered dudes in the chain of command in mass shootings. They shot up the goddamn. They shot up and killed fucking the girls at the damn massage parlor down at Fort Campbell. And that was because dude found his wife out there giving hand jobs. He went berserk and killed her and fucking all, every other person in the massage parlor, and then himself. <sighs> wow. Yeah. And he was 20-something like, years old. just start with yourself and save the yeah. world a lot well, of trouble. Well, he's 20-something years old. And the, 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 the mind-altering experience, you know. And uh, they, just stopped, they stopped making bad motherfuckers like us after all that kind of shit started to happen. Well, and, and thankfully. And killed that first sergeant. Nobody needs that oh, fucking oh, aggro. Yeah. Because you never well, know when you're going to, you, like, pop off. Well, you might get mad at me and, like, fucking nah, do some shit nah, like those that. those days are over. But it was, uh, you beat on a dog long enough, they'll bite back. And that was just the way it was back then. We were training for World War III. It wasn't a joke. It was not a joke at all. You know, fucking... Okay, Mars Attacks, we watched that the other day. They, they showed old fucking dumbass joining the army and he gets fucking... But it was Jack just Black, kind of yeah. fucking... Jo- it was just a joke. But really, in the 90s, the army was not a joke at all. Fucking, we thought that... We were going to go to fucking some kind of nuclear warfare with the Soviet Union. Well, I mean, it was possible at that. Was, even possible. I mean, even though yeah. that was more an '80s thing, I mean, there was still like a carryover. Sure. Was, oh yeah, that carried totally, way over into the yeah, '90s because that, that it, was, totally this, could it was the same guys training sure. you who came up in that that culture. And it wasn't a bad culture. It was just that even good things can become extreme over time. And uh, well, that's just the way it was. Tyler the guy says, turns out Tom crash landed on Earth like Superman. Oh, and somewhere, actually. there's yeah. a planet populated entirely by Toms. Yeah, I gotta get back there. <laughs> I want to see what the female Toms look like. I want to see what the female Toms Do look you? like. Yeah. I don't know if they're ugly. If they're ugly, I'm coming right back. But... <laughs> I see a short story in this situation. Hmm. I think the female Toms look like Laura, because she's a Ross, too. You're hoping that. That's probably what they look like. Because Laura's beautiful. Yeah. Our friend Laura. Well, a lot of... Lot of she has, like... They're not related, but her last name is also Ross. It's also Ross. Uh, and she's, yeah. like, a really good friend of ours. And she yeah. is fucking gorgeous. And yeah. the thing about it is that she's gorgeous, and she is also... Real friendly. Awesome. Really, yeah. She is, like, just yeah. a lovely, lovely person. Yeah. She's and, a lovely person. And she, she looks... She actually looks like... The Rosses in my family don't look like that. They're all they're all red, skinny redheads. All right. Including my my dad, kind of he's kind of a stocky red, but in a way, Laura kind of looks like most of the women on my mom's side of the family. She doesn't really look like them. She she looks. I wonder if you're like distantly related. Um, it'd probably be pretty pretty distant. I would imagine. She says she has a lot of Greek influence in her family. I don't know. Hmm. I can show Laura. I got a picture of Laura. Yeah, we might. I mean, there's yeah, there's lots. But like I said, me and, and Laura would talk about it. We would laugh that that we do we do look a little bit alike, but we're slightly. Not, we're, but we're yeah. not we're not related. Yeah, they have the same last name, but yeah, yeah, we used to like joke about it. But yeah, I I hang out with Laura. Like she's like that's Laura and Jen. The one in all black is Laura. Yeah, and that's Jen in red. Yeah, I don't know if I can get it to. But yeah, that's at our house. Like at our yeah. old house. I can't get her nose to focus in. Well, nobody's nose is focusing in. Yeah. I mean, that was a while back, but yeah. And like I said, she's not only... I mean, Jen is like this, too. They're not only, like, ridiculously beautiful physically, but they're also, like... Real nice. Really awesome people. You know what I mean? Which 
is pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, all right. So yeah, where that was me in military school, shaking the hands of a fucking general and shit. So I I grew up in the shit. That's Southern California Military Academy. The same military academy that was featured in the movie Over the Top with Sylvester Stallone. I was in that school. Wait, was that the arm wrestling movie? The arm wrestling movie. The arm wrestling movie. Yeah. We should review that. At one. No, we shouldn't. Yeah. I don't want to watch that shit again. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a great movie. <laughs> I've seen it a couple of times. Uh, you know, like I said, I used to be married to somebody who was really into American action movies. Yeah. So I've seen, like, all the stupid ones. Uh, yeah, Planet of the, Rise of the Planet of the Toms. Holy crap. John Gora says, My grandma's boyfriend, Eddie, once said, Priests have the best means of getting what they're after in the confessional. They can figure out which are the naughty boys and which are not. Yeah. And like I said, I would never... I would never, like, do a blanket statement like, Oh, all priests are this, or all, you know, truck drivers are serial killers, or whatever. But... On the flip side of that, there is a disproportionate amount of people, like pedophiles and stuff like that, in jobs where they have a lot of uh, interaction with children. Like I said, priests or daycare workers or something like that. That's not to say that they're all pedophiles, obviously. But there's probably like a tiny percentage or like a larger percentage than in the general population because... People that are that have that proclivity, like I said, are going to go into that line of work so they have, uh, you know, access to victims, uh, you know. So there's that. Um, yeah. So we were talking about the Duncraft, uh, Duncroft rather Manor, which is a girls' school. So he starts volunteering there, and everyone's like, "Oh, this famous person. He wants to come and volunteer. Oh, he cares so much about like these vulnerable." Young people, yeah, uh, sure. That's what he wanted everybody to think. Uh, and later on, you know, a, a lot of people came out and said, yeah, he had fucking raped them or molested them, shit like that. 1972, uh, there is another police report. And like I said, some of the shit was reported to the police, but one, because the dude was famous and had some money. Two, uh, because this was... 60s 70s they didn't really take this shit as seriously as they take it nowadays i want to say um so people were kind of like man it wasn't really that big of a deal i kind of feel like they thought it wasn't maybe that big of a deal um so 1972 there's actually a police report though of jimmy saville groping a 12 year old boy and his two female friends who had come to be on top of the pops now, Top of the Pops later on went to, like, 18 plus. You know, you had to be, or 16 plus. Yeah, you had to be, like, older to be on the show. But prior to that, they let younger kids, like, come on the show. It's Top of the Pops, you know what I mean? It's like everybody's going to come and listen to records and dance. It's going to be a fun time. But after this shit happened, they're like, yeah, now everybody has to be, like, fucking of age. We don't want any more, like, fucking 12-year-olds in here getting groped by creeps. Because that's what was happening, you know. So, yeah, uh, that ended up happening. And like I said, there's actually a video of Jimmy Savile. It's fucking mind-blowing when you watch it. I don't remember what year it was from. It was from, pro I think it was the late 60s or early 70s. And there's, like I said, there's a group of people. He's standing there talking into the microphone. And there's a girl, like, standing right next to him. And you could tell that he, because she jumps like that. Like, yeah. like, he grabbed her ass or he grabbed her, you know, he grabbed something. And she was like, what the fuck? Like, she goes like that. And, like, some people around were like, huh, look at that. But nobody, like, did anything. No. And. Look, she, let me tell you, let me tell you boys some. You don't, can't, like, you please don't, please don't, please don't do that. Ass. Please don't grab Especially anything. If you don't, if you don't know her, okay. I mean, that and shouldn't have to be said, if, but and especially, apparently it does. Especially if you're not eight plus. If you're famous. And you're fucking an 8 or a 9 or a 10? Yeah, you can do that. No, you can't. Yes, you can. No, you can't. Fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger used to do that to fucking women. They fucking loved it. Arnold Schwarzenegger did that to me. I would kick they him right in the fucking taint. But that's not what happened, though. He's very charismatic, and they were there to see him. And he would do that kind of shit. It all depends on the fucking zeitgeist of fucking who's involved and what the situation is. Arnold would do, you do that kind of shit face? all the time. This is my... Arnold did that shit all the time. So he's also a sexual predator, is what you're saying. 
well, he'd show up and he'd go, hey, you know, yeah, yeah, fucking right, he was a sexual predator. Hell yeah, he would get it. He would get pussy too. Yeah. It depends on how you look. And, I kind of feel the like this attitude is. was contributing to why, why this motherfucker never got caught because of attitudes like that. Well, another thing, <laughs> Jenny, Jenny's looking at this from the point of view of a normal person. Of a, of a normal person, okay. Oh, uh, that imagine is not, that. That is not. Imagine that, that is not the life. That I apologize. I live. That's that not, it's not the life I live. Well, I'm not from Planet Tom. You clearly are. There's. <laughs> she can fucking. She'll attest to it. Before we were going out, there were girls that would come on to me, and I fucking grab them. And they'd fucking damn have the fucking pussy fucking showing and shit, and they'd give me head in the back of the club. Yeah, but yeah, she, one, but, but they weren't I, minors. They, no, of course they Two, weren't minors. they were girls that were already into you. Yeah, well, the dudes that are doing that are usually into doing that to girls that are already into them. Well, that's a different situation. We're talking about people that... Right, right. That's what, that, that there's right. no consent going I did on. this shit. This shit. just somebody that's standing there, right. like, next to a person. You don't I, expect this, this person to, like, saying, fucking... And I'm saying not to do, I did it. But I knew I could do it. Because of who was involved. Yeah, so did Jimmy Savile. <laughs> no, I knew I could do it because they were interested. But see, that's different. Like I right. said, yeah, if yeah, you different. if different. you know that person, right, right, that's what I'm saying. I said that. The problem with Jimmy right. Savile yeah. was like these were just people that showed up for the taping of Top yeah. of the Pops. Right, he's like assuming. they knew who he was he's because assuming, he's famous. He's assuming that girl's there for him. That but girl is probably there for one of the other dudes that's in the fucking crowd. That's what I'm saying. All right. It's like, yeah. and you can't assume that because you right. don't know that person personally. <laughs> like I said, yeah, you did some of that, but you knew those girls. Yeah. Personally, like you yeah. knew them or knew somebody that knew them, so yeah, it's not and, like and they were crazy as shit. It's not like they yeah. were strangers to you, right? Right. That they had just turned up for a taping of a no. TV show and they right. were fucking fourteen, right? No. That's like a different situation. No. It's still not a great attitude, but no. it's a different situation. Yeah. Um, you can't just randomly grab fucking fourteen-year-olds. No. So that Even 14, if you're famous. Grab, that girl's 14, he's grabbing in the crowd. That, I don't remember. Yeah, I think she was 14, 14, 15, something like that. Nasty motherfucker. That's what I mean. Well, that's yeah. he liked them that age. Yeah. So, well, that's the thing. It's like you can't just assume. Yeah. Even if they did come there because they know you and you're famous and yeah. shit, like you still can't assume. And I kind of feel like that's what you pissed got, me you off. You gotta have the fucking eye contact. Well, that's what vibe. pissed me off the most about that dude was that he just assumed, well, they probably came here because I'm famous, so I can do whatever the fuck I want to. Yeah. That's he really did seem to right. have that like attitude, and that just like really made me want to like punch him right in the dick. Like yeah. the whole every time I saw him talk, I was just like, I would really like to punch your head right off your shoulders like right, right now. It's just like he just made me so so angry. Because he was so, like I said, smug. I hate smug. Oh my god, I hate smug so much. And it's just like, don't do shit like that and then be fucking smug about it. That just like yeah. fucking amps up the fucking, oh, I hate John, that so much. John jumped in and says, Arnold spent most of his adult life in a hypersexualized environment. Yes, he did. He did. <sighs> I don't really, I don't agree with fucking the way Arnold turned out in his older age. I but but I understand Arnold. I've studied that motherfucker from an early age. You cannot take him seriously. He's a joker. He's funny as fuck. He's very charismatic, and he trolls the fuck out of people. Just because he comes out with a video talking about vegan fucking bodybuilding, that that motherfucker has lied from day one. Okay, you can go all the way back to pumping iron, and that bitch was lying back then about what it was he was doing. He never admitted to fucking steroid use. I can understand why he never did that, but because in those days people thought, and, and it's partially to this day, that they think that if you take anabolic steroids, that you can just inject anabolic steroids and get huge and sit on your ass and eat and get huge. That is not what happens. They, they, would, they didn't admit to it back then because they didn't want to undermine the work that they had created. You still have to fucking lift lots of weights to get as big as Arnold. You still got to have big, good genetics and a great diet to look as good as he did. But I'm going to give Arnold this before I move on because we're in the middle of the show. 
Arnold got fucking huge when he was young. He won all these competitions. But really, man, Arnold looked best when he was in Predator 1 at 41, 42 years old. He was fucking much, much lighter and smaller than he was when he was a kid. He was a lot closer to the, uh, what's possible to, for a normal man on, who wasn't on steroids, I think. Uh, so, for me, at Arnold's zenith was fucking Predator 1, and he was not fucking super, super jacked like he was when he was a kid. So... I don't know what I mean by that. I'm just saying that you know he was a legend even when he wasn't fucking jacked to the gills. That's what that's what I'm talking about. Although I that's will say, really from matters. a woman's point of view, like or at least from one woman's point of view, yeah. me, uh, back in the old days, after I saw Pumping Iron, I was like, oh, he's gross and he's a creep. Well, he was supposed to be kind of a bad guy in that movie, but yeah, I thought he was fu- he was funny. You know, he was an asshole. He was fun. I don't really find assholes all that funny, <laughs> funny. to be honest with you. I'm just gonna, especially ones like that, because like yeah. I said, dudes like that is the reason that Jimmy Savile got away with what the fuck that he got away with <laughs> after all this time. Wait a minute, hold on, you're blaming Jenny, you're blaming. No, Arnold no, no. I'm just Jenny saying Savile? that the whole no, about? no. I'm just saying that the whole culture around it, <laughs> the whole culture around it, where oh, dudes will do that. That's that what they're like, and it's just a joke, and you're taking it too seriously. That's why he got away with it for so long. Well, I'm just okay. saying that, like the whole yeah, like uh, cultural those, it kind wasn't of just shit. Those two. It was no, it wasn't. No, I'm just saying. No, that I'm just it. saying that it was part of like a larger that was narrative. The old that's what I'm talking about. Star culture. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That was the old school. That's star part of that culture. whole like uh, attitude. And that goes back to the 20s. Yeah, it goes back to the 20s. It was bad then. Yeah, the world's changed. Uh, but like, I, but I'm gonna go back and, and said what I'm gonna say. Arnold's greatness wasn't his size. It was. His fucking story and his fucking his attitude and the shit that he did, all those movies that he made, and I thought he looked best in Predator One, and he wasn't that he wasn't he was half the size as he was uh, when he was fucking doing IFB when he was doing Olympia, half that size. Size isn't everything. Well, most people. Oh, Tila jumps in. Tila says more for Tom's test tree. Don't give him any more. Don't encourage him. No, no, no. I got, <laughs> I, got, I got that shit stockpiled. We're already trying to like talk about other shit. And I got that talking shit about Arnold Schwarzenegger for yeah. whatever reason. I got uh, some shit coming. We're gonna see. We're gonna see. Okay. Honestly, I'm not. I'm not really a big fan of like what the shit is doing to my voice. Um, I have a friend. Uh, my friend Angel. Yeah. She says to me, "Watch your book reviews from uh, a year ago." Yeah. And listen to how much your voice is different. And I was like listening to one the other day because I'm rewriting like a lot of my book reviews like for a new blog that I'm doing because I want to do like written versions of them. So I went back and listened to one of the uh, book reviews that I did like a year or 18 months ago or something like that. And my voice sounds completely different. Yeah. Well, part of it, part of it though is psychological. You're a lot more confident than you were because it does make you a lot more aggressive. So you, you're, um, you speak from your diaphragm now than you uh as opposed to speaking from the no diaphragm. i know what that is because you, i did singing my whole life yeah. i know what speaking from the diaphragm i know you, all you, about you that really, you speak because i grew up doing that yeah. but it's not that it's right. not that well you you're not doing as much as you used to do okay so all that's just temporary it should go back to normal. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Because now I'm like, listen to my voice. I'm like, oh my God, I sound like a dude. No, you don't sound like a dude. To me, I do. No, you don't sound like a dude. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you listen to fucking Bakar Nabiva's voice. She sounds like a dude, but she looks gorgeous. But she, she does. She well, does I sound sounds... like a dude compared to what I used to sound like, is what I'm saying. Like a year ago. Yeah. No. No, you don't sound like a dude. If you listen you to the, I'll play you that video. I'll you just, play it. You just have a louder voice. I was shocked. You enunciate because I didn't you think yell like, a lot. Like when she said something about it, I was like, ah, you're tripping. But then, like, I listened to that video the other day. Nah. I'm like, oh my god, she's right. Nah, she's oh my she, god, she's, she's, right. she's she's trying to uh, no, she was right. Psych you out. She was right. Yeah, it was a it was a huge difference. Well, you can come off if you want to. You'll well, gain weight. You'll gain weight. You know, but I'll, I'll take you off if you want. 
I didn't really want to be on it in the first place. Okay, we'll take you off. <laughs> I'm just going to say. We'll take you off. But, you know. Prepare to get fat. I'm already but, fat. Nah, you're not fat. <laughs> it's not going to be any worse, I promise. Oh, it'll be much worse. No, it won't. Okay. No, it won't. All right, we'll take you off then. You know you know what you're... No, you're, you, you're, you don't... You don't okay. Know. Right. I'm not you. It's it's a different thing. Okay. All right. So, yeah, Tila's, like, talking about your test. You're, that's, like, like funny. Yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. So, where was I? Well, the whole girl school thing. Yeah. yeah. Special. All right. So, we got the whole great groping the 12-year-old boy thing. So, like I said, I kind of feel like 80, 85% of his victims usually fit females, but... Uh, he wouldn't pass up a boy if it came along. Uh, like I said, he would pretty much like uh, molest anyone that moved. So there was that. But nobody really knew about this. They did, but it wasn't like huge public knowledge. So he's still like allowed to fucking operate with impunity. Everyone thought he was an awesome dude. So he's getting real famous at this point. They decide they're going to put him in a bunch of like uh, those old like public information movies you know what i mean like you know uh doing some shit so his first one that he did probably the most popular one that he did was promoting road safety or more specifically promoting wearing your seatbelt in the car so he was kind of like in all these commercials for doing your seatbelt up and it was called this is like the dumbest name ever clunk click every trip that was what the whole campaign was called and it was like a whole wear your seatbelts dumbasses so you don't like die in a fucking accident now uh so he's doing all that he did like some commercials for like the rail system and he did like a bunch of other shit too now at this point he's still hosting top of the pops but he's getting into his 40s at this point and the makers of the show are like well it's looking a little ridiculous because like i said if you don't know he had um he seemed to want to look as ridiculous as possible. So he had like this bleach blonde hair that was like kind of long and he had like the bangs and shit. And he would always wear these like really stupid looking outfits. Like he always wore like fucking track suits and they were like gold or metallic or something. And he always had like these fucking gold chains and like, I don't know. He just like wore crazy shit all the time. So people would like talk about him, I guess. Um, and that stupid fucking bleach blonde hair that he had that just looked awful. So he's in his, what? Oh, okay. What? That was a super chat TK. I thought that was I know, I, ta- I said that a long time okay. ago. I said that a long time ago. I'm already on it. All right. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, he had like this white wispy hair and blah, blah, blah. So he's on top of the pops, which is a show geared primarily toward teenagers or people in their 20s. He's kind of in his 40s at this point, and his, like, old... Because, like I said, he's one of those people that, like, look like an old person even when he was a young person. So this creepy old dude is, like, dancing around with his cardigan and his fucking white-ass hair and his old-ass-looking face, and he's in his 40s, and they're like, yeah, this is looking a little ridiculous. So we're not going to have him on top of the pops anymore, but they decide to give him his own show. Now, he had an idea for a show... And they actually allowed him to do it. Now, this show, I remember hearing about this show, like, back in the 80s and thinking, wow, that's a cool idea for a show, like, back in the 80s when I was a kid. Um, And it was called Jim Will Fix It. Now, because Jimmy Savile was so connected and so wealthy by this point, he was able to, like, pull strings and get shit done, right? So what people would do is mostly kids... And they would write into the show and they would say, the thing that I want to do like most in the world is swim with dolphins or meet this famous band or whatever the fuck. Um, you know, it's, and he would like do it. So he would like pick out a letter and he was like, this kid wants to do this, that and the other. And we're going to fix it. And they do the show like about this kid getting to do this thing. It was kind of like the Make-A-Wish Foundation, except the kid wasn't dying. <laughs> is that like fucked up to say? But yeah, it's kind of like a similar kind of concept. So it was his idea, and this show was on for, like, a really long time. It was on from 1975 to 1994, so almost 20 years uh, this fucking show was on. Like I said, I never saw it at the time, but I heard about it, and I thought, oh, that's a good idea for a show where they just have, like, kids come on and getting their wishes granted. It was usually, like, to meet someone famous or something like that. So he could usually, like, set that up. So it's, like, super, super popular. What? 
What? What do you mean? What? Oh, I feel like you're like looking back there, like smirking, like no. something's going on, or what? okay. So the show is like a massive hit, and you know it's kind of part of a lot of uh, British people of a certain age. It's kind of part of their childhood. Uh, and this is this will never not be funny to me. But Jimmy Savile won an award from Mary Whitehouse's National Viewers and Listeners Association, 1977, for wholesome family entertainment. Mary Whitehouse, the stupid old conservative crone behind the whole video nasty debacle, gave Jimmy Savile an award for wholesome family entertainment. That is fucking hilarious. Fucking hilarious. She was lost. She in the was the one. She was the one that was like, we can't have any of these horror movies and pulled all the horror movies off the shelves because they're all video nasties. And they were actually like arresting video store owners for like having these particular... That's hilarious. Yeah. I did a show about it a long time Don't ago. Don't trust these fucking politicians, man. They're not qualified to tell you how to live. Fucking... <laughs> She's lost in the fucking Matrix. She's dead now. She was, I mean, she was old back then. Yeah. She's like They're fucking, just in it for the money. They're just trying I mean, to get just, re-elected. Just, well, the thing family. about it, like some of them, I think Mary Whitehouse, from what I know about her, she seemed like one of those kind of like true believer kind of, she's just like regulating everybody's morals. We can't have like people watching these horror movies. Yeah, but make she them can't do all see this. immorality when it's right in front of her. Don't listen to That's what people. I'm saying. They're not. So they're the not, fact that. They're not qualified to lead you. They're not leaders. They're politicians. And politicians are whores. They're just whores. Zach said, thank you, Zach. You. Show on Mary and the Video Nasties when I did um, yeah. I did a show on Video Nasties. I don't remember if you were on it or not. I might have done it by myself, but that was a long time ago. I kind of feel like we maybe need to update that because if we did the show, it was probably just me, and it was a long time ago, and I had to cut it a lot out because it was just an hour. But that would actually be a fascinating topic. I mean, the movies they picked to be on the Video Nasties list were just so fucking random. You could tell that they didn't really do, like, a great deal of uh, research into what was actually in these movies. And actually, I'm always I'm actually really fascinated by the whole history of, like, censorship of movies, particularly horror movies, in Britain and in the U.S. Because the U.S. did it, too. I know we like to, like, fucking shit on the Brits for doing that shit, but we do it sometimes worse. Uh, so we, we do it as well, but, uh, everybody knows about like the video nasties thing. So yeah, we should probably like do a revisit on that. Maybe I'll put that in the next, uh, poll and we'll see how that comes out. So yeah, so he got an award from her, which I thought was like very funny. And, uh, so he was, like I said, he was in a lot of commercials and shit like that. Uh, they did public info shit about like the rail system and blah, blah, blah. Now, uh, sometime during the 1980s, there's a police report uh, of a female victim. We don't know her name or age or anything like that. And she actually reported to the police that she had been sexually assaulted by Jimmy Savile in his camper van in the parking lot of the BBC. Because that's where he parked it when he wasn't out traveling around doing his show, right? Um, now, they can't find this file. They don't know if they lost it or something like that. But they do think that it was reported at the time. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, this camper, he kind of like talked the BBC into buying it for him because he said it was like an expense for his travel show. So, uh, so yeah, so, but he parked at the BBC and he apparently like, uh, assaulted some people in there. Now, uh, so he, during the time that all of this was going on, uh, as I said, he was involved in like multiple charities. They think that over the time that he was involved in all these charities, he raised probably about 40 million pounds, which, like I said, it's not nothing. It doesn't negate what he did, though. But, you know, I'm sure the people were happy to get the money. But, you know, now one of the causes that he raises, one of the causes that he raised money for was the Stoke Mandeville Hospital, which I think I mentioned earlier. Now, he had uh, volunteered there for many years as a porter. And he also volunteered. This fucking blows my mind. He also volunteered at... Uh, Leeds General Infirmary, which I mentioned earlier. He also volunteered at Broadmoor, which, like I said, we brought up Broadmoor before because fucking Bronson stayed there, like fucking serial killers stayed there. Like, I think one of the craze was there, the fucking Yorkshire Ripper, shit like that. It's for, like, the criminally insane, right? Um, I'm sure they have, like, regular, like, mental patients there, too, but it's generally for the criminally insane. That's what people know about it. I think we did a show about, the, about Broadmoor, didn't we? Yeah. And I think we brought it up on that. So... He was basically put, like, into, he doesn't have any, med he's just like a fucking dude. He's a dude 
that was a DJ and then he was on TV. He doesn't have any medical background or nothing. And they put him like on this board that was kind of like in charge of, and they gave him pretty much the run of Broadmoor. They gave him keys to the hospital and they gave him like pretty much like he had his own like little quarters, like his own little living quarters on the thing, like on the grounds. And he could just like come and go as he pleased. Like nobody said boo to him, uh, which didn't work out so well. Spoiler alert. I mean, he was just basically going in there and these are people that, you know, had mental issues, obviously. And if he did things to them and they reported it, they would probably not be believed, you know, because they had mental issues. So, and he absolutely knew that. So, like I said, he was somebody that was very, very manipulative and was targeting people like that on purpose. He was targeting vulnerable populations on purpose. And I think that that's probably why he volunteered at so many hospitals over the years, uh, you know, and wormed his way into, hey, give me the keys to Broadmoor so I can go in there and fucking rape people with impunity. And no one will like fucking say anything about it. And even if they do, like nobody would believe them or they'd think they were just like, oh, whatever. It's fucked up. I mean, that's that's one of the like worst kind of criminals because it's not even like he was, oh, he didn't know what he was doing or he just like was, he absolutely knew what he was doing. It's very, very calculated. Ooh, you all right? <laughs> Drop a jet. So, uh, so he sets up two charities. Uh, the Jimmy Savile Stoke Mandeville Hospital Trust, that was in 1981. And the Jimmy Savile Charitable Trust, 1984, that was based in Leeds. Now, so he gave, like, all of this money to them, like, over the years, but after the scandal broke, after he was fucking dead, not until, like, 2012, the charities, actually, the money they got from him, they um, decided that they were going to, like, shut down and, like, you know, send their money elsewhere. So, you know, there was that, too. Now, uh, let's see. There were some quotes about him during his life. During his lifetime, at the time of his death, Savile was regarded as an eccentric adornment to British public life, a ubiquitous and distinctive face on television, who relished being in the public eye, yeah, no shit, and was a shrewd promoter of his own image. And that is exactly how he came across to me. He comes across as someone that doesn't like I said I never met him in real life obviously but everything that I saw about him all the interviews that I saw with him he seemed very much like someone that was just all about image and he was all about appearance he wanted everybody to think a certain way about him but he was canny enough to know that he's like well I'm doing all this fucked up shit so I have to have some kind of like defense mechanism or like i said the like that psychologist called it a double bluff where it's like well i kind of know that there's all of these rumors that i did this fucked up shit even though i've never been arrested for it technically so he's like i'm just gonna come out and say that i did that shit without actually saying it but i'm gonna say it in a way that makes it seem like a joke or that is like so over the top that no one will actually believe it because he almost came across as like a cartoon character like the way that he looked he didn't look like a real person i mean with his ridiculous clothes and his ridiculous hair and like just he would just say outrageous things and so he kind of got known in public as being like a personality more than like a person you know what i mean and i think he absolutely used that to his advantage because he's like look everybody knows me as this persona and I'm going to use that. I'm going to come out and say, oh, yeah, well, they don't know if I'm a pedophile. Maybe I am. Maybe I'm not. But he's going to say shit like that. And because he's so brazen about it, I think that people were like, oh, he must be joking. He can't really be like saying out loud that he would do that kind of stuff. So I think that he absolutely did that on purpose. But he was definitely that kind of like narcissistic kind of person. The funny here's the funny thing, too. His fucking clothes were so ridiculous that for a while, 
um, there were a series of Halloween costumes, which were licensed by him, by the way. Like, he allowed it to happen. Uh, that you could dress up as him for Halloween if you were, <laughs> if you were into that. Because um, if you've seen him, it's a very distinctive look that he had. Honestly, I don't know if I'd call it distinctive other than the hair. But, I mean, once he got into that whole, like, bleaching the hair and it was kind of like this thin, white thing that he had going on. And he would usually wear, like, a tracksuit type thing. And it was usually, like, metallic, like gold or, like, metallic teal or some crap like that. And, but to me, like, I saw some other footage of him and it just looked like he was looking for the most ridiculous thing that he could present. It was like a Tiger King situation. Which, like I said, I guess it worked for Tiger King, too. It's like, you know, if you just want to, if you just want attention, you just have to, like, look as ridiculous as possible and be willing to let yourself look ridiculous. And I kind of feel like he absolutely knew what he was doing in that regard. Because it worked. Like I said, he did get absolutely famous. Everybody in the country knew who that fucker was. Um, he was also, like, a big, uh, real into smoking cigars. And he was always smoking a cigar all the time. And uh, one of his famous quotes was, my dad gave me a drag on one at Christmas, cigar I mean, thinking it would put me off them forever, but it had the opposite effect. So he smoked cigars pretty much his whole entire life and lived until he was 85, so, almost 85. So, you know, there, there's that. Uh, and as I mentioned earlier, he was also a member of Mensa, so he wasn't uh, a dummy. Um, and as I said, too, that Margaret Thatcher was such a good friend of his that uh, she was actually the person that kept pushing to get him knighted, even though some other people in the government were like, uh, we've heard some bad shit about him. We might not want to do that. But she just kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And then finally he did get knighted in 1990. Um, but apparently Margaret Thatcher and him were such close friends that he spent a whole bunch of like New Year's Eve's with them at like w with the Thatcher family like at their house so it wasn't just some kind of like oh I know Margaret Thatcher kind of thing they hung out now as I said he also hung out a lot with Prince Charles uh they apparently met each other doing like some mutual charity work and because of his because of um Jimmy Savile's work with uh the Stoke Mandeville Hospital Prince Charles felt pretty comfortable going to Jimmy Savile, of all fucking people, to get advice on Britain's health authorities, quote unquote. Like I said, Jimmy Savile was a fucking nobody. He was a dude that, like, became a DJ and then got famous, like, on TV. He was on top of the pop stuff. He didn't know anything about medical anything. The fact that he just, like, had money and he decided he was going to, like, give money to these, like, hospitals or whatever, and suddenly he's an expert on shit, then, like, Prince Charles says, oh, I'm going to, like, consult him on some... You know what I mean? That's, like, fucked up. He doesn't know anything about anything. Um, now, him and Charles hung out. Diana uh, was apparently not so keen. Now, when Charles and Diana were at, you know, kind of going in for their divorce or whatever, um, apparently... Uh, Jimmy Savile was like inserting himself into the thing like hey I'm here if either of you guys needs, guys need to talk or I'm gonna like moderate this situation between you guys like he was doing that kind of shit and like Prince Charles was kind of like okay thanks man like thanks for being there Diana apparently thought he was a creep like from the get go and was just kind of like she's like he would show up at my house like at Kensington Palace like where she lived like unannounced and they and like the guards would just like let him in just, like they don't let anybody in but because it was him, they let his dumb ass in. It's like nobody invited him. He just, like, comes over. And he's like, hey, you want to talk about the divorce, blah, blah, blah. She's like, he was, like, super creepy. But Diana thought he was creepy. But Prince Charles apparently thought he was an okay guy. So there's that. Here's another thing. Now, <laughs> this is so weird because I kind of feel like this is something that would be asked about more... I don't know. I kind of feel like that would be asked about more, na like, back then. But nobody asked him about this. So Jimmy Savile never married, and even though he was rich and famous, was never seen with any girlfriends or anything like that. Nobody, and the weird thing about it is like nobody said, oh, he's gay or anything. There, were no, there was nothing like that, um, which to me is very strange because I kind of feel like if it was anybody else, people would have been like speculating, but nobody did, and I'm really not sure why that is. 
So, um... I've never seen the guy. Maybe they didn't just see him as a sexual person, so they're like, well, of it course... It could have been that, because he looks... Laid. Yeah, because he doesn't he look like right. someone who would get laid. Right, like, you know, Buddy Hackett. Remember that motherfucker? Funny as a motherfucker. Had all kinds of money. They weren't asking where his wife was or his girl. I don't even know if that dude had a wife or a girlfriend. Buddy Hackett was much cuter than yeah. Jimmy Savile. Can I say yeah. that? Little short, fat, drunk Irishman. Okay. That's all right. But he was funny, he, though. Oh, man, he was great on the Liars Club. That yeah, he was, was great. fucking hilarious. He was funny. Yeah. But, yeah, maybe that's why. Maybe they just thought he was so, like, creepy and gross and ugly and looking sexual, right? that it's, like, no, that it never occurred to anybody. Yeah, didn't even think of it. That right. it that maybe that's what it was. That's probably what it That's possible, about. because he yeah. did look like a Because, you know, they're only worried about what, what hot motherfucker's going out with somebody. That's else. true. That's true. Yeah. But, yeah, he never, uh, he never married. He never had a girlfriend or nothing like that. And it must be said, he had a really weird... Thank you, Zach. Same with Kevin Spacey, never seen dating anyone and real secret about his private life. And then look what came out, no pun intended, about him. And the weird thing about that, though, is that Spacey's nobody speculated. Appeal. Yeah, he is. Yeah. And so is Jimmy Savile. But the yeah. thing about Kevin Spacey was that Kevin Spacey wasn't a bad looking dude. So it seems like you would get more like rumor shit about, oh, maybe he's gay or something. Like, maybe there was. I don't know. I don't really follow that kind of stuff. But the weird thing about that I found about Jimmy Savile was that usually if a celebrity of that magnitude if they don't have a significant other or they're not seen as being like a playboy or something like people start talking like oh maybe they're gay or maybe something else is going on or something like that but it seems like nobody really did that about jimmy savile which i think is very strange but like i said it might be because he was so fucking ugly that nobody because he is he was pretty fucking ugly yeah. and funny looking so um and not just i mean if he had he made himself funny looking. He wasn't naturally funny. Like, he was a little bit funny looking, but if he had dressed like a normal person and had a haircut like a normal person or something like that, or if he'd made himself look good, um, then he would have looked totally acceptable. But the fact that he made himself look clownish or, like, as ridiculous as possible um, probably didn't help. Everybody just thought, well, what woman would want to fucking sleep with that? Apparently, nobody, and that's why he had to fucking rape 12-year-olds. So... Um, but yeah, there's that. So, uh, yeah, American Military 100 says Saville did not exude any sexual charisma. Yeah, I, maybe that's what it was. Like I said, that's probably why he had to be a fight. Okay, so one thing I will say, and this probably contributed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Jimmy Saville was the youngest of seven children. And he said that he grew up very poor and that it was very, very hard to get attention, which, like I said, would explain the attention whoring later on, but it was very, very hard to get attention with all of these uh, siblings. Now, later on in his life, though, he developed a kind of a weird relationship with his mom. He called his mom the Duchess. He lived with his mom until he was 40, and... Some Now, some interviewers did think that was weird. So they were just kind of like, well, do you have, like, some weird thing going on with your mom? It's like, is that why you don't have a girlfriend or a wife or whatever? And he's like, oh, it's not because of that. It's not that me and her have something going on. It's that if I had a girlfriend and I asked her to move in, then my mom is scared that I would kick her out of the house. That was the excuse that he gave. Like, why there was this weird... Like, why he lived with his mom for so long and why he didn't have a girlfriend. And, like, it just, I don't know. It just seemed very Norman Batesy to me. So, there was that kind of situation. And uh, after she died, he kept all of her clothes and her bedroom. And she liked it very much like Norman Bates, just the way it was when she died. Every year, he would have all her clothes dry cleaned. And he would, like, do this big cleaning of the room. And it was like a shrine. Yeah, it's it's pretty weird. That's a weird that's weird um so in his autobiography though because like i said earlier of course he wrote one he says oh of course i had many sexual relationships with women of course of course yeah how consensual were they that's a different question but yeah this is the quote from his autobiography um when i i assume he's talking about oh all the places he's had sex because he thinks this makes him sound cool i guess and he says 
there have been trains and boats and planes. Oh, the places. I'm a member of the 40,000 foot club. Like, oh, I've banged somebody in a plane. Yeah. Should, fuck you. No, you haven't. Well, like it's I said, a mile high not, club. not consensually. Yeah. They got miles in England. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you know what miles are. Yeah. And bushes and fields, corridors, doorways, floors, chairs, slag heaps, desks, and probably everything except the celebrated chandelier and ironing board. Like I said, this is probably true, but were those girls willing partners? Probably not. Jeffrey comes in with $5 and says, I believe top brass in the UK media knew and didn't want to rock the boat. I agree. Okay. It does uh, seem like Weinstein they did makes, kind of know and about they were Weinstein, just kind of like, well. They crushed all speculation. That's what he said. I got I to gotta read out what his chat is. Yeah. I believe so. Thank you, Jeffy Art. I believe so. Yeah. It's like, and I don't even think, I don't even think the people that knew about it were necessarily yeah. in on it. They were just like, they didn't really want to get involved. And they're like, well, look, it's like, he works here. It's like, he makes a lot of money. It's like, if we say something bad about him, he'll sue us because he did threaten to do that. He also threatened to like, you know, have people killed and shit like that. So they were like, well, it's easier just to like not say anything. So I think a lot of people just like turned, you know, just turned a blind eye to it and just let him do whatever. And like I said, particularly in the sixties and seventies, a lot of people were doing shit like that. And they were just kind of like, well, I did some fucked up shit too. So maybe I shouldn't report this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Cause then my shit will come. Out. So I think there was maybe some shit about that too. But yeah, so he, so Jimmy in his autobiography said, you know, made, took great pains in like saying, yeah, I've had ladies in all of these places. Um, you know, she lives in Canada. You wouldn't know her. <laughs> it was that kind of thing. Um, but like I said, I kind of feel like maybe that was just so he would seem more normal or like I said, maybe that was true, but the women weren't really consenting. So there was that whole issue. So even as far back, though, as 1991, as I mentioned earlier, um, they started doing interviews. And this is when the motherfucker was still alive. They started doing interviews with, uh, you know, psychiatrists and stuff like that, like trying to analyze this motherfucker. Because, like I said, the rumors and accusations about this stuff, even though he had never been uh, formally questioned, he had never been like he had been questioned by the police, but nobody really did anything. It's like he'd never been formally charged or anything like that. So, but rumors had still been circulating like the whole time. Like it seemed like a lot of people knew what the fuck he was up to and didn't really do anything about it or couldn't really prove it, you know? So some psychiatrists came out in 1991 and said that he seemed to be, as I mentioned earlier, quote unquote, a man without feelings. Um, they said pretty much all that he talks about when you talk to him is money, like the material shit that he has. And denying that he feels anything um which seemed very uh instructive i guess and so even back in 1991 some of the interviewers thought that it was very weird that he hadn't had any like actual relationships he could talk about he didn't really talk about like his feeling he didn't really talk about anything like a real person would talk about and so they speculated well he's probably got some like you know sketchy shit in his background like even back in the 90s they were kind of saying early 90s they were kind of thinking he's probably like got some really bad shit going on because he won't talk about things he's very like i said if you see interviews with him he's very glib he's very um def he he deflects everything if you ask him a question that he doesn't like one thing that he did on one show and i saw a clip of this um i think it was what is your uh or uh this is your life they asked him a question. They said, what do you think about, and this was back in the 80s or 90s. What do you think about all these rumors about like pedophilia or whatever? They did actually like kind of ask him about that, like in a low key way. And he kind of like made like sort of a flippant or like a jokey kind of comment. And then he brings a banana out of his pocket and starts to eat it. Yeah. At which point everyone in the audience laughs like, oh, Jimmy, you're so zany. Um, and everybody forgot about the question. And he absolutely did that on purpose. Yeah. Look, I'm eating a banana. Isn't yeah. that crazy? And now everybody forgot about the fucking pedophilia question that they just asked him. So T Tila jumps in and said, and talk, she's talking to Tammy. And she goes, man, isn't that something about, I actually liked Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs, fucking, you know, uh, Anthony Hopkins. And uh, I want to say, yeah, well, see Hannibal Rising. A fucking great movie. All right. Um, period piece. You'll see that Hannibal actually was a hero. Just not the kind of hero you would expect. 
He was Batman in a certain way. If you're an asshole, he'll eat your ass. But and uh, not your ass. But he'll eat your brains. Well, maybe, maybe but... your ass too. Your ass is the most delicious part. Right. According to cannibals around the world. Right. He okay, some people might fantasize about being Batman. You'll never be Batman. You'll be closer to Hannibal Lecter. That's closer to what Batman actually was. Hannibal. And if you see Hannibal rising, you'll see what I'm talking about. He was a savage warrior outside of the moral system and outside of the legal system, like a samurai, a headhunter. But see, again... And they ate his fucking sister, so he's going to eat you. Like, I get okay. that. That's what... Like, I know it's a fictional character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is that yeah. this whole thing, like, oh, I'm outside of your petty, like, right and wrong, yeah. um, that's essentially one of the exactly one of the things that Jimmy Savile said. Exactly. exactly. Um, and that's how he got away with the shit, because he thought that he was outside of everyone else's morality. He could just do whatever the fuck he Well, he was he outside of the morality of England. He was. He got away with it. And that's, like I said, that's what makes me mad. Yeah. Because he got away with it. He got away with it. But Hannibal was... He died before they... Like like I said, there were rumors about it, but they didn't like... All the shit didn't come out until after he was dead. Hannibal's gestalt was very different. You are impolite, so therefore you suck and you are my food. And Hannibal Rising shows how he, how he made that connection. Uh, great movie. Great movie. And it's an origin story, kind of like Batman Begins. Roy says, did you ever watch the documentary with Louis Theroux and uh, Savile? Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, I watched that earlier today. It was very disturbingly insightful. Like I said, I not only watched it, then I went back and read the transcript of it. I found a transcript of it online, too. And I was like, he said so much fucked up shit in that. I think, like, Louis Theroux did... That was kind of, like, a famous one. And I think that at that time, the... Uh, you know, speculations about him were not as widely known. And so I think that Louis Theroux, after, like, he went back and did another one, like, in 2016, like, being, uh, he made a documentary, essentially, about how did I not see that he was, like, such a fucking pervert, like, the first time that I did a documentary about him. Like, Louis Theroux, he did this, it wasn't just him, he did a show where he had a whole thing uh, that was called When Louis Met, and he would go around and interview different celebrities and he would like spend a few days with them and like just like talk to them about their life and stuff like that it was like a little documentary show that he did so he did one about about um jimmy savile but nobody well i'm not going to say nobody knew but like it wasn't like widespread knowledge like what that fucker was up to at that time so but reading it now reading the transcript of what jimmy jimmy savile said on that show is fucked up like knowing what we know now like the 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 shit that he admits like outright and like i said it's i read some like quotes and i saw so, like some he was saying like even back in the 70s is like fucking knowing what we know now is like fucking mind-blowing that he fucking said that out loud and everybody was just like whatever it's like crazy if you said that shit like nowadays everybody be like fuck it fuck you man we're arresting you but it's like they didn't nobody thought anything about it they just thought he was kidding but, you know, he wasn't kidding. So, sad. Uh, and Mike says, why did none of the women come, come forward? Meaning the women that um, he supposedly had all these relationships with. Yeah, I think the reason that they didn't come forward was because they didn't exist. I think, I think Jimmy's whole thing, he didn't really like uh, the whole thing about consenting. He made a lot of, um, he made a lot of statements pertaining to, like, um, this is paraphrasing, but he said something like women gave him quote unquote brain damage. Um, he seemed like he's not a relationship guy. He doesn't really like to, he didn't seem like a big fan of relating to women as like human beings. He kind of wanted to keep women, uh, or girls because he preferred them under age. He kind of seemed to want them. And I think he even said this outright. And this is another thing. He said something like, um, I don't like, he said something like, women know too much. I like girls who don't know that much. Like, that's more my thing. Or he said something almost, almost exactly like that. I can't remember the exact wording, but that's pretty much what he said. So the fact that he said that out loud 
the fact that he said that out loud and was allowed to say that out loud and nobody like called him out on it i don't like women who know too much i like girls who don't really know that much that's more my thing um that should have been like instructive right there he doesn't like women that are people or equals he wants a girl he wants someone to be like a thing that he can like just like use that seemed very clear from the way that he was like uh talking and the way he was interacting so a lot of things that he said about women he just saw them as like things to be used and that's why he wanted younger ones but like i said he wasn't picky he preferred young teenage girls but if it was boys, if it was older women, if it was older men, and they were vulnerable in a vulnerable situation and they were available, then he would totally take advantage of that. He was an opportunist. He did have proclivities. He did seem to prefer teenage girls, but if something else, you know, presented itself, then he would take advantage. He just seemed like very opportunistic at that point because like i said a lot of the um cases that came up many of them were teenage girls but some of them were boys men women they were all different uh ages and genders and stuff like that so he was just a uh, very opportunistic whatever vulnerable person came along he was going to take advantage of that shit. um but yeah so on this particular show in 2000 which is what uh we were talking about before the the interview that he did with um louis theroux this is back in 2000 and one of the things that he said on that show i mean he said a bunch of upsetting shit if you do a search on do a search on jimmy saville louis theroux 2000 transcript you should be able to find it because i found it like without too much trouble there's like a transcript of the whole show and um so he interviews him, him and he says one of the things that he says on there like among the many alarming things was that yeah when i used to uh manage a nightclub one of the things i used to do was like if people were getting rowdy or something or were doing something he didn't like he would beat them up and lock them in the basement so he said he did that and so louis did ask actually ask him what about all the pedophilia rumors because like i said this is 2000 uh and the pedophilia rumors had been swirling for a long time. And this is what Jimmy Savile said. We live in a very funny world and it's easier for me as a single man to say, I don't like children because that puts a lot of salacious tabloid people off the hunt. What another thing that he said too on that same show, and I saw this interview clip, they were in a car and Louis was asking him again about these pedophilia things. And he kept saying, they don't know if I am or if I'm not, or if I am, he kept saying, almost kind of like saying, yeah, I am a pedophile, but it's like, I know I'm not, but they don't know if I am. He kept, he kept saying shit like that. It just seemed very, very sketchy. Um, but so people did ask him about it, but like I said, he would always like deflect the fucking question. So, uh, and also he was a big fan of whenever somebody printed something mean about him in the papers, he would threaten to sue them. He did that like multiple times. So anytime somebody would like, you know, threaten to sue him, even if it wasn't about pedophilia, even if it was about something else, um, some other shady shit that he had done, anytime anybody said anything in the least bit like negative about him, he's like, I'm going to sue you. I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And he actually did sue a few people uh, for making accusations against him. So again, that was another um, kind of suppressive tactic to stop victims from uh, talking about what he had done to them because he's like well i'm i have money i have power i can destroy you i can sue you into bankruptcy and no one will believe you blah 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 so that was like how he another way that he got away with it for a long time um so this motherfucker uh ended up dying in late october 2001 actually two days before his 85th birthday um not suspicious nobody killed him unfortunately uh, he died of pneumonia, or he'd been in the hospital with pneumonia. He'd had like some heart problems prior to that. So <clears throat> nobody thought that his death was anything other than he's old as fuck and he had pneumonia. You know what I mean? And as I mentioned earlier, this bitch, it was bad enough that he was like this giant fucking boil on the ass of humanity while he was alive. <clears throat> After he was dead, he wanted a fucking gold coffin, of course, <coughs> with, like, gold satin in it. 
he wants himself buried 45 degrees like that so he can like look out at the sea he has this big fucking if you've seen like the um they tore it down now but his gravestone was this ridiculous three-tiered like or three paneled <coughs> like big huge gravestone it had like an etching of him on it with like all his you know this beloved blah 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 charity this and top of the pops and like of this big long paragraph of all the shit that he did and it's like it was like the ridiculous like fucking tackiest shit you've ever seen this massive thing so we wanted that because of course he did and all these fucking people show it to his funeral because nobody knew like it wasn't widespread like when he died <coughs> that um all the shit that he did. So, uh, yeah. So they have this. All these people show up. They have, like, the last cigar he smoked. It was, like, there. It was, like, deified. It was, like, fucking... It was ridiculous. Like, the shit that, he, that happened. So... Now, as I said... So, it took a while. He died in 2011. Like, late October 2011. And even though some journalists and stuff like that were like can we please like print some shit about like all of these fucking allegations can we please start an investigation can we please do something into like looking into what this douchebag did during his life and even then they were kind of like well no it's like he just died it's so tacky blah 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 and it's like that christmas i think the bbc ran like a um like a documentary about him but it was very like laudatory like oh my god he's dead now it's like a memorial kind of thing even though a lot of journalists are like can we please not run that can we please do something more realistic uh you know showing like talking about all the shit that he did <clears throat> but for a while it took a long time because people didn't really want to believe it i guess because he was such a beloved celebrity so it took until almost a year after he was dead um for the journalists to kind of like get together and finally this one magazine called the oldie they published this big long expose about all of these people that had come forward and all of the police reports like going way back to the 1950s about all the times that this motherfucker had been like reported and nobody had done anything about it so that article sort of like opened the floodgates like once a couple people came forward and said hey this motherfucker did this to me and that and the other and once they published something and said yeah there's a you know there's um all of this history that he did this shit back in the old days. then the fucking floodgates opened like everybody came and said oh my god he did this to me and stuff like that because you have to think that for a long time a lot of the victims and a lot of i saw a lot of um interviews with some of the people that have been victimized by him they said well for a long time i thought it was just me she's like you know it's like even if they didn't report it to the police or even if they did report it to the police back then like the police didn't really tell you oh yeah we've had x amount other complaints about this motherfucker they didn't tell you that back then they do now but they didn't then so it's like you came there and said, hey, this dude like fucking groped me or raped me or whatever. And it's like if other people did it, you wouldn't know that. So you'd kind of like feel like you were all alone. And so I f kind of feel like a lot of the victims thought they were just kind of like, I don't know, yelling into the fucking wind and no one was listening. So sometimes like some people wanted to testify against him, but then other people backed out because they were scared and like he would threaten them and shit like that. And so it didn't really happen. But once he was dead... And any threat of him suing people or, you know, him getting away with it were gone. And once a couple people came forward and said, yeah, he did this, that, and the other, and they kind of had proof of it, then a bunch of other people came forward too, to the point where it was just like hundreds and hundreds of people. I mean, to the point where nowadays they think that he's probably uh, Britain's most prolific sexual predator, uh, because we're talking about, like I said, somewhere between four and 500 cases different cases of people that have reported him for various things uh another thing that he said too is that uh here's another thing that he said that should have been a red flag but wasn't he said that he didn't have a computer at some point like during an interview i don't have a computer because people will think that i'm downloading child porn what <laughs> is that really the He's first thing you right think of that. right which like i said right well, I wasn't thinking that, but yeah, now yeah. I am. I can't have a computer. That means I'm taking child porn. I'm what like, does it? That? I was just playing solitaire on it. I don't know what the fuck you're doing, bro. 
like I said, back in the '90s. Yeah, maybe he. I think he said that back in the '90s when yeah, computers yeah. weren't as like obviously nobody would uh, question you for buying a computer nowadays. But I think like back in the '90s when it wasn't as widespread. But still, it's like look, I was just like playing fucking Mist on the shit and like like I said, playing solitaire. I don't know why you would think why why you would immediately jump to that. That seems a little suspicious. But the fact that he would say that uh, should have been a red flag, but again, was not. Uh, he also. Even as far back as 1974, in his fucking autobiography, he willingly says some shit in that book that he did that would totally be illegal. Now, it's like as far as like sexual fucking assault goes, and he's like not. Nobody said boo about it. Like I said, so he got away with a lot of shit, and he was like right out there in the open with it, pretty much. Uh, so let's talk about because uh, you keep you brought this up a bunch of times. Uh, John Lydon, otherwise known as Johnny Rotten. Yeah. Uh, That's the boy right there. There's a very (laughs) famous uh, clip of him from 1978 uh, on Radio 1. And he said at the time, and this is what he said, I'd like to kill Jimmy Savile. I think he's a hypocrite. I bet he's into all kinds of seediness that we all know about but are not allowed to talk about. I know some rumors. I bet none of this will be allowed out. Uh, so the BBC did edit that out, um, but he did actually put the whole interview like later on one of his uh, on one of the PIL albums. But yeah, that's the thing. So he said though, I saw a little bit more of that, and I saw like a later interview that I think he did in like 2013 where he was like expounding upon that, or 2014. And he said, he's like, it wasn't just me because I know that you said like, oh, he knew about it, but it's like he's like everybody knew, like everybody that was like going on top of the pops yeah. and stuff like that like everybody knew like hey stay away from that dude because he's like really fucking handsy okay. and he'll like if he gets you alone you'll be in big trouble based on what i remember of what Lydon said from the recording he's making it sound like he personally talked to somebody who had contact with saville and that he knows that's the way he's making it sound but we know Johnny Rotten it was the fucking that motherfucker grandstanded a lot. Even though yeah, I respect I mean, him, he's great. All he said he's was a honest man. I bet he's blah blah blah. And he's like, yeah. I know some rumors. And it's, the thing rumors. about it though was that I don't know what he's talking like about. Like I said, well, I saw a two thousand fourteen interview yeah. where they played him that clip and he was like expounding on it. Yeah. And he so he said Well, everybody knew. So it wasn't just him. He's like, everybody knew that the dude was like a creeper and that you had to stay away from him. So he's like, all the kids that were going on like Top of the Pops or were like doing anything, he's like, everybody knew like stay away from that dude because he's a creeper. So it wasn't just Johnny Rotten that knew. Like everybody kind of knew what the situation was. Um, Or, you know, most people knew. So I don't think it was just him that knew. And because like I said, rumors about it, had been going back from, like, way before Johnny Rotten was around. Um, The first police report was 1955. And like I said, even when he first started doing the radio show, he was known, and like I said, this is, again, probably like a product of the time. Back in the 1960s, he was known as, like, like I said, really handsy and really fucking molesty. But because it was the 1960s, he could play it off as like, yeah, I'm such a ladies man. You know what I mean? Oh, you got to watch out for me, blah, blah, blah. And everyone just thought it was like funny. You know what I mean? They're like, no, they absolutely do have to look out for you because you're a sexual predator. But like back then you could get away with it because like, oh, it's so funny. I'm so crazy. Look at me. Like um, I saw one like on one documentary, they kind of compared him to like he was almost like seen as like Pepe Le Pew. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like he would just kind of like come up and like grab people and shit and everyone just thought it was like funny. Or like people that, you know, weren't being grabbed thought it was funny. We'll say it that way. I got a pee, so you talk. Okay. <laughs> Jenny's going off to the restroom. I'm going to the restroom. Yeah, me and Tia were talking about um, Hannibal Rising. And uh, I'll go back to that while she's in there. I actually fucking liked Hannibal Rising. I thought that was the uh, the best Hannibal Lecter movie um, after the first one, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, it was a European flick. It was very much a period piece. They got the costumes of the times right, which was uh, mostly like 50s and 60s. And they showed Hannibal's 
situation of how he was raised and what happened on the Eastern Front back in World War II and how this cannibalism shit play into it and um, what did the Russians do to him? You know what I mean? <laughs> that was part of it. He ended up in a damn Russian orphanage in his own house because his electric castle got taken over by the Russians and turned into an orphanage. They were holding him there and he ended up escaping and fighting his way back across the Berlin Wall to get to the east, get to the west, and then he ended up in fucking France, at his uncle's house, uh, which is a big old big old French mansion. But it turned out that his uncle had died, but he still moved in there, and he moved in there with his fucking his aunt, his aunt who had married in, who was uh, a Japanese woman, and. She kind of taught him the ways of the samurai, you, but you got to see it, and then his interpretation of it, and it, it's it's accurate. The movie is very accurate to the culture, and the philosophies of the time. The fucking, the costumes were great, the guns were period correct, and uh, no, I loved it. Hannibal Rising, I thought was a great sleeper cra classic. Even when they showed the Russian tanks, the T thirty four tanks, they had that shit per period correct. Like on the Eastern Front with fucking bicycle, with a bicycle fucking wire to the side of the turret, which that's what they had. But, okay, go ahead, Jenny. She's back. Yeah. Tila says, next movie I want to see is The North Man. Yeah, I want to see uh, that too. That's the new uh, Robert Eggers movie. I don't know that one. Uh, it's the guy that made The Witch and okay. The Lighthouse. All right. Uh, TJ Myron says uh, Gary Glitter is another human stain. Yeah, this yeah. motherfucker I think was friends yeah, with, and he actually I don't know if they were friends, but he actually defended Gary Glitter in the sense that he defended people that looked at child porn, like oh he's not hurting anybody. I'm like, really? You're really gonna die on that hill? You're gonna defend somebody that yeah. looks at child porn? Yeah, Tila, we didn't see the All Batman right. yet. We've been fucking too busy and fucking everything's been crazy around. Like I said, it's it's sad because we're still paying for the we still paying for is it for the movie planned? subscription. I don't know. It's probably. Uh, we, I still want to see X. Maybe like we I said, see it tomorrow or something. Now, did the North Man start? Because I kind of want to see that too. Uh, we gotta see the Batman. Because like I said, we're still paying for the fucking oh, no. AMC thing, but it's like the movie theater is like farther away now, so it's like. Now, if we want to go, it's like a, a whole day ordeal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whereas before, I mean, it was kind of like a half day ordeal before, but now it's like a whole day ordeal. We got to get up. We got to get rid. It's like I could put gas in the car. It's like a whole like fucking 40 minutes there, 40 minutes back, like plus the time of the movie. And it's like, so it takes up the whole day. So we have to like plan the whole like fucking week around it. So it's that kind of thing, which is kind of sucks. And like I said, that's, I looked to see if there was a closer movie theater. There's not. <laughs> it's the same theater that was. Close to our old house is the closest one to this house. There's not a closer theater than that. But yeah. So, uh, yeah, where was I? So, as I mentioned before, one of the things that fucking blew my mind about this case and pissed me off about it so much, and you can tell I'm, like, really fucking pissed off about this whole situation. This I've been watching documentaries about this motherfucker, like, all day today, and it's, like, really, it's, it's you know, it's it's made me be away. So, the dude came right out and like said some fucked up shit like on tv but nobody really even though everybody kind of was like low-key like knew yeah maybe he's up to some sketchy shit but nobody really called him out like everyone just thought oh he's so crazy or it's a, oh he's being funny or something like that and it's just like it's really disturbing i don't know it was really disturbing to me like some of the shit that he said um so he was kind of, like I said, and I think that he absolutely cultivated this persona because I don't think he actually was a person in the sense that he had like an inner life of any sort, like the way a regular person would. I think he was all facade and it was all very meticulously constructed to make himself look a particular way. And I think that because deep down he knew that what he was doing was fucked up and it wouldn't necessarily be acceptable, but he also knew on the flip side of that, that he was rich and famous and had a bunch of like, you know, uh, powerful connections that he could be able to do whatever he wanted. I think he kind of got off on saying some shit outright on TV that kind of sounded like he was admitting to some shit, but he's like, well, no one's going to do anything about it. So fuck it. And I think that he kind of, like, got a hard-on, like, doing that kind of crap. Because he said stuff like, 
So somebody asked him on this one interview show, and I saw this clip. Uh, somebody said, oh, you used to do some wrestling, because he did actually do, uh, he was a wrestler, like, in his youth. And he's like, oh, I still do. And everyone kind of laughs. And then he's like, oh, yeah, what are you talking about? And then he says, quote, I'm feared in every girl's school in this country, implying that he's wrestling with the girls at the girl. You know what that means. I'm feared at every girl's school in this country, he said. And he said that, like, on an interview show, like, back in the fucking 70s or 80s. And everyone just thought it was, like, funny. Now that we know what he was doing, not funny. But everyone just thought it was, like, fucking funny back then. Also, this one horrifying clip that I saw where he was talking about this, like, little girl. She probably looked, like, maybe 10 or 11. And he says something about, oh, how she was, like, so little and blonde. And he called her, quote, unquote, kidnappable. <laughs> That's the word that he yeah. used. He said she was kidnappable. And everyone just thought that was funny. Dude, that's not funny. That's not mm -hmm. funny. And it's like, it just the fact that he said that, it's like everyone just thought he was hilarious. And so another thing that he would do, and he did this on a lot of interviews that I saw clips of, was that he would make, if somebody was like calling him out or like, um, you know, saying some stuff about, hey, we heard you did this, that, and the other, he would like make veiled threats at them or maybe sometimes not so veiled, but he would make veiled threats and he would make threats like he always he was very big about it's like I'm not a grass, meaning I don't like rat on people. That's like the British slang. That's British criminal slang for I don't like, you know, uh, report on people. I don't roll over on people. I don't grass. So he was very big on using that word. He used it a lot. I don't grass. I don't grass. And the way that he used it was implying that neither should you like because i know some shit about you and the way he said it was like really really threatening um you know implying that like whoever was out there like accusing him of something uh you know you better not tell or you know i'm gonna do something bad to you you know what i mean um because he absolutely could he could actually he had enough connections he had enough money he had enough power that if he wanted to, like he sued people for, you know, making accusations against me, did that. Uh, particular police that were kind of investigating him, allegedly he had them demoted or fired. Uh, so he could do that just by like pulling some strings. Uh, he could do that as well because he was very well liked for whatever reason because he seemed like a fucking asshole. But, you know, some people like that, I guess. Um, there was another thing, and this was from the, uh, the Louis Theroux thing that we were talking about earlier. There was one point in that interview where he pushes a, like a pad of paper, like toward Louis Theroux that has Louis's address written on it, like his home address. And Louis says, why would you show me that? Uh, like, why would you show me a piece of paper with my address on it? And Jimmy says... Because I never knew whether you existed or not, you see. And somebody gave me the address and I thought, well, if he doesn't exist, shall I send round some of my lads with strong Sicilian accents to speak with him? So he's like threatening people like on TV, but like I said, in a way that seems like he's joking. And then Louis says, how'd you get the address? And he says, I'll get anything, me, he says. And later on they're having this conversation so he's saying like i can get any information i want so if you say something that makes me mad then there will be repercussions that's basically what he's saying but he's saying it in a way that makes it seem like a joke and it's very very obvious now that you know what you know about him when you go back and watch these interviews that that's what he's doing Another thing that he did during the same interview, he says, it's a lot easier to make negative TV shows than it is to make positive ones, he says. And then he, like, says some other kind of shit. Then Louis said, well, the, you know, the shows can't be all positive because that wouldn't be, like, realistic, so he says. And then Jimmy says, make it as ne negative as you like. That's all right. See you in court. That's what he said. Mm -hmm. So, like, everything was, like, deflection and, like, threat, but veiled threat. And he absolutely knew what he could get away with. There was also this exchange, which I thought was interesting. I copied this from the uh, transcript. Louis says, why have you said in interviews that you don't have emotions? Jimmy says, because it's easier, it's easier. You say you've emotions, then you've got to explain them for two hours. And there's a big pause. Then Jimmy says, the truth is, I'm very good at masking them. That's what he says. Mm. And he said that like on a fucking nationwide fucking interview. 
Uh, he also said some shit like, and I saw this one too. There was an interview they did like, um, this is your life. And there was this whole thing about the secretary that used to work for him. And the interviewer says, oh, I heard the secretary was a little bit scared of you. You know, implying that maybe he had done something to her, which he probably did. And Jimmy says, I should hope she's a lot scared. Damn. He said shit like that, like on national fucking TV. Damn. So he was obviously not like afraid that anything would happen to him. Like I said, he said, he said stuff like, I lie when it suits me. I saw yeah. him say that. Um, and I'm not in your world. I'm not constrained by anything. He would say things like that. I'm like, what a fucking douche. Like, saying shit like that. I was like, oh, I can get away with anything. Turns out I mean, he was right, though. But that's what I mean. I think yeah. that's what pisses me off about the most about this is because he was so fucking smug about it. He knew that yeah. he would get away with it. Now, he wouldn't have got away with it if somebody somewhere that knew what this motherfucker was doing, and a lot of people did, had fucking actually, like, dropped their nuts and said, absolutely not. I'm gonna, like, fucking turn your stupid ass in. Um... I don't know how that would have gone, but it would have been nice if somebody... And I'm not saying that people didn't report him, because they did. Right. It's just that people reported him as far back as 1955, but nobody did jack shit. Yeah. Um, and even in 1955, when he wasn't really all that famous, you know, I guess he, they didn't really have proof or anything like that, which, okay, fine. But once he actually got famous and people actually did start reporting it, somebody absolutely should have done something about it. And nobody really did. So I think that that's kind of like the other story behind this is that not only was this motherfucker just allowed to like run fucking a rampage and just molest everybody in fucking sight. Um, but a lot of people kind of knew what was going on and just kind of were like, eh, not my problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't really think it was, like I said, I don't really think it was necessarily that there was this big cabal of like pedophiles or anything like that. I just think it was people that were like, well, it's not my problem. I think I'm not involved. I'm just going to pretend this is my job and I don't want to lose my job and I don't want to get sued and blah, blah, blah. And it's just like easier to not worry about Let it because it's, it. because it's not you. You're not the one getting molested. You're not the one on the end of it. So you don't have to worry about it. You yeah. can just be like, well... You know, if I say something, I might get fired or he might sue me or, <coughs> you know, it might come out like my shit might come out or something like that. So I kind of feel like it was more a case of that than it was like a sort of conspiracy of like everybody trying to protect him. I don't necessarily think it was that. I just think it was a case of people just trying to cover their own asses. And I think that's most of the world. And be, well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So so it's like much more likely because like, yeah. like I said, that's why I'm not a big I'm not saying there's not conspiracies. I'm just saying that I'm, that's why I'm a big advocate of like not so much these big complicated conspiracy theories. You don't need to posit that most people, you know, in this kind of situation. Yeah. I mean, think about it. If you worked with a dude like this. Yeah. And you knew that if you reported what he was doing your career might be put on the line or he, or he might yeah. put you in his sights. You might get sued you or something bad might happen to you. Most people would probably think twice, be like, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should just shut up and like keep yeah. my ass to myself. It's nothing to do with me. It's not happening to me. So I kind of feel like that's, and I'm not saying that's good. I'm just saying yeah. that that's what most people We've are got like. a huge fucking crowd. For, do we really for this show yeah 52 well like 52 i said now. that's and kind for of this show that's a lot for that's live. a lot for yeah. our show it might be because jimmy savile is <laughs> like i said they yeah. it's kind of like a big case and they yeah. just did the yeah. netflix show about it yeah, which maybe. like i said i didn't even know yeah. until a couple days ago that there was a netflix show um we just like somebody like i think it was dj maniac right like recommended it i was like oh yeah we should do that i remember that and we decided, I put it in the poll like a week or two ago, and we decided to do it. And then I was like, oh, yeah, there's a Netflix thing. Yeah. So I kind of feel like that's maybe why. I'm going to get another drink. Okay. But, yeah, so, but that's what I'm saying. So I'm not saying that conspiracies don't exist. I'm just saying that in a lot of cases like this one, I don't think you need to posit that there's, like, some big pedophile ring or anything. And I'm not saying there's not that. I'm just saying you don't need to posit that. I'm just saying that it's enough that... Most people were just trying to mind their own business or trying to, like, not get, you know, put in the sites themselves. Uh, they knew that he had a lot of money. They knew that he had a lot of power. They knew that he was very capable of getting you to lose your job or suing you or, you know, ruining your career or whatever if you said something about him. So I kind of feel like most people wouldn't want to go through the hassle because like i said it wasn't them that was being molested it wasn't them it wasn't their kid 
Um, so they didn't really have a dog in that fight. So a lot of times people probably just like, they just probably thought it wasn't their problem. I kind of feel like there was a massive case of not my problem happening in this situation, which is how he got away with it for so long. I mean, the fact that he was famous and nobody really wanted to believe it. Like I said, I think that's kind of why Bill Cosby got away with the shit that he got away with for so long because, oh, he's famous and he's rich and he seems like such a nice man. Um, although Jimmy Savile didn't seem like a nice man, but, but Bill Cosby did at first. But you don't want to believe it. You don't want to believe that this person that is this beloved celebrity everybody knows them and it's like oh they raise all this money for charity and they do this and that and the other thing you don't want to believe that that person is like secretly a shit you really don't want to believe that because that like upends your whole conception of the world i guess but you know and i get it like if i found out that somebody that i really looked up to like some i don't really look up to any celebrities necessarily but if i did if you like uh because <laughs> a lot of them suck even if I like their entertainment, like, I don't really like them as people necessarily. But um, don't ever put your heroes on pedestals, I'm just saying, because they're just human like the rest of us, and they have horrible flaws. Um, even if they create beautiful things, I mean, they might be horrible people. It happens. People are complicated. But, um, yeah, just don't DFI humans. So, uh, so, yeah, but I could see how if this was like a person you'd grown up with particularly i kind of feel like i feel more empathy toward people that grew up with this dude like with jim will fix it and are on top of the pops or whatever because it's a dude you saw on tv like all the time and he seemed like a nice man and blah 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 and then it turned out that he was a monster and that would be like really hard for you to deal with and i get that i get that but like i said you gotta understand like people kind of suck and they're and they don't suck. They're just complicated. Um, everybody has dark secrets. Everybody has, you know, bad shit that's going on. Nobody is like a fucking angel. So there's that. But yeah, so I hope she's a lot scared. Said about that fucking woman. Jesus Christ. Now listen to this. So this is, I saw this really interesting documentary, which was kind of focused on, I mean, it kind of gave an overview of the case, but it kind of focused on um, psychologists, psychiatrists, and stuff like that that had... Um, watched a lot of his interviews, listened to a lot of his interviews, and were trying to, like, analyze his psychiatric whatever the fuck was wrong with him, like, from his interviews. Thank you, StrawDog78. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Nicholas says he wore red sunglasses as if he was literally bloodthirsty. Or they might have been rose-colored glasses. I kind of thought that when I was, like, looking at him. Yeah, and they were talking about the glass eye that he stole off a corpse. Yeah, I heard about that. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> but yeah. So one of the things that, this was a really interesting quote, because I wanted to quote this at length because I found this really interesting. I saw this documentary. Now, the woman that, uh, or the person that directed the uh, Netflix documentary, which is Jimmy Savile, A British Horror Story, Rowan Deacon uh, went through a lot of interviews of this douche. 700 hours of the shit, which... De that deserves some kind of medal in itself because I couldn't Stardog sent us 10 I know I saw thank you because okay. I could not really watch like more than a few minutes of this dude he just like made me want to like fucking kick him right in the taint <clears throat> within like a minute of meeting him um but they said and a lot of psychiatrists that I saw that were talking about him uh, as well said that what his whole thing was as I mentioned earlier was like quote unquote hiding in plain sight Whereas he would come out and say things that sounded like he was oh. admitting, good. that sounded like he was admitting to uh, the fucked up shit that he was doing, but he was he was doing it in such a way that was like, isn't it silly that you believe that? I'm just making a joke about it, so it can't possibly be true. So he he really actually knew what he was doing. Uh, so the director of the Netflix show said, I think in the 1960s and 1970s. What's most shocking is that his, what we now describe as lascivious, creepy, assaulting behavior on women, which, you know, very well documented, <coughs> which is happening in front of the camera on broadcast footage, which, like I said, I saw some of that on YouTube, which he totally does just like grab with it. And everyone's just kind of like, oh, whatevs. It's, it's amazing. Uh, what's shocking about that is not that he's doing it because we n now know what we know. It's that nobody blinks an eye. It's completely normal. So I think the social conditions at the time normalized that kind of behavior. Yeah, that I think that's why he got away with it for so long. 
I don't mean uh, the thing that we found out he was also doing, but the sort of public lasciviousness and creepiness that was not judged as anything problematic. And like I said, he even like admitted it back then himself. Like, oh, I'm so creepy. You got to watch your, you know, watch the ladies around me because my hands, they can't. Like, he was like making a joke about it. Yeah. And, but everybody, like all the women were like, yeah, it's not funny because he actually is like really a creeper and stuff. But, but he was just like making a joke and uh, everybody else was just like, oh, oh, you. So it was that. So he got away with that for a long time because of that kind of like cultural attitude, I guess. But by the time like the 90s rolled around and that wasn't really that acceptable anymore, he started going because then everybody started seeing him as like, you know, creepy old dude. So he started going more brazen with the stuff that he was saying, like on TV, almost like he was like I said, like he was trying to deflect. It's so ridiculous that you would think that I would do that. Look, I'm going to say this, that and the other thing. If would I say that out loud, if I was actually doing all this sketchy shit that you say, of course I wouldn't. You know what I mean? That's outrageous. I'm just making a joke. So he very deliberately changed his tactic once it wasn't as acceptable anymore for him to act that way. And once he was getting to a point where he was so old, that he couldn't really get away with it too, like to the extent that he had probably in the past. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, she says he's the one saying the creepy things and suggesting that he's up to no good. And I think he does a kind of double bluff with the audience. So it's quite confusing and people end up thinking, well, he's sort of saying it so it can't be true. And if you go back and look at some of the interviews that he did later on, like post nineties, you can see what she's talking about. Um, yeah, he's basically like coming out and basically all but admitting that he does that kind of crap. But it's like, would I say it? You know, if I if I was actually doing it, of course not. It's that kind of thing. Thank and you for the super chats, people. Just wanted to say that. Yeah. Okay, Come here. <laughs> wow. Oh. She's crying. What are you crying about, Pook? Oh. We're gonna get up here on a fucking. She's television. like, I don't want to be on the show. I don't want to be. You want to be on the show? No. She does not want to be on the show. Look. She's like, I know that's the Okay, go ahead and go. She's down there playing. She's like, what? Talking. She's like, I was playing and you yeah, like, interrupted. Yeah. Now she's back to playing. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to get you to do something funny on the show, Pooh. She's no. like, no, I know. Pookie I is, Pookie is, yeah, yeah, she doesn't perform. I don't perform. She's her own Pookie. You're right, yeah. Um, She's very lovable. She's very affectionate. Yeah. She hangs out with you all the time. But you cannot make her do something she does not want to do. Yeah. She doesn't really like, she doesn't like to be picked up and like, she's like, put me down, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. I mean, she'll do crazy shit on her own, but she doesn't yeah. like to be like, she's like, I'm not a performing monkey. What do I look like yeah. to you? Yeah, she's very independent. <laughs> she's very independent. Um, but yeah. So, I don't know. I kind of, so in March 2008, like I said, so this goes almost up until the time the motherfucker died, right? Uh, March 2008, he sued a newspaper that implied that he had something to do with, like, some abuse at, like, a children's home uh, on the, on uh, Jersey. So he sued them. So that, like, shut them up. So that was kind of another thing. It's much like Scientology. That's kind yeah. of, like, what they... Every time you criticize them, it's like they have all this money. So they're just like, well, they just sue you and that, like, shuts you up. And like I said, I think it doesn't help that... As far as I'm aware, I don't know if this is still the case, but um, the UK has like much more stringent libel laws. In the US, libel laws are kind of a wavy. Um, if you're doing like a joke or a parody or something like that, and you can make the argument that you didn't expect anyone to take it seriously about the person, then you're all right. You're on solid legal ground. Um, it's totally fine. You can do like fucking crazy cartoons about people as long as it's nothing that can be construed as you actually like making people believe that they did that. Um, if you're kind of making it seem like realistic, then you're on like more questionable legal ground as far as libel is concerned. But in the UK, it's much harder to make like any kind of like accusations that you don't have proof for. Like you can't just say any like pull anything out your butt and then just say, "Oh well, I never expected anyone to take me seriously." Like in the US, you still have that loophole. UK, not so much. Um, so you really got to kind of watch your p's and q's over there because you can't just say anything about anything anybody, or you're gonna get your ass sued. Which, like I said, you can over here too, but it's a lot harder. Like uh, bar to clear is what I'm saying. So uh, he sued them, so that kind of like, uh, they either settled or whatever. Uh, now 2009, I will say, 
Jimmy Savile did get brought in by the cops. He didn't get arrested or nothing like that, but they did interview him um, having to do with uh, an alleged assault that he might have done at, like I said, the mention or at Duncroft Manor, the girls' school. Um, so they did question him about that. This was, as far as I know, the only time, like he had been brought in like a couple times, but this was kind of like a big deal. So they brought him in. Um, but at the time they determined that they did not have enough solid evidence to pursue the case. So they decided that they would let him go. So 2009, that was like the last official report that they ruled. Now that same year though, um, another woman who was actually 43 years old, she reported to the police that Jimmy Savile had uh, sexually assaulted her on a train journey, like on the train between Leeds and London. So that was another one they took in. I don't know if they questioned him about that, but that was another report that they took in that uh, same year. Now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in a 2009 interview, so right up until, in 2009, he was 82, 83. Damn. He's an old fart. He's an old man. This motherfucker should have been dead at 82. He should have been dead yeah, at birth. Most people don't live to 82. He should have been dead at birth. Yeah. See, evil never dies. It's yeah. true. It's true. That's why, like, the worst motherfuckers, yeah. they just keep living and living. They just won't fucking yeah. die. Some of my aunts. <laughs> evil as shit. I mean, I can think of lots of people yeah. that I'm just kind of like, why won't you fucking die? Just yeah. die. And it's like, they're yeah. the worst. And then, like, I think of, like, all these, like, lovely people that died, like, yeah. way too young. Yeah, with well, fucking our fucking little fucking girlfriends and shit that have fucking died over time. It's fucking goddamn. Amber died. We didn't that's, tell you guys about Amber. That's right. We forgot about that. Amber was another one that died. Yeah. This. She died. Little la- goth. She died a couple weeks ago. Yeah, died a couple weeks ago. Cancer. Pretty, pretty little guy. Young. Girl. Should I pull up a picture of Amber? I'm pull up a picture of Amber. Yeah. So you guys, I'm gonna put a face to it. So you guys know what we're talking about. She died of cancer, too. She was also not the, Every not time I'd see her, she was just skinnier and skinnier. And I was fucking like Amber. And, man, I felt really fucking bad. There wasn't much I could say. I mean... I knew she was dying. She though. kept coming out for a long time, though. Yeah. I mean, she did keep coming out for a long time. Yeah. But we knew... I mean, she was fighting cancer a long time. Years yeah. and years. And, uh, um, yeah... She finally, he came in the other day and said, yeah, yeah Amber, Amber died. died. And I was like, yeah, yeah that's well, here's Amber. I'm trying to get that shit to fucking, is it gonna, oh man. Tila said, Jen, didn't the other friend die, pass from the C word too? Yep. And same age, I mean, similar age, Amber, yeah. well, Kaylee was 34. Yeah. When she died. And Amber, how old is Amber? Uh, Young. She was only in her 30s. Too, 30s. And she loved fucking Fallout. Me and Amber would talk about Fallout when, when we were over at um, at the castle. And she came to Memento a lot of, yeah. most of the time, too. Just a um, wonderful little woman dying. Well, it's creepy we're how many fucking, people that we know have they're died. Just, they're dying, yeah. And you know what's weird? I was like, I was on Facebook the other day, like yeah. posting some shit about the show, and Imani, our friend Imani, yeah, she came on and she said, "Oh, I was cleaning out my Facebook, um, you know, friends," and she's like, "And I was alarmed at how many people in my Facebook friends have died yeah. in the last couple of years." And I was yeah. like, "Right." Yeah, we and don't it's live like, forever. I, mean, I know, but it's like a lot of them. But the thing about it is like they're, young. they're not. Yeah, it's they're not like it's women. not like we're fucking seventy. No, young and it wouldn't women. be a surprise. It's like I'm not even fifty yet, and like we we know people that are yeah. a generation younger than us that are yeah. dying. Young women dying from cancers that started down low, something to do with intestines or ovaries or uterine stuff, and it just it's killing them. It's fucking like what? Well, the Kaylee, fuck? I think that was stomach cancer. Stomach. That was stomach, stomach cancer. Yeah. What does it? I saw my grandma died. Man, that. and I just can't believe that Kaylee's dead. Kaylee was a baby, Isn't and that, that fuck little swelled up so bad, man. Fucking, and then his mom died. Well, she. Well, later. yeah. That yeah, that didn't help. Yeah, I told because yeah, Swole. he had his mom die, and then Kaylee died, who he loved more than anything yeah. else on earth. And, yeah. yeah, he walked she her died. to the fucking gates of the to the pearly gates of heaven he was calling her every fucking day and then she, 
he couldn't get a hold of her one day, and then the second day he couldn't get over, and the third day he found out she was dead. Yeah, because she moved away. And he talked to but her. But do you remember that we used day. to fucking we used to pick Kaylee up? Yeah. Every Friday night. Yeah. And go to Visage we or, and get like a venue and go to venue Kaylee thirteen. And pass her around, dude. She was cute. She was a cute for years little, and years. Little, she was a we cute, picked her up at her house every Friday night a cute little, and took yeah. her to venue thirteen. I'm a fucking when she was a kid. Pull out a picture, of Kaylee, just to fucking. And then and then, th- oh, I mean, like I said. She moved away, so we didn't, um, yeah. you know, she got married. Like, her wife, Laura, was um, yeah. kind of, I think they got divorced, actually, but then Laura kind of came back to take care of her. But um, she moved away, so we didn't, like, see her as much, like, once she got cancer. We didn't, like, no. we didn't know she had cancer until after she had moved away. Amber, um, we knew she had cancer because she kept coming back to the club, and it's like, um, we have another friend who is our age who has uh, had breast cancer, and her and Amber were like, "This is fucked up." But they were like cancer buddies, so they they would go to like treatment together. They would go to get um you know the the treatment together, and uh you know the friend that has breast cancer that's our age, she's still around. But um Amber, we weren't really sure. That was Kaylee, Kaylee yeah. and you just can't believe that such a young woman died. Of cancer, it's fucking. It was heartbreaking. Well, like I said, it's yeah. it happens. Like fucking, yeah. when I was a kid, my fucking yeah, thirty Those odd, were, my thirty two yeah. year old uncle died of brain cancer. For God's yeah. sake, you just sometimes you just get unlucky. Life doesn't care about you, you know. Yeah, it's fucking terrible. Which is awful. Terrible. But I can't you know, believe Kaylee's gone. I know it's weird. I kind of think like think about it every day. Like I said, we used to hang out with her like all the time. Yeah, she was at our house. We used like she used to come to our. You know, we used to go out with her like every fucking weekend. Every weekend, she we used to go out with her. It was like fucking crazy. And like I said, we used to see Amber every fucking. Yeah. God, it's like it's fucking weird. I mean, I knew that was coming because she'd been like struggling with cancer for a long time, like for years. So we knew that was gonna happen like inevitably. All these but. bitches dying. Fucking man the fuck up. Stop fighting. Stop dying. Shit. Don't victim blame Tom. Fuck. <laughs> Hopefully I don't get cancer because he'll just yeah. be like, man up. Don't man die. Up. Well, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, um, I, I, I'm abhorred. You know what I mean? It's abhorrent. You know, I'm fucking horrified. Cancer doesn't care yeah. who you are or how old you are Ooh. or anything. I know that's terrifying for people, but. The universe does not care about you. No, no. You know, it's not. It's not hostile. It's just yeah. indifferent. It's, it's just, just indifferent. God is an indifferent thing. It's indifferent. It's which. Fake. Yeah. I think a lot of people have a problem with that. Right. I mean, I have a problem with that, but I've accepted it. Oh, they're indifferent. I don't like it. I just accepted it. Yeah. Because that's the way it is. That's the way it is. It's just indifferent. Uh, but yeah. So what do we say? Yeah. We were talking about Gary Glitter earlier. We should do a yeah. show about that motherfucker too. Yeah, even though it'll be probably like similar to this one, but. Right. Um. So 2009, like I said, two years before this motherfucker died, and he's in his 80s because he died when he's 85. Can you believe? Like I said, most like you were saying, most dudes don't even live till they're 85. No. This motherfucker. Look at look at look at Pokey. Look at, what's she doing? Look at, look at her. Oh. She woke up when oh, I was talking about it. You messed her. it up. You I, messed, I it. messed it up. What she, was she doing? Like, what was she doing? sleeping inside the fucking toys. Aww. You were sleeping with your head leaned up against the fucking mice. I saw it. I saw it. Aww. You were being cute. It's okay. She's always being yeah. cute. She's like, yeah, she, and? I can't help but be yeah. cute. <laughs> Man, I'm just... Uh, I'm going to have to go through and watch the Expendables fucking series again. Because <laughs> to, to cheer you to up. To man myself back up. Mango says, I count myself lucky I beat cancer, and it's a yeah. cunt. Uh, yeah. It is. It killed my grandma, killed my uncle. Most of the people in my family died of it. You eventually die of it. Everyone will eventually die of it if you yeah. live long enough. If you live long um, right. I That's one of the things that I remember from one of my genetics classes. Mm-hmm. That, you know, if humans live long enough, they will all die of cancer. Because yeah. you will get, like, replicating errors in your genes. Yeah. That can't be overridden because I don't know if you know, but people have like a natural. If some fucked up shit like replicates, it's like oh let's get rid of that and they kill that cell. You have that, uh, but 
if it replicates enough times or if you have some kind of like a disorder that uh, subverts that process yeah. then but you do have a fail safe i mean your body is kind of like aware of that but yeah. it can be overridden you're right. So if you live long enough and you get like enough gene copies and there's enough fucked up shit in there, then yeah, eventually everyone will get cancer. But you know, it, it's not like Karen Lee says I have a two year old baby in the family with the with the big C, and I never understand how it could happen. I don't understand how it could happen. Either. Yeah, that's what I mean because little kids I, die of it I too. I don't understand it. Like childhood leukemia. That's it's the whole error. reason. It's an error. Yeah. of some sort. And like and I said, it's not. I, I know it's very well. The thing about it, like humans evolved to want agency for things so it's like yeah. you want something to blame you, you know you get like you have a baby and it has cancer and it's like well god did the why did god do this it's like nobody did it it just happened i know that's like really hard to you know it sucks i don't i don't like that either but that's just the way it is nobody did it yeah. it's just it just happens it's a mistake you know it's not it's not hostile it's it's, it's just indifferent which maybe to some people is worse. Yeah. But like I said, I don't like it, but that's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. Oh. I know. Wow, this went dark, didn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, we were already talking about a fucking pedophile, yeah, so it was already right, pretty yeah. dark, so <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all coming to us. I'm just going to fucking hang out with Burt Reynolds. Me and Burt, me and Burt are going to watch this shit happen. And his mustache. And he's dead, and he's dead already. I'm gonna jo- I'll be joining Burt. Burt Reynolds. Do fucking, you know what the, you should do? The southern action, the southern action star of all action. Tila says somebody tell a joke. Yeah, right. Yeah. I do you know what you Tila, should do? Tila, me and Burt Reynolds, bro. You should you should dress up like Burt Reynolds for yeah. Halloween. Yeah. But I mean, a specific. <laughs> wait, what did Burt Reynolds wear in Cannonball Run? <laughs> oh, he had some bullshit on with a mustache. Was it a zippy? Was, no, that was the that was the hot girls. I'll have to look, I'll have to look and see what he was I wearing. I don't remember what he was wearing. I don't think it was anything of any. No, like, nothing. Nothing of. If we, he, he wasn't like nothing. Sammy Davis Jr. that had like the priest outfit. No, he had a Sammy Davis. Yeah, Sammy Davis. He had was, he was Cannonball Run too. Oh, that's right. I get that. Yeah, well, yeah. I saw them both. We haven't seen two yet. I've seen it, but yeah, I saw but it a long a time while ago. Back. I mixed them up though because yeah. I saw them like both yeah. of them like at the same Cannibal time. Cannibal Run Two has got Sammy Davis Jr. and Dom DeLuise as priests in a fucking. No, it's not Dom DeLuise. I think is it's that... um uh shit. Uh, I thought it was Dom. DeLuise. No, it's fucking uh shit. What's his name? I don't know. The drunk. Uh, I thought it was Dom DeLuise. No, it's D- uh okay. Dean. Dean Martin. Dean Martin. Dean Martin? Dean Martin. Okay, okay. It's Dean Martin. Dean, that's right. Dom DeLuise was Captain Chaos. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I mean, Dom DeLuise was in it. He yeah. just wasn't a priest. It he was, was priest, Dean Martin. Right. It was Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. We got to see Cannonball Run too. A Southern classic. That was that was white exploitation by white people for white people in the South. That white that was. Legitimate white exploitation. I'm gonna make you a shirt that says "By white people for white." For white people. That's that. That, that could be taken really wrong. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much anything with fucking uh, with Burt Reynolds in it was a studio that was doing that. Yeah, but that's not a bad thing. It, you know, that was the same thing that was that was the same thing that was was going on with with fucking black exploitation flicks with like fucking Dolomite. You know. Rudy Ray Moore was it was black product you know it was black people making product for black people watch P.D. Weedstraw The Devil's Son-in-Law yeah yeah it's on TV for free it's super fun it's terrible but it's fun (laughs) but he was a genius and and based based on that that's where the Eddie Murphy films came from yeah but Eddie Murphy understood that there was a that that there was a huge white market for black exploitation because Black people are creative. They're funny. Fucking, they're, they have a lot of charisma, you know. Especially guys like I watch all that shit. I don't care yeah. what color you are. <laughs> no, yeah. Especially Eddie Murphy. Is fucking, it fun? Is it entertaining? Yeah. Okay. Especially That's Eddie, all I Eddie need. Murphy and fucking me and all That's my all friends I need. grew up watching fucking Beverly Hills Cop one, two, and three, and Golden Child, and and Eddie Murphy was was a hero of ours, you know, and and. It went across race, you know. It didn't, that that wasn't the issue. It was fucking. It was Eddie. I go back and look at the material now, and it's kind of pedestrian. It's, it was very simple by today's standards, but they didn't have social media back then. You were confined to film and, v, and VHS tape. 
and that was the well. And things were a lot here. more. I mean, yeah. everybody kind of saw the same things, or right, well, yeah. not everybody saw the same things. Yeah. There was like a mainstream that right. saw these things, yeah. and then there was like an underground that saw these things. But it was film and VHS. Yeah. 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 And but by today's standards, that's nothing compared to what social media can provide. That's why that is kind of going away, and it better get back to the underground feel or it won't survive. It, it has to be We still extreme. have that. It's just yeah. not as You're right. I know it's a weird thing to say, but it's not as universal because I kind of feel yeah. like back in the old days, yeah. You had you know, just talking about movies or music or whatever. You had a yeah. mainstream thing. You had yeah. like top 40 charts. You had like Temple movies. Temple movies, blah blah yeah. blah. But yeah. then you had Subversive underground music. Shit. You had like yeah. underground movies. You had like yeah. fucking shit like like John Waters and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And everybody that was into like shit that wasn't that yeah. had seen this shit. Right. They didn't all love it. Right. Like sometimes you had like subgenres, but most people were versed in all of that stuff. But yeah. the thing about it, I don't know. I kind of feel like nowadays it's kind of like a blessing and a curse because everybody can make their own shit, which is awesome. But it also like diffuses everything so it's kind of like now you can sort of i like this very very specific thing and now i can just like watch nothing but that specific thing and you don't really so there's not really this kind of thing where like back in the old days if you were like a weirdo like a goth or a punk or whatever and you liked like alex cox movies or something yeah. you could find your people yeah. and they didn't like necessarily love the same shit as you but they yeah. loved like other like you know, stuff that wasn't mainstream. Yeah. So you could find some common ground with them. Now it's kind of like everybody is so in their own niche because you can find your own niche. There's so many niches that there's no crossover. Like back in the old days, there was just basically two things. You had like mainstream culture and you had underground culture, which encompassed everything else. Yeah. And that encompassed a lot of different things. Yeah. So it's like I hung out with people that were, you know, I was a goth. I was into like, you know, a specific kind of like weird ass movie. But I was also friends with like, you know, skinheads or I was not Nazi skinheads, but like other kind of like just punk skinheads. And you were friends with like people that liked all different kind of music, like ska. You were into like ska because that was a mainstream. And so there was that and like people that like particular kind of underground movies that maybe weren't. You know, I like David Lynch and stuff. Maybe they like some other kind of shit. But you like shit that wasn't mainstream, so you had that in common. So you all hung out. I don't. I feel like that doesn't happen nowadays. Connor Vosslam just jumped in. Says, "No man, we're talking about the girls that we knew that have died of cancer recently, and just like how that kind of like is like, damn. And they were young, younger Very than young. us, young and pretty. I showed pictures. You can go back and look at look at it later." And we're just like, fuck, man. We're Which is kind of freaky because I don't know. I don't. I don't think a great deal. I mean, I'm. I'll be fifty in September, and it's kind of like I don't really think a great deal about my own mortality. Sometimes it's weird because sometimes I think, man, conceivably, I don't know if I will, but it's like conceivably, I could live another thirty, forty years. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that just makes me tired thinking about it. We may not though. But then I'm kind of like I may not. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. I don't really care either it, way. It comes when it comes. You I don't know, really none, care either way. There's nothing we can do about it. It comes when it comes. Is it bad that like I think oh I could live another 30, 40 years? I'm like God. That which wears me out thinking about. It. Yeah. <laughs> that means I'm old. I guess. It comes when it comes. <laughs> but it's, it's sad when a, a young and pretty woman. That's what person, I mean. They weren't even as old come, as us. No, they were young, young and pretty. They were young enough to be our kids. Yeah. Pretty and much. They, and, and and it came and it got them and it took them. Yeah. And like for said, all we know, there's a simple cure for it that we don't know about. I don't know, man. Maybe yeah. one of these days we'll find out. But you would think yeah. that if it was simple, they would have found it by now. Some people have said that, no, that the cure is out there. Uh, some, some people have said that... I'm sure there is. That, I'm that, just... Well... There's cheap cures, but they've suppressed them. Well, I've the heard, thing about it, certain, though... I've heard that certain kinds of cancer can be suppressed early on if you catch it by what they call that damn I don't want to say the word because they might fucking block us but the, the horse dewormer that I have that I've used that if you catch it early on that it catches parasites and it also attacks um, 
cancer cells that are going fucking crazy. Well, the thing about it though is that when but you, you say get it early. well, when you say a cure for cancer, it's like, what kind of cancer are you talking about? Uh, yeah, the that, thing, that, well, it also the thing about that it is that it, it's a kinds. lot more right. complicated than right. it seems. It's not there isn't one one kind of disease. cancer. Right. It's not one disease. It's a bunch of them. Um, it's a bunch of different ones. That's one of the reasons why it's difficult to kind of get a handle on. But yeah. I got some of that downstairs. I'm gonna fucking take it. Don't give it to me. I'm not doing that shit. <laughs> they say, well, it doesn't hurt you if there's nothing wrong with you, but you know, it, it doesn't hurt you. Uh, but it kills parasites and possibly cancer early on. We'll see. I don't believe it. Sorry. Uh, but yeah, I'm it just... doesn't surprise me if that's what it was because I've seen some shit now. Because corporations will tell you one thing that are very simp- very different from what what reality is. We don't know the science. Because they don't tell us the science. Uh, they'll suppress the science if it costs them money. All this science or science, whatever they call it, uh, money's involved in that. That fucking clouds everything. Let me go to the restroom. Tila says you need to put on a wig and take off your shirt. Oh, wait, wait, wait hold on, T. Well, because we need laughs. T's trying to get, T's trying Well, no, because we need laughs because we've been talking about, like, uh, get. dark topics trying everyone's get, trying to like have some funny to get shit a damn fucking boy show going i gotta go to the restroom t i don't have any time for that <laughs> holy shit uh so where was i i mean we're almost done seriously so yeah 2009 i think i alluded to this earlier and this should have been, again, a red flag. By this point, he was almost dead, so people should have been, like, not worried about, like, upsetting him or whatever. But he does an interview, Jimmy Savile, in 2009, defending people that watch child porn. Which, again, is that really the hill that you want to die on? I know that you think you're being... Do you think you're being cute or subversive or whatever the fuck you think? Um, to everyone else, to all the normal people in the world, uh, you know, just as a pro tip, that is a huge red flag. So he's defending viewers of child pornography, uh, specifically Gary Glitter, which, like I said, we should probably do a show about Gary Glitter as well, um, because that was another whole fucking shit show. So his quote about that, was that people that view child pornography, quote, didn't do anything wrong, but they are then demonized. Yeah, I wonder why that could be. Somehow he doesn't see anything wrong with that, which, like I said, that's, that's a little, that's pretty sketchy. Um, and he said that Gary had been unfairly vilified for watching dodgy films and Gary's not tried to sell them, not tried to show them to the public or anything like that. If it was for his own gratification, it was for his own gratification. Whether it was right or wrong, of course, is up to him as a person. What he is failing to address in his uh, little diatribe there is that actual children did have to suffer in the making of that child porn and that maybe uh, if there was not a demand for it, then it would not be made. So he seems to be like conveniently forgetting about that part of the equation. And it seems like he's very, very willing to say, hey, we're just like watching some child. We didn't actually, well, he did actually, but we didn't actually like, he's just watching a movie Knock it off. Um, which, if you were just talking about a, like a fake ass horror movie, okay, yeah, that would be a valid complaint. But the fact that you're watching like real child porn that exploited real life children—that's a whole different can of worms, isn't it? Um, but he doesn't really seem to see that distinction. I don't know. He kind of seems to be framing it like it's a uh, like a free speech issue. Which, you know, I'm willing to go a lot of ways for like free speech, but child porn, yeah, no, I'm not going. I'm not going there. Sorry, sorry. That's like those kids can't consent. Sorry, they're underage, um, and filming them and watching it 
You're contributing to the problem. I missed the beginning of it. You're contributing to the problem. Yeah, yeah. If you're under the age of fucking 18, I don't think you can really consent. That's what I'm saying. And you say, and well, that's what, what the is, law says, too. Right. That's, that's what it. the law says, well, too. Well, why 18? Why consent? Well, you gotta, you gotta, you got, you have to place a boundary somewhere. That's what I'm saying. And you have to place that boundary at a place of how old can you can a motherfucker be? How can how old can they be, and be draft eligible to go to warfare? That's when you're an adult. And if you ask me, around 18, you can draft you can draft someone at 18. And send them to war. Because you can say, well, that's a man. Or a woman. Anything before that, then they, they don't have the rights. That's, yeah. Of a, of a fucking... Which tells me right then, and I'm going to fucking agree with the state of Louisiana. If you could draft a motherfucker at 18, then he can fucking buy a drink in a damn bar at 18. I'll, yeah, I'll give you that. Okay. This 21 thing? I, no, well, no. I know why they did that. Right. But I'm just saying that if you're going to have that law, be consistent. Right. right. If you are able to be drafted at 18, if you can right. vote at 18, then you, you should be, be able to drink train. at 18. Right. I, just it, give it, right. if, if that's the age of adulthood, right. then just then do it across it the board. And then the, I'm, and, So and, I'm not bothered at and lowering some the drink. That's fine. can fucking strip or do porn or whatever at 18. If, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. If a woman can do it at fucking 18, sell her body at 18, then a man can sell his body at 18. Because let me tell you, I was there as a fucking army fucking airborne soldier. At the age of 18, a, a young man is selling his body to the state. At the ultimate and I fucking mean, level, you and can be killed. And the thing is, a couple people, like Tila said, I yeah. cannot imagine being 18 years old and being, going out to fight. Now, yeah. there's an argument to be made that maybe it should be older than 18. It shouldn't, though. Um, but I'm just saying, if it's 18 or whatever yeah. age that you want, to, or if it's 20 or whatever, I'm just saying apply that across the board. You're erring. At That's the, all I'm saying. You're, you're erring at the minimum. At least at eighteen, you're you're you know what's going on. Oh, that was a dumbass at eighteen. I was well, a dumbass, I, I think most but people I knew are what was going on. I, I understood at eighteen. That's the minimum, and the, the and the nation needs. I mean, they're out of high school, right? They're going to college. Like I right. said, I don't want to like push it back too far, but like I said, there is an argument to be made that maybe eighteen year olds are too young. But like I said, the the argument that I'm making is whatever age you determine. Let's apply that across the board. Can you be drafted at that age? Yeah. Can you drink at that age? It should be the same age. Is this Tila, adulthood? That's adulthood. Tila, let me trip you out. And during World War II, bomber crews were flying over Germany and Japan, dropping death on civilians, German and Japanese civilians, sleeping babies, fucking people in their homes at night. Dropping fucking thermite bombs, high explosive bombs, burning down whole fucking cities. Average age of the bomber crew was 19. No, 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 no. 19. Do you remember that song? Oh, I remember that was another one. Yeah, it was Vietnam. 19. was also was 19. In Vietnam. It was Average 19. age was 19. Y'all that grew up okay. in the 80s, y'all know what song So you're talking about, about kids. Paul Hardcastle. Kids <laughs> dropping death. I don't know why I just thought of that song. And you can say, well, mankind has progressed. No, they haven't. Mankind has not progressed. It's been the same for thousands of years. Thousands. It will It will not progress because of the limitations of mankind. It just won't. It'll go up and down, up and down, up and down, but it will always revert to the mean. It just will. People are what they are. Stop trying to fucking make human beings something that they're not. You, there's a certain amount of zen. I have found a Just certain sucking. amount of zen. <laughs> zen. I have found a certain amount of zen in allowing things to remain fucked up. You see some shit that's fucked up, just let it be fucked up. You be like, because this, well, see, there's a certain amount, because that's just how it is. Yeah, that's but like... It won't, it won't change. I'm also a human. Yeah. Though. 
And one of my things is yeah. that I can't really have find a state of zen because people <laughs> are a constant source of disappointment. <laughs> yes. Why Thank are they you. not better? Thank you. Because I must say this. I'll be better. And Sophie's going to I can be better, Sophie, but other people can be better. We can do this. Now you're talking this. about individuals. You're we not can gonna, do this. You're talking about individuals. Stop sucking. You're talking about individuals. Stop sucking. Individuals, yes, but not the masses. Okay? It'll yeah, never, but... It'll never happen. What I'm saying is I'm that if, if people on a large scale stop sucking... It won't happen. This is my plan. Stop sucking. Yeah, it then won't. everyone <laughs> as a whole, then largely we would stop sucking, no. and it would be better. For everybody, four thousand years of history have shown that. Like I get that. Not, I get that. They've gotten a little bit better, but not that much better. Man, people yeah. always let they let me down though. <laughs> Y'all let me down. It's just <laughs> people let me down. I'm and like gonna, I said, I'm, I'm a person too. It. I'm not like an alien or nothing. Yeah, but yeah. it's like, you know, I'm I know there's others out there. I'm like gonna me say now. this shit, and fucking Sophie's gonna be out there laughing because me and her be fucking texting, talking about it. evil human beings are evil hairless monkeys that's what you are you're an evil hairless monkey don't tell them especially that, that sorry but i still love you <laughs> that you're not a cybernetic organism out of fucking 2001 and the monolith well you're no one this, said that i no never one, said you know, that it's just you're not some elevated thing you are what you are and you're i'm an, an evil, ape i get hairless that monkey i that's get that you are. i understand that probably right. better than most <laughs> yeah and yet still and yet still i am just dis- i'm constantly disappointed by the actions of my fellow apes it takes thou- it takes thousands and tens of thousands get if your you, shit together if you look at the get fossil your record you're talking tens of thousands of years is what it takes and if you jump in there like these motherfuckers from the WEF, we'll, you, we'll use genetic engineering. That will backfire also. It'll be like something out of Star Trek and, and fucking Khan. And the augments, if you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You'll make super... You'll engineer superhumans and they will be fucking psychos. They'll, because that's, that's kind of what humans are. Yeah. So, go... Slow your roll, people. <laughs> or, slow as I roll. said, stop slow you, sucking. D- yeah, stop slow sucking. your roll. Just enjoy shit. Chill the fuck Chill out. out. Chill the fuck out. Be and okay. Stop trying to change shit. Just be what you are and enjoy shit. I mean, and be good to other people. Don't be yeah. a dick. Just don't be a dick. I mean, yeah. that right. shouldn't have to be said, but apparently it does. <laughs> right. Don't be a dick. Right. Just be okay. Like, be be a nice person. If you can't be a nice person, right. just be indifferent. Right, yeah. Don't, like, actively... Don't do anything, right? Yeah. Do anything that, like, is <laughs> fucked up. And, and, like I said, I hate that I have to say that to other people, right. but apparently it does have to be said because yeah. some people uh, apparently need that admonition, which is very sad. This is why people are disappointing, like I said, right. because I have to keep telling them that. <laughs> Tammy says, stop sucking. That's that's my motto. Somebody Stop says, sucking. Tom, that's the right be, way to be, man. I, that was a long time ago. I don't know what you're talking about. You're going to have to be more... more. When you make comments to me, you have to be specific. Tom thinks he's right about everything, so you have to be very specific. Yeah, because about... I'm right about everything. So I don't know exactly what So you what have to be specific about. about what exactly right, he was right, right about, about, so he can exactly. be very excited exactly. about it. Exactly. <laughs> oh. You're laughing. You're, laughing. you're right. So, yeah. Uh, where was I? I was almost at the end. Yeah. Um, and then we're gonna eat. Do. Then we're gonna eat. So. Okay, that's good. Okay. I might need another drink though. Yeah. Before that happens. Uh. Okay. You want another? One? Are you questioning my? I'll get you another. One. I mean, you know. Okay. I'll get you I'm one. already kind of sick. I don't know if you guys like. I don't know what the fuck is gotcha. the matter with me. But. The last three or four days, I have had really bad i don't know if it's i think it might be a sinus infection i think i have a sinus infection um i've had like really bad headaches and like my there's like horrible pressure like behind my eyeballs i've been like fucking tired even though i get normal sleep i'm like really really tired and then i'm like kind of coughing and sniffling and like in the mornings but it's mostly like headaches and fucking i took some antihistamines and that seemed to help but I don't think it's allergies. I don't have allergies that I know of, but unless they've developed later in my life, but yeah. So yeah, 
So I think the thing that pissed me off, as I said, the most about this case was that this fucker died at the age of 80 fucking five or almost 80 fucking five. And he died with everyone thinking that he was still awesome, that he was still like a hero. He had like the fucking seriously go look at the fucking headstone and the coffin, the coffin's gold. It was like ridiculous. And the headstone. The headstone, they've torn it down in the meantime, which happily. Because they were like, fuck that bitch. And they tore all that shit out. Um, so they did that, but he got what he wanted. He was lauded throughout his life. Yeah, there were rumors and shit like that, but nobody could prove anything. So he basically just got to like run around and do whatever the fuck he wanted his whole entire life until he was in his fucking 80s. And got away with everything, had a life of luxury, everybody loved him, blah, blah, blah. He had all this money, and he died, all these people showed up at his funeral, and it was only after he died that everyone was kind of like, you know, shit came to, like, the forefront. And everybody, like, realized what a fucking monster he was, and that makes me very, very angry. I don't know why that makes me so angry, but it does. And the, I don't know. I kind of feel like every time... Every time we talk about, like, serial killers or, like, people that did that kind of shit, I always wish, and I know this is stupid because I know it probably would never happen. Hold on, I'm going to say something. What? But again, Khan jumps in and goes, but, but Jenny, we're our evil. Is, has, what do you say? He's, no one, like, no one's evil. Yeah, it's not yeah. evil. And then it's he, just. But then he jumps in and he gets a great quote from fucking, um. That H.G. Wells flick, fucking The Time Machine, the second version with Guy Pierce. And he goes, who are we to question millions of years of human evolution? That's what that damn Mor Morlock it. said. That Morlock said, who are you to question <laughs> hundreds of thousands of years of evolution? Yeah, but like, uh, quotes uh, like that, I feel like, fall into the naturalistic fallacy. Just yeah. because like something is like natural, that doesn't mean that's necessarily like good for us like that's what we the want the morlock came from hundreds of years of hundreds of thousands i know of like years i get that evolution. like i get that and you know who are you to question that and that's but i understand you're like well yeah that's kind of a fallacy there's not you know but history doesn't mean anything and nature doesn't mean anything but in a certain way it kind of does it's reverting back to the mean and the very basic is it's, it's going back to the basics of natural selection now, people don't like natural selection. A lot of... There are a lot of people that don't like the concept of natural selection. Especially... Um, people who are very uh, fucking intelligent. Why? Because they got beat up in high school. They got bounced off fucking lockers and shit back in high school. So they don't like natural selection. They want a special selection. But that's not the way the, the universe works. It's... We really, by rights, should still be dinosaurs. And that is, that is fucking, it was just, it happened to be that a rock hit this place and made us not dinosaurs. That is kind of fucking weird when you think about it. It was random, but it, it's random. It's not special in my selection. Experience, it's random. In my experience, yeah. people that don't like the concept of natural selection yeah. are not people that are like uh, smart or nerdy that got beat yeah. up in high school. It's people that are like jocks. It's those type of people well, that no, don't they, like the concept. Or religious people are people that don't like that concept. Uh, I guess it depends on how you look at it. I mean, you, uh, you got dumb people everywhere. Uh, yeah, no shit. Yeah, you got dumb people. But I'm just, just saying in my experience, that's not, yeah. that's not what you're talking about. Um, yeah. Not my experience. Okay. In, in, in my experience, it was kind of the other way around. The jocks didn't know anything. Well, you, you yeah. Natural I'm just saying it annoying. was mostly, most uh, of the people that I saw that were against, like, natural selection as a concept were, like, religious people. Yeah, but intellectual people are also kind of religious. It's just not, it's just. No, it's really it's not. The, it's secular It's really religion. not the same thing. Yes, I think it it's is. It's really not the they same They just thing. believed in different gods. Really not the same thing. Okay, all right. It's we'll really we'll go ahead and move on. It's really not the same we'll thing. We'll go ahead and move on. They, really just, be, they just believed in fucking um, different gods, but it was still the same gods. 
Yeah, but see, when you talk so about bad. that, you're talking about people like me, though. And it's just like, I don't believe that. I don't know anybody that yeah. believes that, so I don't really know where you're getting that uh, from. Well, my fr I don't know if Grampers is still here because I can name names, guys that I grew up with. Right, I get that, but it's like, I don't really know and where you're getting that what from, they, like, what, on a large the, scale. The gods, I don't really... The gods that they believed in were the Frankfurt School gods. They were highly, uh, I guess you say it was... Well, they, they the thing were, about it, too, that's is that... bullshit, too. Well, the thing about it, too, and something that I found with, you know, I, I did a lot of um, research into particularly, like, creationists. Yeah. Creationists versus evolutionists. One thing that creationists like to accuse evolutionists of, if you want to use their terminology, is that we always, like, listen to authorities. But that's what they do. So they're projecting it onto yeah. the other side. Yeah. So that's kind of like something. But people that are, like, scientists, they don't do that. But because religious people do that, they think the other side does that also. So they project yeah. that onto Yeah, that's not at all what I was talking them. about. That's so they're not. talking about, oh, well, yeah. you guys, your god is, like, Richard Dawkins no, or, no, whoever, no. or whoever the evolutionist of the day is. And I'm like, really? That's not what it's oh, totally completely agree. different. Totally it's completely different. I totally agree with you. We don't have that I, whole. I totally, we listen to like one person as yeah, an authority. I totally, like I totally we don't agree. do that. I, you're right. You're right. I totally agree with you. That's, that's projection. It's projection. Yeah, I, it's, I, you are right. I and it's totally, very common. You, you are right, and I totally agree with you. But that was nothing to do with what I was talking about. That's not, that was it nothing. just sounded like that. No, though. yeah, nothing it to do with what I was like talking that. about. Fucking. Um, because both sides w were always projecting that they were selected. Okay. But they weren't. But we, we can go back. We, we Just go back to the fucking story. doesn't really matter. I never thought I was because selected for anything. You had... <laughs> I'm just here randomly. It's shit, I'm I. drunk <laughs> as fuck and that shit was too <laughs> fucking com too complicated for me to fucking explain right now. But you're right. But that's not what I was talking about. Not at all. I saw something very different than what you saw. I'll yeah. talk about it on another day. I'll rem I'll remember. I'll remember. Okay. But uh, no, that's not ex not at all. I'm not I'm a big believer in like a person just no. like talking from authority. No. I don't I don't like that. That's kind of like the whole no. thing about the scientific mindset. Right. Is you don't you only believe evidence. You don't believe like evidential right. stuff. You don't yeah. believe like something people yeah. say. Because like what the, who the right. fuck are you? But that's that that that's kind of a stock answer. But that's not what I was talking about. I'm just kind of too drunk to talk about it, to explain it. Mm, okay. Yeah. What I was talking about is oh shit. How much time do we have left? What are you talking on, about? Time we have left? I because don't know. it will take me time to explain it. I'm trying. I have to defend myself now. Defending yourself against what? These accusations that I'm wrong. No one ac okay. No one accused you of anything. Okay. All right. Don't get combative. Okay. No, no one's accusing you of anything. Okay. <laughs> See, I don't... I mean, the thing about it, I kind of feel like... I don't know. There's this whole thing, and I got into it, like, a lot of times. Like I said, I haven't kept up with it, but I do kind of feel like during the whole evolution versus creationist wars, you kind of got a whole thing where creationists were trying to project on the other side that it's like oh science is just a religion blah 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 it's it's completely no. not the same thing it's a, it's it completely 180 time. degrees no. opposite of religion um it's really not the same mindset at yeah, all that had nothing to do with what i was talking about and that's yeah. well somebody said that in the comments that's why right, i wanted okay. to uh, it's right. so it's really not no. the same thing no. so every time I see somebody say, oh, science is just another religion. It just really, really makes me angry. Because I'm like, yeah. seriously, it's really not the same thing. That is just like religious people projecting their mindset onto the other side, and they completely know nothing about it. So, But you have certain people that believe in philosophies, okay, that have nothing to do with science, and that is their religion, okay? And if you go to the Frankfurt School, if you look at it, which is social studies, that has nothing to do with real science. It's more like Scientology. Okay, they will tell you all kinds of things that it's not true. All right, uh, they think it is, but it, it isn't. And you can—it's just word games. If you redefine words, you can make anything sound like anything you want to, because you can't agree on any terminology or any words. You know. 
But that Jenny isn't really fully schooled in that in that type of argument. Well, because so I, she doesn't really know what I'm talking about. You have to go back to the fucking Hegelian dialect. I know what you're talking and about. She doesn't really know the, the Hegelian dialect. I know what you're talking right, about. Yes. It's just right. not really germane to the situation. Right, right, right. It's right. not germane right. to the situation. Right. And Agnes says science is not a religion. Absolutely, it's not because science is not a. Science is just a tool. To it's find not truth. a set of beliefs. Right. It's just religion tool. is a set of beliefs. Right. We believe these things because of faith, and that's fine if that's right. the route you want to go. Science. Science is, is a method. Science is a tool. It's not to find truth. It's not right. A sense of like we believe this because but many people are confused about what science is because social studies will fucking make a false version of science to tell them what science is. And that's not science. Because there's no data. Science needs data. There has to be numbers. Well, that's and, what I'm saying. And, and without numbers, then there's no science. And uh, so... Like I said, the, the two, no the two no thought no. processes right. are complete. Right. And like I said, I'm not shitting on religion if you want to, right. like, believe in a particular religion. That's fine. But like I said, religion is a set of beliefs... Right. that are by their definition right. not right. provable right um and you believe them on faith that's kind of like the whole idea of religion science is a it's not a set of beliefs it's the, the, a tool right. or a method right for and, arriving at a conclusion right and science must have mathematics it has to have numbers because, well, it has to have because, evidence behind because it. Because that's proof and evidence. It has to have evidence. Yeah. And, and without numbers, evidence, and proof, there is no science. But you, you have can't a have... Of, you, well, you can't have a foregone conclusion they, and, like, well, find evidence right, right, right. to but get you, to that. What people in the audience are talking about is of pseudosciences that are out there that will reject, sci reject numbers and mathematics as being racist. And that... Fucking science has to do with truth, and truth comes from belief but, and faith. But and there's there's not there. It's not there. The thing about it though it's not there. is that some people that have more religious or faith based beliefs yeah. can massage science yeah. uh, in the service of their beliefs. So you have right. to kind of like right. watch for that as right. well. Right. And, and somebody brings up. Stradog78 says there's real science and there's unverified fantastical science. Right. People have a hard time distinguishing. Right. Yeah, there's a lot of like pseudosciences right. out there also um, where people will cherry pick um, evidence of certain studies or whatever and like uh, discard other things that don't right. agree with their foregone true conclusion. Science, true science does not have emotion in it. It is cold. It is cold, hard. Well, you can't have a foregone... You right. can't, like, try to prove a thing. It's like, yeah, I right, want to yeah. prove right. Religions X did that. End. Right. Uh, and then I'm well, going to find science to, like, prove that. Because that's going to, like, winnow you down a certain right. thing. That's going to winnow you down things, a certain way. What they're talking about is there's a lot of things that are being betrayed in, in, common, in common culture right now as being science. And it isn't. It's more like emotion and politics. And, and faith, but it isn't. And just because it comes from the, and just because it comes from the left, that doesn't mean it's not faith. It is faith. It is faith. There's religious. There, there are re religions, and then there are fucking secular religions, which are religions that are not religious, but it's it's also faith. I well, know, it's not. I well, know what you guys are talking about. It's, it's not necessarily religion. It's just like I said, it would be called just like a pseudoscience in the pseudo way science. that you're trying to find what you're trying to find is like you have a you're trying conclusion. To your biases based on this shit. Right. It's not, not going to happen. So right. it's like you'll only like, for example, right. like I want to prove, you know, whatever the end is. Right. And so then I'm only going to, right. uh, you know bring in the studies that seem to prove that and throw out all the ones that I don't think right. confirm that by saying, oh, they weren't improperly done or whatever. So it's kind of that. So there is that too, but yeah. it's imperfect, but humans aren't perfect. Um, we're never going to be perfect and exactly. it's just never going to happen. And if you go back to Rossism, which is my fucking philosophy, and you embrace the concept that humans are evil, hairless monkeys, and that we're they not lie. Evil. 
that they lie and that it's about power, that there is that there is no truth, there is only power. They will tell you anything, okay, as long as it empowers them. All right, that, that's the basic monkeyology. We're not monkey evil. Monkey silence. Even monkeys aren't evil. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, no, no. Monkeys are just what they are. Humans, a- humans are the evil versions of monkeys because they know. They, those bitches lie. Even though I can come back and say, no, monkeys know about what lies are. Monkeys understand lies, but because a monkey will try I would to argue. another monkey, and then when the male monkey sees you trying to go, oh, and he'll try to hide his heart on, like I wasn't trying to fuck her. Yes, you were. Yes, yeah, you but were. humans do that too. Ex- well, I'm just saying monkeys do but that also. But I'm just saying monkeys are as evil as humans. Evil. Evil. No. Monkeys what I'm evil. trying to tell you, if you'd shut up for a second, <laughs> is that evil to me <laughs> implies intent. They intend and a, to lie. And a lot of things that humans do yes. that seem evil. Like, I'm not saying that humans don't do evil shit. They do. Yeah. They but do. a lot of shit that they do, I think that the reason that they're doing them, <coughs> they're not really thinking of it as... They're not really thinking of it as in that way. They're thinking of it in like a self-serving kind of way. It's a, yeah, they're not really thinking of it. Yeah, yeah they're thinking of it yeah. in a more like self-centered kind of way, not yeah. like in an evil. I'm gonna fuck the whole world kind of way. More like, to me, like evil seems like I'm gonna like kill the whole fucking like a more psychopathic thing. If people are just being like selfish, that seems to me like pretty standard yes to what humans do like monkeys do whatever yeah, it's so a monkey that, thing <laughs> that's what I'm, yeah that's what i'm saying so to me that doesn't to, seem like to evil the to the, because well, i call it evil because, because it's not evil to me is like look yeah, i know I this it. is bad yeah. i know killing all these babies in this orphanage for example is bad but i'm gonna do it anyway just for the fuck of it that's evil okay doing shit because well, I'm going to do this shit because I want to do it, but it's like I'm going to like think of some like fucking uh reason for it, like some self-serving reason. That's not I mean, from our point of view that's evil. From that person's point of view, they're just like doing that's not evil. I don't know. It's not evil in a larger sense, you know what I mean? If you're going to say evil cuz I kind of feel like that has a religious connotation. Uh so it has to be like much larger scale. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of feel like that has to be, like, very, very deliberate. I know that this is, like, really, really bad, but I'm going to do it anyway, knowing that. And I feel like most people, when they do bad shit, they think of self-serving reasons why they're doing this. They're excusing it in their own mind in a lot of ways. Um... So by that definition, even though we would see it as evil, I don't think they see it as evil. You know what I'm saying? It's a it's a tricky term, you know. But I'm going. There's all this apologism going on. No, I'm just saying it's. I'm trying to like make a distinction because evil is a loaded word, and I don't really like to use that a lot because, like I said, it has a religious connotation, and I'm not a big fan of like religious connotation with shit. Fine, but. To me, I come that, from a planet where motherfuckers kill each other fucking over emotion. Yeah, I just yeah, call I shit too. evil. No, okay? I do too. And, and like and to I me, said, to me, it's about power. I'm I'm to the point now where I fucking I fucking kind of winnowed it down to where humans that have power don't give a shit about truth. There is no truth. There is only power. That's what they're thinking. They're thinking there is no truth. There is only power. But the point they will of, only say whatever empowers them. The point I'm trying to make yeah. is that, and it's monkey shit. That's the shit. The that point monkeys I'm look. trying to make yeah, that shit monkeys is that one thing that people that want to understand, yeah. um, people that do quote unquote evil things like serial killers, for example, yeah. one thing that you have to understand is that these people, who in our narrative are villains, obviously. They don't necessarily see themselves as villains, or if they do, um, they justify it somehow, usually. And I kind of feel like that's something that we need to understand if we want to stop that from happening. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, 
And like I said, that ties into the Jimmy Savile thing that we were talking about earlier because people like this because he was a fucking psychopath for sure. But the fact that... You ask me, he had power. He had the power to do this, and there were, it, truth and right and wrong didn't matter. But he, There's well, only power. But like I said, that's what I'm, the that's, fact that you have people like this yeah. that know about the power structure, they know yeah. about this kind of stuff, and they are fucked up, and they know that they can manipulate people to their point of view. That is something that we absolutely have to look into because look at the psychology of this motherfucker, for example, which made me so angry. As much as this makes me angry, like reading about this dude, I think that it's really instructive looking at cases like this because this was a guy that got away with shit for decades and decades obviously was getting off on the fact that he was getting away with shit for decades and decades and thought it was funny it was amusing to him to some degree to the fact where he was comfortable enough saying some like pretty fucked up shit on tv like to millions of people and you know was comfortable with the fact well no one's going to do anything to me and nobody did um, because, like I said, until after he was dead, they didn't really do anything. So as fucked up as it is to, like, look into cases like this, we should because the psychology of this kind of pe- will help us prevent this in the future. We can hopefully see this kind of crap coming and nip this in the bud more than we more than happened in this case, because I kind of feel like in his case. There were many opportunities where somebody could have stepped in and said, hey, blah, 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 and nobody did it. Like I said, I'm not blaming any one person because, you know, a lot of the times that he was doing this shit, again, not excusing it, but culturally, no one was really listening to girls or women or little kids or anything like that that were saying, hey, like some dude like touched me inappropriately. Everyone's like, yeah, whatever, shut up. It's like no one really cared about it. And, um, you know, and he got away with it. He kind of flew under the radar for a long time because of the kind of laissez-faire attitude that everybody had about victimization of women and children and, you know, other vulnerable people in the population at that time. You could get away with it if you were a dude because, you know, oh, I, you know, I, I grabbed the ass of the secretary. Oh, it's like, you know, that's what dudes do, blah, blah, blah. It's like, oh, it's funny. You know what I mean? Everyone just thought it was kind of, like, funny. You know, so... I'm glad that we're kind of getting past that, but... The fact that he was able to get away with it for, like, what, 50 years? 50 years. And he fucking died, and he never even got arrested one time. And that just... I don't know. That just makes me really angry. But the fact that his case is so widespread nowadays, I'm hoping that that will prevent it from happening again... Um, because everyone's cognizant of it now, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. I don't really know. I don't know, Tom. It's like, (laughs) thank you, Zach. Jenny said massage science. (laughs) Did I say massage science? I don't know what she said. I don't don't remember saying massage science. Was I talking about massages? My mind immediately imagined someone getting rubbed down with radioactive lotion. Did I? (laughs) I wonder. (laughs) Ooh, hot. I don't remember saying massage science. It's, did I say massage science or did I say I like know. some other word? I don't remember. I'm gonna put more ice in this. I don't remember that. But um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know why this like this whole researching this whole show, delving into the mind of Jimmy Savile over the last two days while I was researching this show, it's put me in a weird mental place. It made me. I don't know. I was thinking about this like before we put the show on. I'm like, should I even do the show? Because it's like, I want to just hit everybody. What happened? I said, I was watching documentaries about this motherfucker for a couple of days, like in preparation for the show and like reading about him and stuff. And then like an hour or two before we did the show, I said, should we even do the show today? Because I feel like I want to hit everybody. (laughs) No. It just, (laughs) this whole situation made me so mad. And it's like, I I don't know. It's like I said, we've done like shows about serial killers and that makes me mad too, obviously. But 
I think the thing that made me mad about this douche was that he was so fucking smug about it. And I think that that's what pushed me over the edge. You know what yeah. I mean? They're just like, I just, I was like, when I hit everything, I just want to hit everything. And I was just kind of like, can I even do the show? I just want to hit everything. It just made me so, so, so angry. But, you know, that's, it happens. Um, it happens. You know how I do. Khan's been watching fucking Jordan Maxwell. He said, Khan said, Tom, you need to, need to write a book called The Illusion of Us. I fucking, you didn't have to give me more fucking Khan. Fucking, I could probably come up with some shit like that. I'd have to go deep, deep into some research uh, and write a philosophy book like that. And then I'd, I'd need fucking Jenny to fucking ghost write it for me. And, and she wouldn't do it. She'd be like, nah, I ain't writing a book. It probably wouldn't Dude, be I got right. other shit to do. She got other shit to do. And you have to understand that fucking a book, a book, a book like that, if you go back and you read fucking uh, Schopenhauer or Nietzsche, those books could be fucking massively condensed. They padded the fuck out of that shit, okay, to make those books as big. Well, as probably they just like nowadays, they're trying yeah. to get like a longer page count. Yeah, so. they were like, oh man, my maybe they got like paid this. by the word. Yeah, they wanted that shit to be. They like did that. back so in the day. The size of my shit, right there. The, this is the, some substantial yeah. shit. I got some like truths to tell yeah. you. Look how thick this fucking yeah. shit is. <laughs> right. I know the game. Yeah, I write books. Ga- they've been playing games for <laughs> fucking hundreds of years. All right, they're like, oh, this is what I got to say. Look at the size of that shit. Fucking, you know, they're full. Of My shit. book is bigger than your book. I got to read, read Tolstoy, read War and Peace. That bitch was like that, and it was meandering all over the fucking place. When I read that they shit. did that a lot back like, then. What? Honestly, I've even read that, short they... stories yeah. from that era. I was like, dude, this could have been like a paragraph. Right, could have been a paragraph. Calm down. Right. <laughs> well, it's a bunch of white boys that fucking liked this whole idea about the pen and vocabulary, and they're showing off their vocabulary. It's like, don't shit on that. Yeah. I'm into that. And they're like, whoa, I wrote that shit, and I used this word and that word. And, and they're like, man, the story wasn't all that. <laughs> you're 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 well, making this something it's not there's a fine I'm not line shitting on Nietzsche. there's a fine not, line not. between because i you know i read a lot of fiction there's a fine line between you have a book you're because when you have a book you don't have the uh luxury of a movie of visuals so you're painting a whole entire world and in, inside someone's head so i will give you like some descriptive language and shit like that but you also have to, like, get to the interesting stuff, too. Just give me a little bit of the descriptive and then get to the interesting stuff. So I get where, like, some people... And I feel like back in the old days, before they really got the wave of that, um, I don't know. There were a lot of good stories from back then, but a lot of them were, like, overly descriptive. They yeah. kind of gave a lot of stuff that you really didn't need to know in yeah. the in the you know service of the story it was it was the social medium of the time okay they didn't have right uh, a fucking facebook and instagram so when you picked up a book they didn't even have movies they didn't have you know they had live theater but you picked up their books and you read them and it was just like going into their version of social media and it was like oh yeah but they were trying to fucking make it as big as they could possibly make to make it really you know and they were showing off vocabulary and they were showing off their fucking skill their language skills and their fucking thinking skills kant scope schopenhauer and nietzsche are the fucking probably like the those dudes were the bedrock of fucking western philosophy and thinking but their work really could be fucking massively condensed down to nothing. But that's not what that era was about. That era was about expanding and being fucking flowery and entertaining. And well, you have to think, too, about. that back that in the... would drive you crazy reading. Well, back in the old days, you yeah. kind of have to think that yeah. when they were writing, a yeah. lot of the stuff that we take for granted nowadays yeah. was maybe... They didn't take for granted back then. So, had to be explained. Yeah. Um, also, another thing, just from a cynical point of view, 
Uh, back then, a lot of the stuff, particularly the fiction, was written for magazines and stuff like that, and they were paid by the word. Um, so it would it behooved them to write as much as possible. Right. I'm not saying a lot, and actually, I'm a big fan of like Victorian ghost stories and stuff like that. But a lot of them were very wordy. Yeah, we'll say. I was, I but read, they did paint a picture. I they read, did paint a picture. I read one by fucking um, Nietzsche. Uh, this is back in like 2004. And it was called "The Birth of Tragedy." It wasn't very big, but he's going on and on about how Western civilization has to have a new source of entertainment through theater and blah, 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 and this happens and this happens and, is, and, and the way the audiovisual teaching and, I'm, and it has to happen every day. And I'm going, what the fuck is he talking about? And I'm realizing, and then it dawned on me, you know what, this bitch has never seen television. Well, yeah. You know, they've Duh. never seen television. They've never seen. That's what I mean. The they're internet, they're talking from a point of view like from that we can't even conceive right. of. Right. Right. He was imagining a theater that was kind of like television, and he was wrong about a lot of the stuff that he was. They talking didn't know. About. But he was right about certain ideas that television and mass media could create a culture. That's all he's talking about in that. It's just that it it doesn't it didn't turn out the way he was imagining it. You know. Nothing ever does. No. No. Like I said, I think that's why it's pointless to try to like uh, right. extrolate like to the future. Right. There's no point. But you there's don't, a lot you don't of know other, what's gonna happen. There's a lot future. of other Nietzsche's writings that are fucking really good. Same thing with Schopenhauer, you know. Oh shit, all kinds of money just showed up. Thank you very much. Who is this? Did it? This is from Mango Badger. Oh, he might be. I yeah. might be behind. You, oh, yeah. thank you, Mango Badger. Here's to all the hairless monkeys. Yeah, okay. Down payment for my ticket to Planet Tom. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, if you go to Planet Tom, you're gonna get laid. Cause I'm gonna have all these. It's fucking, a whole planet yeah, of toms. Yeah, it's a planet we haven't of established like what the female toms look like. They're but pro- yeah, we they don't. probably just look like you, but with the wig on. <laughs> So they will See, still like she can, she can they will it. still like stick their shit up in your booty. What did he say? What did he say? Um, you've done a great show on a grim subject. Yes. Chad has been awesome as always. Yeah. You guys rock. I yeah. hear the beer god calling me again. Okay, yeah. go ahead. I go mean, ahead. go ahead, bro. I, thank look, you so much. I got, I got, I got fucking um, uh, carnitas down there waiting. I'm having a good time though. Oh, okay, we're gonna have some carnitas. So don't. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I know. Fuck Jenny up, but I got. I'm gonna have. I got carnitas. Thank you. There. Cause like you ready to go. You have a you have a tendency of just like watering. Yeah, off. like fuck it, I'm gonna eat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you do that even when you're sober, and yeah, I'm just kind of yeah. like, oh, okay, bye. Well, I think yeah, we yeah. did that on the like matinee show. Right. We were talking about, and he was totally sober, and he's just like, bye. And I was like, oh, <laughs> uh, there he goes. Okay. I had enough. I guess. I had enough. <laughs> At least have some decorum. Have some decorum. Yeah. yeah. Jesus Christ. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Khan's coming in goes Mango, Liverpool, and Manchester City advanced to the semifinals. Okay, whatever he's talking about. I don't know what he's talking about. Well, you know. Yeah, they're That's England some is advancing to the semifinals. I mean, like I said, I kind of feel like. Well, may, okay. Maybe Americans now, now that the Netflix yeah. series came out, maybe yeah. they know, like, what a big deal this is. Like I said, if you. Li- if Americans want to know, like, what the uh, scope of this is. It's kind of the same shit as, like, the Bill Cosby shit, right? Because the Bill Cosby shit, we should probably do a show about that at some point, too. Um, Everybody loved Bill Cosby back in the day. Oh, he's so funny. He's, like, a comedian. He was, like, America's dad. He was on, like, this long-running sitcom. He seemed like a nice dude, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden it comes out, oh, he's a sexual predator. You know what I mean? Which, honestly, like, I should have been surprised, but I was kind of like... I'm kind of surprised, but not that surprised. I wasn't that surprised. I was like, eh, figures. So, uh, (laughs) you know, so there was that. And so that happened. So I kind of feel like it was that level, but maybe, like, amplified because, as I said, Jimmy Savile was kind of like everybody, everybody knew who he was in the UK. It was like a massive thing. And he'd been around for, like, decades and decades, and even though there was, like, you know, shit going around, like, back in the old days, like, people were kind of like, yeah, this dude's, like, a creeper, like, stay away. But 
it wasn't like widely disseminated. Nobody really knew about that shit till after he was dead. Yeah. Like I said, he died 2011 and they still did like a fucking memorial show about him. Yeah. They did like the whole big funeral. They did the, like, the yeah. whole gravestone. And it was only like a big, because journalists were kind of like, can we not do this? Because he was kind of like a bad person. We're investigating this. And they're like, no, he was awesome. And so they did all that. And then it took like almost a year after he was dead until finally, like everything came to light. And then finally, like 450, 500 people come out and be like, yeah, this dude was like a motherfucker. He like raped me. He like sexually yeah. assaulted. There was all that, like hundreds and hundreds of people. Yeah. Jesus Christ. A lot of them, they were like fucking children. I got people in there quoting Nietzsche about, you know, fucking that, that which does not kill you makes you stronger. Look, you have to understand something. In pop culture, Nietzsche is pre- he's kind of portrayed as some kind of hard, very serious kind of dude. Uh, in the writings, then that's not what you're going to see. All right. He is a very uh, jovial kind of fucking clownish dude. He's funny. And he's more of a commentator. He's not a philosopher. I would say he was the, he's the German Howard Stern of the 1800s. Um he does come up with a lot of cool truthisms. A lot of it's built upon philosophers that came before him. He kind of calls bullshit on it and like goes, oh, come on. These values that fucking Schopenhauer is fucking talking about, these are not the values of a good man. These are the values of a fucking loser. So he's kind of more of a commentator on philosophers. Uh, he's cr- critical of philosophy. Um, and funny. Funny. He was more into arts and... Uh, and uh, I guess you could say... Uh, free spiritism in a certain way. Uh, so he's not at all what a lot of people think. They've equated him sometimes with the fucking German National Socialists and shit. Uh, the the Nazis did like a lot of what he said, but they wouldn't have agreed. There's a really good book called Nietzsche and the Nazis. You can get it a fucking uh, an audio version of it on YouTube. Listen to that. You'll see the truth. There's a lot of difference between Nietzsche and the Nazis. All right. Uh, the the Nazis kind of like plagiarized and picked up a lot of his ideas and expounded them. But Nietzsche wouldn't have liked them. He was not into totalitarianism. He wasn't in. He was in. He was very much a man of free will, and he didn't like. He didn't like governments. He would have been. He would have been an anarchist, really, when it came to, to government. You know, uh, he he didn't trust people. He would have been like me, you evil hairless monkeys. That's what. That's what he would. He, that's way. That's way he was. And um, he had a lot of fun. Kind of a goth type dude of his time. Smart guy, but everybody's imperfect, and even he, he said that. Even he said that, and he and, and Nietzsche would say, "Look, man, figure this shit out on your own. I'm not here to tell you how to live, which, and I'm not here to tell you what's real, and that that's a sign of a fucking very honest man. All right, don't tell other people what's real. They figure that shit out on their own." Boudicca X says, uh, Jimmy Savile was wired into the British elite and the royal family. He was protected by the British security services, untouchable. To a large extent, I think he was. And honestly, I don't really know if the royal family knew what, how was, what he was doing. I kind of feel like he purposefully uh, befriended the royal family for the very purpose of giving him some cover. So I don't really know if the royal family knew exactly what he was doing or if they just turned a blind eye or whatever, but I do definitely think that he was cognizant of, I need powerful people behind me. Uh, I have fame and money, but I need some, like, that was why he approached the royal family. That was why he approached Margaret Thatcher. That was why he approached the Pope. Um, he's like, if I have all these people behind me, 
then if somebody comes forward and accuses me of something, then I can say, hey, I have Margaret Thatcher and the royal family and, like, the Pope. They're behind me. Like, who are you to accuse me? So I kind of feel like that was very, very deliberate on his part, that he sought out French friendships with, like, people in uh, very, very powerful people. He knew what he was doing. Absolutely. Um... No, nothing that I've read about him like makes me think that he was because he was actually very intelligent and I think that he was very manipulative and I think that his whole entire life um, was built around I don't think he had any like soul or like any inner self of his own I think his whole entire energy was expended on this persona that he constructed and the persona that he constructed uh, was a powerful person that was friends with all these powerful people and could therefore act with impunity. He could use like whatever he wanted. And if you complained about it, then he would just say, hey, I'm friends with the, the queen or the prime minister. I'm friends with the royal family. I can do whatever the fuck I want to you. And that was most of like, that was enough to like shut people up. So he absolutely knew what he was doing. So, as I said, they didn't really get into the shit until after he was dead in 2011. So 2012, late 2012, they did this whole thing, like this whole investigation, and they were like, yeah, we think this bitch might be like the most prolific sexual predator in British history. 450 alleged victims. Uh, they had contacted police in 10 weeks since the investigation was launched. So they started looking into almost 200 different crimes, 17 different uh, jurisdictions, um, 31 allegations of rape, analysis report, 82% of those who came forward were female. So, like I said, mostly it was mostly girls, but he would go after boys too if they were available. He would go, he would go after anybody, anybody that was vulnerable. Yeah. He was, he preferred young girls but if all that was available was boys or older women or whatever he would hit that too he didn't give a shit hmm. it was it was whatever was laying around sounds like he had fucking some kind of sexual addiction fucking like he, he, he didn't care it was all good enough he didn't for him. seem to like yeah. i said he did have a preference right. it did seem like he liked very young teenage girls, yeah. like uh, you know, fourteen right. years old. But if they were, but you know, but he if it was else. a boy or if yeah. it was like an older girl, that's yeah. fine. He didn't really, he didn't really care if they were yeah. like unconscious or something. He was gonna take advantage. Yeah. Um. He just seemed like an opportunist, like I said, in a lot of ways. A lot of good uh, Nietzsche quotes of it, uh, coming out of the damn comment section. Nietzsche basically said man was an animal and that he was sick because he didn't understand his own nature. And that man had to find out what his own nature was. And you're not going to find that in the social zeitgeist. Especially the social social zeitgeist of his time. Of his time, the, what they thought man was was something that Christianity would tell you what man was. And that's that's not what man is. But you guys understand it. I mean, anybody in there... Nietzsche would tell you any man in his heart would understand what man is. Don't let other people tell you what humans are and what you are. You are what you are. You know what you are. Do what it is that you feel that you should do. You know, that's what Nietzsche is basically saying. All right. But he also says, don't allow yourself to be punked out. Fight for your own survival. He, he said a lot of things that are... But he's a commentator, he's, and he's a man like like us. What? I don't listen to any bitches. Don't listen to any because no bitches, bitches are me. You do what you need to do in the situation that you're in. Sorry, That's basically, no bitches are me. Right, right. Which these are kind of revolutionary ideas in Nietzsche's day. Okay. And I have never heard a single thing All from right. any other motherfucker. Right. That sounded like anything that was approximating anything that what I was into. So I'm just kind of right. like, why? Right. Don't listen to anybody. No. Just you do you. You do you. You take care of you. I think that's you kind of like the are. platonic. Right. You yeah. do you. Yeah. It's okay. All right. Don't listen to nobody. Don't compare right. yourself to nobody. You are just you. Right. 
Now, if, you just now, do Se that. Now, Jimmy Seville probably is probably thinking the same thing. But <laughs> well, but the thing is, is that you don't do not fall victim of so solipsism. You are not the center of the earth. Just because that's you the flip want side it, of that. yeah. doesn't mean that other people want it. That's and what I mean. Fucking, they will make you pay for violating the rights of other people. Right. And that's but, that's yeah. kind of what, and even Nietzsche will tell you that you can't go up against reality. You do and you, but when you actions started, have consequences. Is that when you start, other people also right. are being them. Right. And when you start fucking over other people, they retaliate. Sure. And Anton Levey tells you this. If I mean, you, duh. That yeah, should right, be, right. like, self-evident, right. but apparently it's not. Right. Apparently it's not. Right. Like I said, you do you to the extent that you are not impinging... On others. ...on the you of other people. Right, right. Um, when you're doing that, if you get your ass beat, that's your own goddamn fault. Right. <laughs> Largely. <laughs> right. Um, and I kind of wish that somebody had beat Jimmy Savile's ass, but right. nobody did. Well... He had expansive power, and he abused the shit. And he made it. And he abused it's it to terrible. a point where he was so confident in the abuse of it yeah. that he talked about it on TV and, like, nobody called him out on it. I mean, they did, like, they were kind of like, hey, what about this? But he was able to, like, flip it around. Right. I can only blame this on the weakness of other men. Nobody went after him. And they knew. They had to have known. I mean, I'm not blaming anybody particularly, no. but... I'm not. I'm. I'm just gonna say I would not have been sad had somebody like murdered this dude in his sleep. Somebody should have. Yeah. I'm not saying anybody in particular should have. Right. I'm not blaming anybody for not doing that. I'm just saying that it would have been nice if somebody had did that. Just quietly. I mean, you could have made him suffer a little bit yeah. before, but somebody should have just like taken him out yeah. back in the like '60s, probably. Yeah. Ideally. Would have, been, would have been the yeah. best situation. Um, no. Khan comes in here. As, he's coming in here as fucking... As, <laughs> as Buddhist as he possibly can. He sounds like a cross between fucking Schopenhauer and fucking Siddhartha. He says... He says, to live is to suffer. That's right. That's Buddhism right there. To survive is to find some meaning in the sufferings. That's right. That's right, man. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's quite accurate. Yeah. yeah the quite Buddhist accurate. thought is one. <laughs> we suffer. <laughs> Hold on. I can't even fucking. Are you gonna like? Yeah, come yeah, on. Yeah. I, uh, fucking. I got some shit. I yeah. Say, we, she so. got shit. She got shit. Go ahead. Right. You do. I was gonna you, say you if, gonna you, if you can't. Hey, I gotta like, fucking. Make, I gotta cook as soon as we get done. Okay. Go go go. Uh, Booty Gag says. Yeah. Uh, or no, American Military Hundred says there's a very very prophetic and creepy quote from Bill Cosby. Yeah. Like I said, I was comparing both those cases just in terms of like magnitude. Bill Cosby said when he hosted Showtime at the Apollo's Stevie Wonder special. What's the use of being a star if you can't use it and abuse it? Oh, shit. And the fact that you would even say that out loud. What does that say about you as a person? Like, why? The fact, not only the fact that you thought that, but the fact that you felt confident enough to say that out loud to other people, that is very disturbing that's very disturbing why would you say that out loud and that's kind of like that's why i compared the two because i kind of feel like bill cosby had the same kind of fucking vibe going on he also had the same kind of like oh i'm very powerful oh i'm very rich no one can and you know he had the same thing where it's like you know if you say something about it you know no one will believe you blah 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 everybody loves me so there was that kind of shit going on too and a lot of people didn't believe it even after, you know, hundreds of people, like, you know, all these people came out and said about it. But I don't know, man. I kind of feel like there's this whole thing. Hmm. I don't know. This bothers me. It's really, I don't know. It's really, like, bothering me, this whole fucking situation. This, researching this show made me really, really angry. It just mm -hmm. made me really angry. <laughs> I mean... 
That's kind of my default state. I'm yeah, not gonna lie. She's always there. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's kind of my default state. But it just kind of like amped it up. I was just kind yeah. of like, why? Why did nobody do it? Why did nobody kill this dude? Jesus Christ. Because if it had been me, I, well, I don't know. I, I wasn't there. But I wasn't there in the whole cultural zeitgeist. I'm not blaming anybody that was there. But it's like, if if 21st century Jenny yeah. was somehow thrust back into in a time machine to Top of the Pops, 1965, yeah. and that dude, like, grabbed my fucking tit or something like that, I would have fucking killed that dude. Yeah. Knowing what I know now. But... I understand why they didn't back then. It was like a whole different thing. But nowadays, people would be just like, boom. You know what I mean? But back then, you didn't do that. And I, you know, that's the reason why he got away with it for so long. Like I said, that's, I, I kind of feel like that's why it's better that we're aware of that shit now. Because Khan comes in with some deep shit. Listen to this shit. Did he really? He says, there was always some madness in love. But there was always some reason in madness. Yeah, where were you getting that, man? Where are you getting that? That sounds like some shit that fucking Nietzsche would say. That sounds like something Nietzsche would say. That's true, though. Nietzsche or, or Schopenhauer would say that. Say that's that true. Shit. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's good. One. I mean, you know, I get it. Yeah. A says, but you're all just a figment of my, imagi- of my yeah. imagination. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably, like, going back to what we said. Yeah, I kind of feel like Jimmy Savile struck me as someone who his entire life, I think this is what made me mad, his entire life, he never seemed to realize that other people existed but him. He seemed his whole entire life, and he died thinking this, apparently, I can go my whole entire life and do whatever the fuck I want and there will be no consequences. And sadly, that was true. That happened. He believed it and it was, it happened. And that really, really makes me angry. The fact that that could happen. The fact that so many people, so I don't think, I don't know, I'm mad at him, obviously, but I'm mad at all the people not so much the victims. I'm not mad at them. I'm mad at people in authority that saw what was going on and were like, meh. Yeah. Meh. Yeah. Fucking do something. Yeah. Stop that person from, like, doing that again. Jesus Christ. Khan says that is from Nietzsche. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Of course. Think about it. There was always some madness in love. But there's always some reason and madness. There's always a... Re- it's crazy to love this bitch, but there's always a reason why you're crazy loving this bitch. Of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. It makes sense when you're a man. Why do you love me, though? Because I'm fucking crazy. There's a certain amount of crazy. Is there a better uh, reason than that or no? There's a certain reason in why it's crazy. You know what I mean? Fucking. But yeah, that's exactly what it I'm is. I'm looking for a larger... For, for a larger explanation, uh, though. It's because there's a certain reason to it. <laughs> Is there? It makes sense. Does it? It makes sense. I guess it makes sense. Does it? I guess it does. You can't explain it, like it so does. maybe not. And I guess it does. <laughs> it's about... Well, it, that's another thing. Nietzsche wasn't about the logic of fucking... In the way that you think it was. He was also about emotion and feelings. Okay? Fucking so, you know... Feelings. You just go back and... You, you sure. go back. There was a certain amount of emotion and feelings to fucking need. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I've read it also. Right. So, we done? I suppose. Okay, let me You go still ahead. have... Oh, you still haven't answered the question, though. What question? What, what was the question? Never mind. I didn't see the question. <laughs> Pookie, what you doing? I'm because just Because downstairs it. is a whole bunch of pork. And I'm gonna, I got carnitas down there. Okay, can we just and we're say make some fucking tacos? I so got here's the thing. There. So here's what happened. Okay. Go after ahead. Jimmy Savile. Okay, yeah. Let's take, fucking let's, died. Let's, let's wrap it up. So everybody, 2011, he dies. Everybody's like, oh my god, he was like so amazing, blah blah blah. And now he's dead, blah blah. blah. Then like less than a year later, all these journalists finally get their way, and it's like, can we please finally like expose this motherfucker for like what he was? So they finally did that. They did so they did panorama, they did all that kind of shit. Yeah. Everybody's like, holy shit. Uh he sucked. Yeah. Um 
and then after that, like, after they exposed a couple of, like, uh, people's stories, like, everybody else started coming forward and said, yeah, that motherfucker did this, that, and the other. Because, you know, they're like, hey, we reported to police a long time ago, and no one listened to us. Imagine that. So, people did report it. So, it's not like, oh, why didn't they report it? They did. Uh, nobody paid attention, though. So, but finally, they did that. So, now, in the UK, his name is, like, fucking mud he had all of these fucking honorary uh degrees he had all these plaques he used to live here he did this and that they tore all that shit out they took his pimpin ass gravestone which was super tacky i saw like pictures of it they tore it out they said we're not even li-. they didn't leave anything they tore the shit out i mean you can still find it like on youtube but they tore it out and they just like we're just gonna it's unmarked fuck that bitch so they just want to, like, wipe him out of history. Because, like I said, they were... I kind of feel like the British public were offended that this dude had pulled the wool over their eyes for so long. And they're like, you pretended that you were, like, this good person, like, all this time. And you made us do all this stuff. And then now that you're dead, we found out all that shit. So they were super mad. It was, like, a whole big thing over there. So... They tore out his gravestone. They did, they tore out all the shit that had his name on it. They just like they were trying to like do. Remember like back in the old days, like when a pharaoh would die, and they did some fucked up shit, and everybody's like, "Yeah, we're gonna like tear all your statues." They did that. Yeah. They're like, we're they took off all the shit that had his name on it, like on the side of buildings and whatnot, and even all like the fucking uh, charities that he had set up were like, "Well, we're gonna like disperse this money, and we're just gonna like." Bye. We don't want his name associated. So, I will say, even though he's dead and he's, like, past any fucking uh, judgment, I kind of wish... I don't wish he was still alive, because he sucked. But I wish that he had lived long enough to see some repercussions for his actions, because he never did. I think that's what makes me the angriest is that he died thinking everybody, like, still loved him. He had the gold coffin and the big fucking... He had this whole big thing, and everybody was, like, still... They had tribute programs on BBC and blah, blah, blah. And it's, like, so he died thinking, oh, I'm still awesome. Everybody, like, fucking love me, whatever. And it's, like, that... Oh, that makes me so, so angry. Well... It's no, like all he is got like, away with it. He that's got, what I mean. He got away with it. Away. <laughs> that makes me so, so mad. Now, Khan comes in and he says he gives another Nietzsche quote that's fucking great. Insanity in, in, in individuals is something rare. But in groups, parties, nations, and epochs, it's the rule. Fucking right. Hell yeah, we see that now. <laughs> yeah. Mass insanity is very common. Very no, common. No doubt. Very common. No, now, no. Uh, Seville. No, he got away with it. He got away with it, Jenny. Like I said, he, he I th- well, I right. think that's why. Yeah. Well, like I said, I think that's what pisses people it. off about his particular case. Yeah, is that he like nobody really knew. Like people knew, but they didn't know the extent yeah. until after he was dead. After he was dead, like people, when people didn't fear his wrath anymore, like a lot of people came forward. And like I said, I'm not blaming them because some of them did come forward back then and they got ignored. Yeah. So the fact that they were like, well, now he's gone and I can finally like come forward and say like all the shit, fucked up shit that he did. And it's like, I'm glad that we know now, but I wish that he'd been alive to at least see that his whole entire career and his whole entire life was like shit on i wish that he had seen that if only for a few minutes yeah i wish that he had seen that but he didn't con comes in with another fucking quote from Nietzsche. he says he said <laughs> okay check this. check this this is a good one this is an, a true man wants two things danger and play for that reason he wants women the most dangerous play thing so there's the answer there's the answer that you wanted from me, Jen. You're right, Con. That's right. Because there is a certain amount of risk. Risk and danger. Am I dangerous? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. In what way? 
I would. I'm not gonna fucking get into this shit and fucking hey, front of it. I'm well. I'm curious. We though. got. We got to because the shit could go wrong. Everything is an investment that could go wrong. It's just the way it is. Uh, and that's with all human beings. It's not just between me and you. Interesting. Yeah, it could go wrong. It could fail. It could blow up in your fucking face. But look, well, well, I'm well aware of that outcome. I've had that happen many times. You've had, or we both had it. Fucking, so that's what they're talking about. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm really not that all that Jenny, concerned about it. Jenny, what? I got foods downstairs waiting. I know. Let's you. go ahead and make something to eat. Go ahead and shut the. Go ahead and shut the show down. All right. Say goodbye to everybody, and I'll start cooking. Cause okay, we, don't be rude though. You gotta like do the goodbye with. with we're gonna, me, we're like gonna do the goodbye else. and everything. I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. So. I'm not going anywhere. Like I said, we're yeah. going to end the show. Yeah. This bitch, they tore his fucking gravestone down. Yeah. I'm just mad that he yeah. didn't live to see everybody he shitting on his name. It. He got away with it. Like I said, that's what makes me mad. Yeah. Well, it makes me mad that he got away with shit for like 50 years. All right. But it also makes me mad that like he didn't live to see everyone shitting on his name like they are now. <laughs> I would have liked for him to have seen that, at least for a few minutes before he died. That would have been awesome, but he didn't see that. He died thinking everybody thought he was awesome, and that blows. That makes me very upset. But, you know, I can't do anything about it. I don't have anything to do with it. But, uh, you know, so yeah. All right, so what is it? It's Wednesday. Yeah. Next show we're going to do is the Friday night show. Right. Our drunk-ass... Sidetrack show. That should yeah. be fun. We'll have fun. And this was a fun show. Yeah. Even though it made me angry. Every single thing that I talked nah, about made me angry. Don't worry about it. It made me angry. But you know what I mean? Yeah. I think that made it a funner show, though. Yeah. <laughs> Rebecca says, thank you for a great show. Watch something that makes you happy, Jenny. Yeah, I know. I'm in a, I'm in a, I'm in a way. I have, I'm in a mood. So oh. I have to, like, I have to watch something fun. Although, maybe... I'll probably go watch Unsolved Mysteries, to be honest with you. I've been watching Unsolved Mysteries, the old ones, like on Tubi. They're depressing, but they're also kind of like comforting in a way. But yeah, so thanks everybody for dropping by. Thank you for Super Chats. We will see you guys on Friday evening for our Sidetrack show. Hopefully you guys will drop by for that. So we will see you again in a couple of days, and we will see you then. Bye.